What is going on, everybody? Welcome. I was about to do my little roof on my hello oh boy. <laughs> and welcome. <laughs> and welcome to MKNJ. No, more kind of weekly. We are back here in New Jersey, and it is another uh, pretty stat bracket in terms of you know pe people coming out, people flying in, even just to. Oh, did we get? Did we got the. I did think, that happen? I think so. Do we got a little bam bam? Do we got a little bam bam? We'll see later. We'll see later. I don't know. Because some people are still, you know, trying to come in. We haven't started back. We did start back a, a little bit early, but we have a little, bit, a little bit of a stream here for you guys. We have, uh, what, Hercules and McBeans Hercules up and McBeans. on deck. Guys, welcome to twitch.tv forward slash combat network. If you're looking for the ultimate ha -ha. in New Jersey high-level Mortal Kombat 1 competition, this is going to be the place to find it, where we have our monthlies every single month. Uh, we have weeklies held by Darth Armor throughout yes. the length of the months every single Friday for competitors to come in and practice. If you've been witnessing those over on Mist Twitch channel, which I'll, I'll get the handle for you guys later, you can tap in and see the usual suspects. A lot of those competitors are here today and competed yesterday among that list. Wraith, uh, the Golden Coalition's very own Silence Returns. There's a couple TGC competitors here, although Silence is definitely the most active out of the bunch for this offline scene. Um, a couple of noticeable Combat Network competitors. Alphabet's here. Mike Metroid is here. If you guys were a witness to NEC, you got to see exactly how strong they could be. Alphabet with the Molina Lau team. Nobody feels bad for it. Mike oh Metroid goodness. with Johnny Cage Motaro. Nobody <laughs> feels bad for it. I can only imagine how much more devious Mike's going to get when he gets access to Janet because I don't think he'll be able to resist the urge. I know he loves Striker. But I just I think any form of being able to play Devil Johnny is going to be like super entertaining for him, even if we've got a gender bend to get there, you know. Yeah, it happens. It's pretty you know? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm really excited for. Now that you mentioned the Janet's uh, introduction into Mortal Kombat One. I mean, she's coming in what a couple weeks now, mm -hmm. very soon. So she'll be out on the 27th of something, <laughs> March, May, May, March. Some month with an M on the 27th, she's coming out. I forget. I saw the Twitter post, and then I remember 27, and then that's all I got. That's all we got, yeah. and that's all we care about. Now, you know, she's coming at some point. Let me tell you too, Janet Cage, if you guys didn't know, the lore piece that I'm the most upset with in her universe, What's she won about? the Academy Award for uh, lead role in Ninja Mind without saying a word. Wow. <laughs> so she's she's kind of talented, that's, is what I'm hearing. I was going to say. You know, this isn't the artist, you know. It's, it's Janet Cage in Ninja Mime, and... To her people, it was just as much of a classic. You That's know? so like, good. She's just a, she's yeah, just she a doesn't, ninja mime. She doesn't pop up at the end with a French accent that like changes the whole tone of the movie. Oh, that's why it was so difficult when they got sound. If you guys are like film buffs, I'm not even a film buff. I just like the artist. <laughs> if any of you guys have seen that, it was a good it was a good call out by me. That's professional high level commentary. And that's why I'm in the chair. Because yeah. I know about movies yeah. like that. So if you want to be a high level uh, Mortal Kombat competitor, watch random watch silent movies. films. <laughs> I watched a good portion of silent films. Um, I've watched that one, and that's a modern one. That's not even really. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not a I'm not a film person at all. I'll pop out for like a Spider-Man movie and a Star Wars movie, and then I sit in my house. Oh, know? as you should, as you should. Let's talk about it. Okay. All right. Ours? Now Ooh. to get to the action that we're about to see on screen, Kenshi, really clear what this character wants to do. Reiko, really clear. I missed just now. I, I looked away for two seconds and missed what the cameo choice was for Reiko. I think. Uh, Darius. Darius. Sorry. Okay, so interesting because a lot of competitors tend to go for Tremor now over yep. Darius, while Darius is still going to give you the pickups. And we saw that yesterday. Uh, we saw Reiko Tremor and uh, completely annihilate uh, HF in that matchup. Yeah. So seeing I mean, the Reiko, Reiko Darius, Tremor won the tournament. I mean, yeah, literally. Yeah, so we, we can see what Darius can bring to the table. But before we get to all that, I think Hercules on this Kenshi of zero is just showing what Kenshi is dominating in this game and what he's known for. You drop block, you drop, uh, you know, your, your positioning and that Sento Ancestor is right behind you to help the swinging and help with the, the damage output. Yeah, and Kenshi's an interesting character. He's been listed among the top five ever since the inception of Mortal Kombat 1. He's got a relatively simple game plan that's hard to execute and the reward for going through that trouble of learning how to execute it is getting access to how strong it is and great cameo utility, right? You essentially yep. can use seven different cameos to get to the same goal which is activate Senso and just completely obliterate your opponent. The problem for McBeans here is even if you're content blocking all of it, the chip does add up. You can only hold like two or three of these sequences before the round's essentially over. And Hercules seems to be not only very aware of that, but very willing to take the match based on that win condition. We're down two in. And we're down two in. We're down two right back. Oh, I, lo I love it. You down down two, I down two too. Don't even worry about it, baby girl. We are seeing a complete 
dominating uh, act from Hercules in this round one. Of course, we, this is first of three series. So we have a couple of changes happening as you go over to the character select. And I am expecting possibly that Reiko Tremor we had mentioned earlier. Uh, a different camera other than Darius. Or even yeah. just a different character all around. Reiko has some fun utility too, at least for the sake of having fun with him. I, I've been very entertained by uh, Reiko Sonya recently. But on shortcuts, uh, yeah. Well, they did do a press, button check before. You we can't did, press yeah. buttons? Um, no, so so the fun thing with Reiko Sonya is being able to like cover things like slide, right? So you slide, but you full charge Sonya rings, yes. and then you're like plus 175. Um, I think full screen Sonya rings are like plus like almost 140 something, 130. It's, it's like actually ridiculous if they have to hold that. Um, and then one of the win conditions you can do is that if you know that projectiles will chip them out, you can kind of just send out EX Hurricanes along with Sonya. They can't even jump you. And you can't even think about it. You just lock down the you entire you, screen. You're just there. Like the, the high is covered, the air is covered, and you know, EX Hurricane yeah. is the way it is. And her ambush does give him like interesting conversions that he can uh, connect into command grab and then of course get to pick what side he wants to be on. Those benefits are always going to be there for him. Great falls, but obviously yeah. they're, they're no better than a Darius or Tremor. I do think, like as we were saying before, Tremor is going to be better for him just for increased utility. Um, what you get off of Darius, if you feel like spending the whole bar for resets outside of just the combo extensions, I don't think is worth the cooldown. But it was a strong strategy for a large portion of the game for a reason. It's not necessarily unviable. Tsenso off, off there, and then again, Hercules is just taking this, uh, yeah, just completely just drowning, drowning McBeans here, and, and literal just blood. You're stacked between the sandwich of the Ancestor and Kenshi, so what can we do? You make the wrong mistake, you get out of block, and, you, and, and not even the wrong mistake, you, what do you do in that situation where you're so Honestly, sandwiched? Uh, I'll be honest, it's, you have to memorize the frame date of those interactions, when he's plus, when the overhead is coming, like, how much time you have, uh, you, you've afforded yourself to take a turn depending. Oh great, there's a slide of command grab coming in, and that can be the biggest factor here. And ooh, the poke, I mean, just staying on neutral, all right, got it. Yeah, and while Kenshi can definitely like ice armor and use his, uh, his running attack to kind of get through Reiko's zoning, I there think he used to have to implement the zoning to give him a reason to do that. And, and you just saw why the Sub-Zero is the preferred cameo for Kenshi. You are just completely uh, in Kenshi's hands as you're frozen, and that allows Kenshi to set up the Sento. But even even after McBeans was able to get out there with the Command Card from Reiko, it's still not going to be enough to chip damage it so much. We went all the way from about, you know, 200 to now nothing. Mm. And game two on the board for Hercules. As he's ready, I'm pretty sure to just continue the same exact war path he's been on. I see no reason for change. Can't you can't see it all? Me neither, clearly. Because <laughs> I don't see what you can do against this. This it's is a well-oiled machine between just Kenshi and Sub-Zero. Well, this is the thing, right? If you want to be successful in competitive Mortal Kombat 1, this is a team that you have to work out a game plan yes. for. You're going to run into it a million times, and if you haven't taken the time out to figure out like what your strategy is for dealing with it, you are just going to get steamrolled by it. It's very specific in nature, especially if you have to defend against it. You have to have taken the time out. Characters have options, as minimal as they may be for some people. For a lot of people, this is the team you have to have a secondary ready for. And there's a reason why you have to have, like, I think like you just have to have multiple characters under your belt because, you know, some do better against Kenshi than others, and Reiko is just struggling a lot here. You, you can't even enforce any space to spam down the the the, the, the stage with, with Ninja Stars, with EX Ninja Stars, or, or anything like that. The only thing that has been consistent in getting out of these is just his command grab. You can only do that so many times. And this is the thing, too. You see, now we're like starting this match, we're at full screen, and McBeans has been completely hesitant on sending out projectiles at all. Half of people's complaints about Reiko is the fact, why is this command grab character also one of the best owners in the yes. game? If we are intent on not using that half of this toolkit, we're intent on not using half of our you know chance of success. You see Here's the backing up, someone's backing up the bird. Oh, we put ourselves in the corner. And this is the other notable thing too, if he sends out Sensor in front of him like that and you throw shurikens, not only does Kenshi have to deal with it, you're relatively safe at distance, but it will nullify Sensor for a little bit. Mm -hmm. He'll go into the next position, but that's pretty much the round. A very quick and easy 3-0 with the brutality to boot from Hercules, having a beautiful showing of why Kenshi Sub-Zero works and why you kind of need to have something as an answer to that mm. duo because they are yeah. so dominating if you don't know exactly what your game plan is or how to get out of certain traps. Yeah, you, you just you have to be prepared for it. There's opportunities where he's kind of minus on frames and the threat of Senso yep. looks scarier than it is. There's ways that you can contest, especially if he's going to like summon him raw in a lot of situations if Senso's going to be stuck in neutral where you can nullify him for a bit and Kenshi on his own if he's committing to the Senso game plan needs to work around you doing that. I was playing some casuals with her earlier and while he was successful in most of them uh, in a matchup where like Kenshi like mauled Quan, yep. 
some of the moments I got were just sending out a move just for the intent of it stopping Sento so it would give me a little breathing room. Um, a lot of the strategies we didn't see just now from McBeans that I would have liked to. Could have changed the pace of things, but them's the breaks for now. We're going to move forward. Hercules with a great start. He's been, you know, trying to work past his seventh place curse, you know? Yeah, he's, been, he's telling me, yeah. he's like, today I do not want to get seventh or fifth. Yeah. We have to break the curse. That's like, going to be the first step on the path. Today might be the day you had a great first round, and he's got to continue that momentum throughout the rest of the bracket. Um, I think if we're seeing the right the right uh, bracket, we should be seeing Miss and Mike Metroid next. Yeah, which is going to be interesting because – Miss definitely had a great showing yesterday, but Mike Metroid going to be a little different of a competitor oh, to yes. deal with. I think a lot of what was successful for Miss with uh, the Peacemaker Striker team, I think most of you at home who are watching are very aware of what that team is capable of. Um, it was a combination of that and what's helping a lot of Peacemakers, right, which is just like the sporadic defense, right, yes. the random torpedoes and whatnot. Uh, Mike Metroid is cut from the same cloth. <laughs> this is a fellow who will, I know we're going to do yeah. 10 sets before you actually do it. And also a very seasoned player. I mean, mm. we've seen him... Well, I haven't seen him come very new, mm. but y'all have seen him for yeah, years no, for forever since MK9. You know? When we uh, before you got here, he was outside asking if anybody wanted to get their hands in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. This is just oh, the guy who's just been a fan. <laughs> <of the> <laughs> Oh my if goodness. If he would have came to me with a copy of Deadly Alliance, I might have You would have been it. locked in. You've been I in might have been a little locked <laughs> in. I have a Sonya Blade in that game. I have a Reptile in that game. If I'm going to go in the, the PlayStation 2 era, uh, if you get me on Deception, I'm going Darius and I'm just, and <laughs> I'm just, just, I'm just, I'm just slamming the mat. Yeah, I'm just slamming the do. mat the whole time. Actually, uh, I, I said Sonya Blade and Reptile. Reptile's my for funsy character. Actually, Sonya Blade and Drama. Drama is like the best mm -hmm. owner in that game. It's actually ridiculous. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, if you guys ever feel like getting entertained with like old PS2, like Mortal Kombat, Drama is the best owner in the game and Sonya Blade is a mix machine she and she gets like little resets too off mm -hmm. of like her uh, her kiss move you can oh. kind of like so it, the game doesn't want you to do two of them in a combo but you can kind of launch people and delay it just enough mm -hmm. where the game kind of forgets that it's part of the combo and it essentially like restands and leads into more st it's ridiculous She's great. It's a fun game. I, I think if you Y'all were able like to that? avoid being competitive in uh, the PlayStation 2 games, you, you led a better life for it, you know? Y'all live like that? <laughs> no, because I have definitely seen... Shout out to Ketchup and Mustard, of course, mm -hmm. for their deep dive videos into like analysis of characters in the competitive scene. Yeah. I have seen characters in uh, in Armageddon, for example, or Dark Alliance, or yeah, in the MK9. In the background that ha <laughs> that, that, that's like, that's like a, the ghost on my head. <laughs> so, and, and I've just seen y'all live like this. Like, y'all really just... No, for a lot of people Ooh. who are frustrated at, like, the competitive BS that Mortal Kombat 1 has access to, a lot of the reason these seasoned vets seem less, like, uh, dissuaded by it is because yeah. every single MK has had this. The PlayStation 2 era was full of it. If you played competitive Mortal Kombat versus DC, you're maybe one of the most psychotic people I've ever met. That game was, <laughs> like, just ridiculous. Oh, I've heard. Oh, oh no, I've heard. Shit. I've heard. MK9 had RNG frame data. MKX was just a mixed machine, you know. I love MKX, 11 though. slowed oh. down the pace, and now we come back to Mortal Kombat 1. We're going to get reintroduced to this. We have two. Oh, okay, button check. Hilarious. Yeah, we're button checking, and uh, when we get a second, the names are on the wrong side. Um... But we'll, we'll swap those out in a bit. I mean, you saw a little bit. I mean, if, if no one knows yet, or if people ha, are like also. super uh, like aware of Peacemaker, he kind of just be is like a machine in this game. You know? Yeah. Lots of great jumping tools. Lots of the eagle, the, 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 the randomness, the eagle coming out of frame one. What there you go. And of course, nobody feels bad for Johnny no, either. Oh, okay. no. Yeah, we out. Yeah. We Two actors are trying to make their way through the competitive scene. Oh, I love hearing. Oh. They're both <laughs> so. Here you, go, you go, Johnny. Force field. Yeah, you got it. They now, are very talkative. I will say, this is going to be one of the most like meme level fights, potentially, especially if Mike is feeling silly today. But I, I think love he's going to want to get a couple of points on the board. Oh, I like that check there. Oh, but wasn't prepared for a great armor as well. The star also charging up very quickly, so that's going to allow Mike Metroid an even bigger advantage here. Oh, than, every time, yeah. Then this can really deal with. Trying to go for these random eagles. The force field's out. No projectiles, but Johnny doesn't care. I'm curious. To, Eagle should count as a projectile, right? If you've got sub armor on. I believe so. It's, it, it looks like one to me, personally. I guess we'll find out shortly. Oh my, that that back not, four is not. That's not projectile. <laughs> oh. The Jaden's a fader. Can't do anything about it. Sorry. Oh, double guns here? That's crazy. A lot of brutality coming on the this, screen. I'll be honest. This is a lot of overkill. I get that in, in this lore. We have vampires. We have, like, saurians that can go invisible. But this is just a man. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> doesn't I even have his ancestral powers anymore. I He's just love, fast and good I, at kicking. Dude, I love NRS guest characters so much. Man, it makes me laugh every single time. But Miss getting the surprising you know, round lead here on Peacemaker, being kind of the underdog for sure. Oh, that was going to be a punish opportunity to him whipping. I, I get Mike jumping too, just in case you don't want to get caught up. Peacemaker has oh, nice strings that tend to just clip people towards the end of them, regardless of if he's whipping or not. Forward, forward, one, two, one of the most obnoxious ones as a uh, neutral contest when you try to whip punish and you kind of just get launched anyway. Definitely doable for Mike Metro. I mean, the life, the life deficit here is insane as it Fell continues on with Striker coming in for the assist. Round one going to miss. And he immediately doesn't like the sub plan. I get it too, right? I don't think it's necessarily helpful for what Peacemaker's doing there. It'll help you nullify gunshots, but if you don't even have time to put the sub armor on. I mean, didn't know if I get that one gunshot, clearly. I mean, even I was like, oh yeah, the, the gunshot, we're chilling. No, 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 no. It was, was I didn't even think. The gun was in front of Val. And that's okay. Yeah. We're going to swap right over to the striker duo. All right, to the striker mirror match. And honestly, good choice. The nice reason why striker is so good. And we flip sides and Mech Metro is right on top of it regardless. Going in with the pressure, going in the block as well. Look at this. We're going going for the back throw. Into the corner you go. And that's where Johnny does so Ooh. well. Ooh! Ooh, get out of my face! <laughs> I've Ooh. actually never seen striker deck so hard in my life. Ooh, get out of my face! I thought you two were friends. We're going to finish this combo up here. This is going to be round. Yeah. Oh, beautiful roundhouse kick from from Johnny Cage. Okay. Well, yeah, if you can enter the combo rounds, this, this, even if you're not the type of competitor that makes use of hype meter, there's really no reason to not do it just in case. I agree, yep. Sometimes the fear of hype meter is even worse than you being able to actually get confirms off of it. People will just get a little freaky and neutral. Oh, there it is. We are gold star locked and loaded. The glasses are on. A little bit of spaghetti here because the striker is such a great mm. get off my tool, but there it is. The opening that Micro Metroid needed. Into the corner you go. Continuing onward. Get the stun. Get the lock. Oh, oh, look at the breath pressure. What are you going to do about it? There you go. A little bit of poke. Oh, <laughs> we are moving. We are smoothing today. I will say, Mike is the competitor that plays on a cheat box. Nice down two. Oh, oh, the spotlight's the on us. Yeah, we're, we're just going for chip. Oh, my we're just going goodness. For chip. There was no reason to not do it. Oh my goodness. And again, Bang. always want to play towards the crowd. I don't think I've ever met like a bigger real life Johnny Cage than I have with like Mike Metroid. <laughs> if you guys can hear that in the background. I'm toxic AF. We're trying to. He's like, he, we, we, we be a little toxic. Be a, and, and you know what my boy missed is like, I can take that L. It's okay. We'll run it back. Well, it's hard, right? Because you, you pick Peacemaker and immediately no one feels bad, you know? <laughs> I mean, like but also the same on the reverse side. You pick Johnny Cage, no Ooh, one feels bad Ooh, I you. can't believe that he actually ducked, and I swear to God, uh, Johnny Cage's um, man parts <laughs> kind of <laughs> is really what he ended up blocking. Probably got under the whole kick. A little bit of spin, a little bit of torpedo, boom. Good, nice. good uh, hop in the air, but You don't want to abuse reversal. it. Keep in mind, too, yep. that that's also going to be susceptible to up block if he gets too crazy with that. Striker going to protect. That, that might actually be a worse trade than he would have got off of just a natural down, too. Oh, forward throw, so he's keeping the corner. All right, we see. Can we get a delay? Get up? No, we're going to go straight, right, straight and get the overhead, and it's a matter of oh, just yeah, definitely what's next drop. move. Yep, forces the breaker. You have to do it. You just have to do it. Mm. Big axe kick. This double axe kick. Triple axe kick. Quadruple axe kick. Quick double axe kick. Okay, I see you. My bad. Now, we'll let you know. If you guys think he's going to go for chip here. <laughs> the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are very unserious today. I, it, it upsets me that, like, Mike doesn't want to be, like, a content person harder than he is. Because, like, it's... <laughs> oh, he... <laughs> you don't... He, he would be a YouTube sensation. You see the this. personality without even seeing the pe the person. Honestly, like, if he doesn't want to make YouTube videos, I'm about to ask him if I can just record him. <laughs> like, have, can I upload there's, it? There's recordings going on right now behind us about uh, from this matchup. I mean, again, Mike is in the lead by a whole round. The game is, you know, going in his favor very well. It's up to miss to find a way to get in. The eagle could be a start as we close the distance. Yeah, he got what he was looking for there. Was trying to activate a uh, full height meter at distance, have access to that. He can hit confirm into it. Striker also gives you combo extensions. Uh, off of hype confirms. You can go for like nut punch. Oh my god. If nut punch connects, striker nades will kind of like restand them and you can continue to confirm. Yeah, even though Mike Metro did might see it here. No, corner. he drops oh. it, but that was the attempt. Big drop you did see, but great pickup right back up. Uh so He's gonna do it again. He's gonna do it again. I was gonna say, don't even look at I can't. I we have some 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 gigglers in, in today. And this this is the hard, so I'm not I I can't speak to how long Mist has been competing. But this is kind of like the twofold issue with go, uh, offline competition, yes. right? It's one being able to deal with this level of competition, but two the mental of having so, because what Mike's doing as far as like trolling him is not illegal. 
This it's is not, part of the it's game. It's all about can you maintain that bearing, that tact in order to not kind of fold to honestly just very gimmicky kind of. Well, it's uh, not even gimmicky. This is a problem it's that what Mike is doing is real, but there's also like a mental aspect to not getting course, frustrated and letting course. it get in your head. That's the bearing. That's the can you maintain that composure. Oh, that's so upsetting. He tried to get that punish and striker going to come out and get the job done from the low. Nice torpedo. Trying to go for it, but both players believe uh, just going at it with these fists, with these neutral, with these normals. But there we go. The uh, the back throw can be starting something off for miss. Hopefully, as we see who is. Oh, is but he didn't in the commit corner. to pressuring. I would have liked it if he kept the pace up. I feel I like that. Yeah, that step back cost him. I'm he fully believe, but and Mike Metro still. <laughs> he's still chilling. Yeah, flex in, got the full hype meter ready to go. Okay. Yeah, that's close enough. Yeah, that's. Let's see if we're gonna see it now. Nut punch into striker. Let's see if he gets it. No, we're going to take that corner carry. Triple axe kick. The armor going to be speeding through the tornado, uh, the torpedo. Oh, this, this, it, it's wraps, baby girl. It is wraps. Took it as a restand. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, and then the chip out. <laughs> Mike Metro getting the job done with the classic yep. setup there. He's been playing this team since the inception of the game. Anything that this team is possible of. He's ready for. So you give him a small opportunity, he Ain't will no, turn it into a sequence like that. Not for nothing. He took a game off him. You know, not for nothing. You put up a good fight. We mentioned before, season vet. Yeah. What we dropping? <laughs> it's, and my cup isn't there anymore. How glorious is that? You know. We <laughs> we are grown. <laughs> we are grown people. We do a little bit of a little bit of tripping, a little bit of falling. <laughs> Different. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, yo, it was hilarious. I was having a great time. You did that for my reel? Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate the content. Yo, oh my gosh. Okay, up next. Next up on the dock is going to be, uh. I see Alphabet in here, but I'm not sure if Alphabet is actually going. No, this should be, uh, Kukui versus Big Bird if we're to trust the. Oh, Kukui versus Big Bird? Yeah, this is Kukui, right? Yeah, Unless they're running it out of order. Mid I mean, they are a set. If they're playing them first, it's kind of the same thing. I just don't know what order you guys are going in. If we're going by bracket, you two are first. But with my vibes, they're first. All right, Kukui and, and Big Bird. <laughs> and we all are. right. We had some Kukui, Big Bird, Ash, and Go. That's crazy. Let me tell you something. That was crazy. That was a crazy sentence. Let me no <laughs> signal. I'm sorry. I said something so wrong. I'm sorry. It goes into like a standby mode. Yeah. Ah. And it resets the firmware. So we have to just. It happens. No, for a second, I was like, yeah, watch that was crazy, but you didn't have to like shut the camera off. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was never that serious. <laughs> It was just good timing. <laughs> we should start doing like fake ones of those during Mike Metro accounts. Every time he gets hyped to start. I'm oh, like, sorry, oh. technical difficulties. Tech, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going <laughs> on. Sorry, we can't see it. <laughs> like a fake little like technical difficulty. What'd you do? Did you taunt him? Sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> you, you, well, you got like a flaw. Oh, I'm sorry. I, if you, can't, if you didn't catch it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Peeking at brackets so far, just to update you guys on of what's course. going on. Winners' quarters finals, Mike Metroid off of that match is going to get in there. Uh, Pulse versus Sunshine is going to decide who plays Mike. Then under that, we have Cosner. I can't see the name above. Dark Green 40. No, no, no. Above Cosner. Oh, uh, Silence Return and Just Meezy. Uh, okay, so Just Meezy and Cosner are winners quarters finals. Gurr waiting for the result of HF versus Hercules, which it honestly can go either way. That's just that's just Team BS versus Team BS, you know? Yeah. Like, it's just who's going to get called first. Um, and then the next two matches we're going to have on stream are going to decide the last match of quarterfinals. So we will get to see the... Uh, conclusion of these two, Kakui and Big Bird, we're going to play right now, followed by Wraith versus Alphabet, all very strong competitors. I'm particularly excited for Wraith and Alphabet because one, Alphabet plays Melina. Yeah. And as you know, we do be a little bit of a Melina lover. <laughs> so, and it's been a while since I've seen, literally since last uh, MKNJ Monthly was the last time I saw some really high level gameplay from Melina, and that was, I believe, from the Alphabet. Yeah. So, and I can't remember that a, uh, an, an MKNJ Weekly Johnny Top 3 that Wraith has not been in for the exactly. past like, five events. So. Like he has, he has a lot of people's bracket demon for a good reason. He's very good at uh, at just playing the game, having neutral, having his advantage state going. But before we get to the next Kwan, match, but we'll talk about that later. We are going to <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go straight into Kukui and Big Bird, and Big Bird on the Johnny, and Kukui of course on the Reiko. Kukui very well known for just kind of meaning whoever is really uh, popular and good at the game at the time. And of course, Big Bird on that Johnny Cage we just seen, but with the chameleon instead. Yeah, Johnny Chameleon has definitely become one of her strongest teams. I mean, the versatility, she gets a lot of the cast. You can only imagine when you're playing, like, top five, how much stronger she makes them. I think the the only team I really haven't seen her with is, like, Kenshi, right? Because she's not really setting up Sento in the way that he would want to make great use of her. 
I'm sure someone out there is doing it, and I'm sure you're a very nice soul. But you, if you wanted to win more, you wouldn't be. You yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to win, <laughs> please change. But, but Johnny Chameleon gets so it's execution heavy for sure. When you get into some of the routing, if you really want to optimize everything, but the uh, the threat of what it introduces is just ridiculous. And uh, El Kukui definitely will sit on the we regular side, just restand city. Um, but has that Rolodex of characters, as you mentioned. So the tide could turn at any point. If this matchup doesn't work out so well, we're going to get confirmed off of this. And Johnny being one of those characters, almost Cabal-like from MK11, the way he can confirm off of jump kicks. And just to show that the combo wasn't over, that was so Chameleon good. would have continued. I wish you could have seen the rest of the route, but I'm sure we'll get opportunities too. And Bird's got to be feeling himself first game on the board. He hasn't even played this game really anymore. Exactly. And like, yesterday, <laughs> he had gone 0-2. Like, today... I mean, he doesn't even have to drag him. That, exactly. <laughs> like, he is playing very well and, pairing, and playing around this red coat Tremor, which has been a really great pairing recently in, in recent times. I mean, he's just playing it correctly, playing it slowly, playing it in the way that, you know, typically Johnny should struggle a little bit. He's doing just fine. Look at that, the advantage, the momentum, the motivation, it is there. You're in the corner. What can Kukui do? Oh, nice. Okay. Beautiful call out. At some point, you've got to take the risk, right? Especially when you're at this much of a life deficit. You've got to just start believing in your decisions. If you hesitate too much on, like, what might cost you, never mind. Oh. We're going to just... Get a little elbow up in them pegs. Just great awareness from Bird. No one saying that the Ninja Stars were coming out at the right, right, the right moment and catching Rico's mm, end line. And, and then the up. back hit of the, J the, the Jade Glades coming right back and uh, securing the first win for Big Bird. Immediately, Kukui doesn't like it. Immediately. He's like, I'm searching. Well, it's it's there's a level of like... I don't want to necessarily say steamroll, but I, I guess to be fair to Bird, I will. Right? There's a level of steamroll that's uncomfortable. Um, it's one thing if you think there's an adjustment that could be made. It was a little closer, but when you know what you want to do and the character's just not letting you do it, you adjust the plan. And I don't think anybody's surprised when we're going to see some uh, competitive meta decisions here where we're going to start looking at Raiden Kano as an ability to shut this down. Um, has a great ability to do so. I think the biggest thing that you have to really be dialed in on is just when you believe the Johnny player is going to stop for a second, Take the extra time to poke with buttons that you don't think you'd normally have time for. Oh, the Kano Nye is interrupting the approach from Big Bird, but wasn't able to really follow up on it too much. And Ooh! the backhand of the Jake okay. is actually catching Raiden. The damage wasn't that big, but just the fact that we were able to squeeze in a little extra. It's big here, you know, because yeah. Raiden can be one of those characters that really dominates very quickly off of Storm Cell, off of there is This should be the start of what I'm talking about. Here, here. Yeah. So you could Kano route off of that into like Superman if you wanted to get towards the corner. We're not going to bother. Johnny going to get pick up here. Oh, big, uh, big Phantoms as well coming from, from Katana, but oh, no dropped. fan lift. It's still good. It's still good. We go for the fourth. Though, that is a it combo up. route. It, it is just tight to time that uh, jump two time. You have to be very on the money. And the stagger game from Raiden is going to be super important here, right? You want Bird to sit through as much of this pressure as he's like forced to hold. Yeah, but look, you have absolutely no cameo right now. And guess what? You know. Bird has three of them at Oh, and Flawless point. blocked too, so no chip there. Oh, had Kukui committed. That could have oh, been very big, the back door here. Are we going to time Kano nice? We are for we pressure. Are nice. The throw coming in. And are we going to do it again? No, we don't have access to him. Okay, I, looked, I was looking at the one one. And, and it's no! again. Big break. Had to do it. But the spacing, the opportunity. Is it going to be oh, Big Bird? The throw would have been so big. He just needs him to block something. Amazing escape, but the chip damage from Johnny is so good. And the down two in order to catch the anti air is if not going to be enough. If I was Kakui, I'd be so annoyed right now. I really would be. Not huge. because he's not capable of dealing with it, but it's just constantly trying to. Like, keeping track of Chameleon is also such a pain for a lot of people. I might be just, like, expressing uh, my own frustrations with her. No, you're correct. But a, a big part of that frustration is having to constantly not only watch your opponent, right? Like, the how. Uh, like dialed in your eyes have to be on where your health is at where your meter is at what form she's in then to then consider what the mix is right like right now he has access to Melina confirms or Melina mix you forget that that overhead catches you you don't respect glades you get caught nice block and as I say that look at the pressure in the corner I mean it's all really in big it's a fan lift, yeah. another one another character so he's gonna select. try out one more team what do you think it's going to be? I think it might be just Kenshi. It, any kind of the, the, the top tier characters. So Kenshi, it could it be. be. I do know a lot of Kenshi players do complain about Johnny. They don't necessarily like it, but it is an option. Ooh, We're going to Tanya. Yeah. Now, I will say, um, Unjust, I know, a lot of times online has pulled this out against really strong Johnny players. It's kind of like found a way with Tanya to sort this. That's um, a life hack, having two of the best MK players in the world. That are siblings. That are yeah. siblings. And they can really just feed off of one another what works and what doesn't work. And if Tanya is the answer to Johnny Cage, I'm excited to see it. And I will say also one of the big things to consider is not only like having a sparring partner like that, because there's a lot of competitors out there who have that, right? You would go to say like, oh, well, why aren't all of them showing up at events like this? To have an offline competitive partner like that. In your house, you can practice that and be accustomed to that. And yeah. you're both talented, mm -hmm. like neck and neck. 
and it's really showcasing this, the pace here is being slowed down immensely by Tanya. She's kind of, in my opinion, she just gives off a very defensive kind of vibe. She does not want you to really come in with her, to not her taunt, but I'm sorry, with her, uh, with her weapon. Yeah, I this is going to be place. maximizing reads on Wake Up, right? Goro going to give us the conversions here, so you constantly have to hesitate. It's a, it's a good team to slow down the pace of Johnny. Beautiful forward to the contest there. Oh, look at this. Oh, but drops it. This is so bad because he has no meter to break. No meter. You'll have Goro either. You're coming oh, in the missed time from Bird, but he cannot have, he gets caught up. Okay, cool. There we go. You're, yeah, there we go. That is the, the win now, I Now, I will say one of the things to consider here, yes. as much as forward 2 one, one has a gap that will essentially break if uh, any armor move you try to use, Johnny is one of the few characters that can kind of wave himself out of that situation. And so you've got to be cautious finishing that string against them. This stand 3 is also going to be a big uh, tool, right? So it's... The con he constantly has to hold your pressure. He's constantly worried about the wake up. Stamp three is a, uh, is a good deterrent. Johnny's got very far reaching anti airs, a decent projectile game that's hard to punish. He's got a lot of ways to get Johnny to calm down. All right, there we go. My turn, your turn. Kind of antics here to Koi. Gasmi started and gets it again. Another quick little combo here just to get something, uh, something on the board. Very even life bars as well. Big Bird has not been able to play the game whatsoever. Gora has been a really big thorn in his backside in this matchup with. The Tanya Goro uh, duo. Oh, oh my I God, think from, he tried to duck it. He forgot it was amplified. Yep. Now, I will say that projectile does have an asinine amount of chip on top of that, but I do think the difference was that he got hit. I don't think he blocked it. I think he just tried ducking it. Yeah, I think he yeah. tried to duck it, and, like, I, you know, subconsciously, I think he forgot it. Yeah. The meter was spent on it. You can't. Oh, we'll see here. Now it's going to crystal up, too. There we go, coming up on deck, coming in strong is Okokui, who is just throwing Big Bird around this the map right here. Okay, big throw, gonna be sending him a little bit more into the corner. And Bird trying to find his way through the neutral now. If he cannot sort out the differences here, this could be problematic. He might have tried to wave out there, I think that was part of the reason he got hit. Uh, another thing too is that if she's gonna continuously forward 2 one, one and you don't have an ability to armor out, you do have to get that flawless block timing down because the chip will add up. Everything she does is multi-hitting. Okay, I think you know, Big Bird's starting to get a little more comfortable here with the approaches that Kukui is going for. There it is, the Melina came coming as well. And unfortunately, you know, just, just not going to be enough. The chip damage is going to be way too much He would have had to have flawless blocked it or jumped it. Pretty and just much. Let it completely. And this has been the big difference maker. I, I, I will say the, uh, the twins between Unjust and Kukui have really been convincing me that Tanya's a great answer to this character. I mean, clearly she just forces him to slow down so much. You can see that Big Bird was in the very beginning of these matches has been a little bit more apprehensive in approaching. But when he gets the opportunity, when he gets that opening to actually play the game as Johnny, the life bar here is completely different to one oh, another. I, I like that he really tried to up. Ooh, oh, big okay. catch in the fan to lift. Yep, yep, yep. Boom, bam, bop. Let's go again. Okay. And I will say, if he's if he's uh, insistent on trying to use that jump in off of Chameleon fan lift to assert pressure, up blocking him is also a great answer too, right? Just to get him to calm down and second guess it. The most damaging throw in the toolkit gonna come out of Jade here. Okay, this is match point for Big Bird. If he guesses next uh, next next uh, next round, if he plays the second round just as much as he plays the third round, he should get this. And look, the ad adaptation is there. He understands. You're going to utilize this move and Gros can come out and try to punch me. I'm going to vlog right through it and I'll be just fine. Do it again. Big overhead oh, yeah. though. And Kakui, I don't think for the entire set has finished that string as of yet. So that was a good little uh, sneak thing to give Bird to think about. Nice shadow kick at distance. Responding to the whip. Big. Stagger game big here. He's going to get another opportunity to push that pace. He's going to back up with it, which is interesting to me. I thought he would have went in. He's definitely respecting this Tanya a lot right now. And nice duck down, but... Oh, if he would have squeezed believe. in a down one, that could have been really helpful too. Having Tanya operate without Goro because he's on cooldown and extending that is so important in a matchup like this. I, I like that breaker use there. Give us some extra time. He just had to go for the really early break, but unfortunately was not able to, uh, you know, avoid his, his opportunity combo. from Kakui. He has, exactly, he has to hold all this extra damage. The chip is insane here. Look, right, sub 100. It's really anything Kukui does, but did not yeah. believe in the moment. Didn't push in when he got We're that going right back aerial. In. We're going right back in. Mm -hmm. We're clapping. He believes on himself. He's got the capability to do it, right? A lot of the uh, sequences he's got here was very strong. It's just the difference of really trying to uh, work out this neutral. I like that re response to the buff, right? Anything he's going to get, don't let him get it for free. Gonna be throwing yourself all back, all back to the corner, and even then going further back into the corner with the forward throw. Gonna be starting off very well for Kakui already into this into this uh, fifth game. 
and the Georgia just kind of skirting right over what with the grab. Man, amazing movement from Kukui all around. It's the problem, right? Just the ability to interrupt. You get teams like uh, Tanya Goro here, Kung Lao Goro, that get conversions off of these launchers. It can be very problematic. I say a good break because now neither character really has any meter to go off of, but I mean, the advantage, the the momentum is really shifted. I'm interested from too in her finishing completely. the string instead of doing back forward four for better four. positioning. Like mm -hmm. I get it's an in the moment thing. Yeah. I don't mean to be hypercritical, but back forward four would have, you know, stuck Bird against the wall a little more, giving him more room to uh, retreat, which has kind of been the name of the game for him here. It's a right. troll, 13 on the board. Swing over the fourth though, but it gives Tiny a little bit of space. Can be close to the distance with the shadow, because like I mentioned earlier, okay. Nice and pacing. right through, uh, blocking right through everything, but the back throw can be sending you into a little bit further into the corner where Kukui kind of wants you to be. But instead, can be maintain this uh, long range distance. And this is the thing too, Bird wants to contest every time that Kukui goes for a buff, but if you miss time it slightly, you just leave yourself super open. So you're trying to be nice very jumping. cautious. Yeah, let's see what this leads into, uh -huh. the drop unfortunate. Very unfortunate drop, but we, get, we go for the fourth throw instead, so it gets a little bit of damage uh, uh, busted out here. Mm, oh, that's problematic. Oh. He's gonna cut it short too. We barely have any bars either. Almost, almost three bars. We at least have breaker available to us. We uh, he, yeah, right he's now, forced there it to spend is. it. He has and to. And you notice too that Kukui was like very smart in like ending those oh, wow. sequences early. That was so <laughs> good. Very, very good all around. I mean, Big Bird had an amazing 2-0 lead, and once Kukui kind of shifted through the characters that typically do well into, I'll say, 80% of the cast, mm -hmm. we go into Tanya, who has, who's not even, I don't even consider her to be in that top 10 get category quite yet, but with into but her Johnny, ability to deal with them is really good. It's yeah. so good. She's, she's so a great anti-meta character for a lot of different reasons, and I think just her ability to contest a lot of what they do, right? Like, meta characters have very small amounts of gaps in their offense, but meaningful gaps when you can find them. Yep. And the fact that she can get so much off of either getting the hit and armoring out on a call-out, even if you bait her, Goro's going to protect. So the risk-reward is in her favor for trying to do that every time. Um, I think it's really beneficial. And her ability to contest that range is that a lot of characters in the roster cannot. Like, that stand three reaches about default match distance in the beginning of the game. It's crazy. I'm sorry, I was just looking at the thing. Yeah. No, you're good, you're Silences. good. I thought Silence was going to win. Silence is the best. Yeah, Silence is down. Silence got caught side. up. Um, Silence is still in, at least. He's still he's in loser's round two. He's in round two right now. But For sure. He's got a path to go. And I, I mean, it's more of the mental stress from that, right? The fact that you like double the amount of matches that you have to play, etc. cetera. Uh, but next up, we're going to have Wraith versus Alphabet. So this should be, for all intents and purposes, Shane Goro versus uh, Melina Lau. And we see a lot, I saw a little bit of that Molina earlier in, the, in his round one against Wu, and it was it was it's cooking. strong. It's strong. I mean, there's nobody out there who plays this game competitively that isn't aware of how annoying Molina Lau can be. Right? If you get hit, you're just gonna get drowned in constant vortex. That's a strategy that kind of got nerfed for Sindel that Molina still has great access to yes. because she has so much time to cook up Lau. Um, in a way where Sindel has kind of had to uh, adjust based on the cooldown or really take advantage mm -hmm. of snap and work in spaces for it, which she wouldn't normally have to. Um, but Melina still, you, you have so much time when you're sitting up to dash in, call out loud, go for your mix. Yep. Um, and then get your opponent to hold all of that and just your ability to mess with that timing. I do know the cooldown on Lao Hat is like different now. It's like um, the, the most memory has kind of been shifted around a little well, bit. Well, it takes cooldown. a little bit more time, but yep. Melina is one of those characters who can operate without them. Like she can mix on her own, right? Her stagger game is she's ridiculous. Great. Yep. She's she's plus off of things. She has like some forbidden strings that you never use, but like. <laughs> I but forget you can where them. they are, but they're there. <laughs> they're they, there. They can be surprise factors. I don't think it's worth your time a lot of the time, but if you need a little extra something, you know, you can always squeeze them in. And uh, one of the things you always have to be aware of with Shang is that not only does he have his entire toolkit, but he has yours. Yep. At all times. And we have seen, you know, uh, Wraith, Wraith is, is very comfortable. Fan. Very comfortable. He has said a, he we're doing, doing a mirror match. Earlier. He said we're doing a mirror match. Mm. If I have you in bracket, we're mirror matching. But not in the way you think. We are going to be snatching, is snatching usually, you and playing you. I will tell you 100%. If he respects you in bracket at all, he has labbed out what sh how Shang can route himself into what your character does yep. so he can do it for more damage. Absolutely. Absolutely. I saw him practicing it earlier today. He's, I saw him practicing it earlier today. He's evil he in. In, the, in, the, in the best type of way. He My is man was a grinder. Right and early labbing everybody's characters at Shang, trying to figure out how much damage it does and what's the route to get into it. 
I and I love the dedication. When you're playing a hit like like Sang Sang Songer, any of yeah. any Transformers transformative yeah. character, any game, you have to know what you're doing. Well, this is the thing too that is that sense. he has routes where he can essentially convert into Goro and use Goro to launch you as he's shape shifting into you, and then continue the route as you. You will regret having found me. Empty. And so he can actually route and end up as your character, and then start doing your mix. And Melina Goro is a team. Oh, it is. It's, 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 it's the it's the uh, the default team that you see in the uh, in tutorial. That's her tutorial team. And I will tell you, Melina and, and I keep saying this everywhere, and I will do it until we get to the end of this competitive game. If you guys are a fan of Violet, he started playing that team because of me. Okay, I told him to play it at ECT, okay. and now he's top eighty pro comp. I know he's on STG <laughs> and everything, and STG is great, and I love those guys. But when you're like, wow, everybody goes violence. Melina Goro, me. Okay, you, your influence. I told, I, I told, I was like, if you do this, it's, it's gonna, it'll get you there. And it definitely mm. did. I mean, it's it's a good team for a reason. Button check, making sure we have this on spin dash. You know, and, and look immediately what we're button checking. Can I do Molina combos? <laughs> I think he he acts with a button check so he could practice a B and B real quick. My favorite is always watching what they're checking for in button and button combos. Mm. Can I duck? Can I block? Can I do this? And then can no. I block? Wraith, I think is the most important. <laughs> Wraith is can I be better than you? <laughs> yeah, and I respect it. You have three characters at your disposal as Shang Tsung, young, old, and you, the yeah. opponent. Now let's see here where we choose to go. We're going to go straight into Vortex. We are. Try to time that. Jump away. Decent strategy. There's, there's ways for Melina to deal with that, but it's important to try to take note of what your opponent's first answer to it is. Race is a big. If it's possible to jump away, he most likely will try that first. See how, see if your pressure is actually real, right? Like, I'm not going to be afraid. Of, and, and honestly, in the beginning of the game, what was everybody's big recommendation for Lao Hat? Like, the first couple of weeks, just jump away from it. Yeah, jump, that jump was everybody's away. first answer. Mm hmm and it worked for Wraith in that moment, but look at this, we're over in the corner, great way, uh, way to get out of it, but the dive kick, of course, gonna be sending Wraith, uh, not in the corner again, but at least further back, maintain that space, and unfortunately, no big punish because of Laohat coming right back, great awareness from Wraith all around, but again, the command guard from Melina is gonna be sending you really low in this life, uh, in life deficit. Now, off doesn't really have to approach anymore. Can play for size, can play for hat, can just go for chip damage. It's Wraith's job to approach if he can. But Melina will not let you. Alright, trying to find something here. This is the problem is that, yeah, if you get caught with one of those and he's ready, that can't actually kill. Oh. Here we go, stand for fatal, and that's it. That's it. And that's it. If you were curious why Alphabet was freezing, it was to try to not get caught up with that. Yep. But unfortunately, we did in the end. I mean, I, I think. Alf uh, Wait, they didn't just... Okay, this no. shouldn't do any damage to her, I'm gonna be real. Yeah. Lore-wise, she, sh she should actually gain health if you do that. Yeah, Alphabet was just... I think it's a little bit... not. I don't want to say cocky, it's a completely wrong word. It's a little bit too... willing to play out the game longer than I need it to be. And when you give Shang Tsung that time, that efficiency, that space to set up, you see what happens. Well, it's hard too, right? Because in a sequence like that, like Lao Hat would give you like a win condition, but if you summon Lao Hat, Wraith is a level of competitor that can react to that and find that skull. Absolutely. You know? So it's like trying to be cautious about how you cover yourself. And now with Alpha and being a little bit in the deficit, we're seeing a little bit more of a, of a you know, rush down, like very, very, not antsy, just a little bit anxious and to make this game a little more even. Well, it's a difference with Ray too, right? Like, he is the type of competitor where if he has the opportunity to box you with Shang, that's his preference. He's more comfortable with that. That's why he's a bigger fan of, like, Goro. That would have been a beautiful pickup had he been uh, more committed to it. Doing off to Young Shang. A little bit. Gonna cover that again. Now, there's this, again, the space. I'm curious if Alphabet took that last hit on purpose to create that distance and not have to hold the Ray's next sequence. But it's gonna come here. He's gonna find oh, it wow. with a sweep. And really, he could have gone really two ways good. with that. Either stagger game into something like that to try to bait or just fully finish the string and uh, commit to the chip adding up over time. I think Goro, usually if you watch his cameo meter with Goro, will help you figure out what decision he's going to make. Yeah, not going to be seeing any swap here in terms of characters, in terms of cameos. We're just going straight back into it. And I feel like the Alphabet can do it. Like, <laughs> it, you know? Yeah. No, it's very possible. I mean, that first round was very telling as far as like what he's capable of doing with his offense. In oh, my. <laughs> and Stop letting him hit you. My, it sounds silly, but sometimes the advice is that simple, right? Like, listen, this is a this is a guy who's patient. Let's remember that when we think about our sequencing here. That there's a there's a chance that he's just not going to press the way that you're used to other people doing it. That he's going to wait out and react, right? There's, the the way like we have this. to bait him is a little different based on what he's willing to do. Here's Gore to protect. Oh, oh big, big yeah, jumping! Way too slow on the anti air there. 
Absolutely, but at least thankfully for Wraith, Alphabet wasn't able to really capitalize off of that huge jump in opportunity. So it goes right back to, you know, who can get their combo started, and it's going to be Wraith once again. Gain the side switch as well, going to be continuing his combo more or less, you know, just almost to finish. Nice patience, and this is going to be big punish and optimal too. Didn't even need to go for all that with the amount of health that was there, but it's important that his muscle memory knows that when it's time to punish, that's the better one. Completely agree. I mean, uh, again, Melina's uh, teleport kicks are not the safest thing in the world if you're blocked right through them. And of course, while this should be an obvious statement at this point, you're going to want to pay attention to Wraith's form, whether he's in young or old at distance, to uh, help you figure out what type of zoning plan he wants to go for. Good poke. He's pushing him further into the corner. Lao Hat, but a little bit too late on the pickup. Oh, that's going to convert. There we go. Great, great We're Lao Hat for Vortex here. That is armor breaking. This is the alphabet I know and love. There we go for a throw state in the corner. On everything you're going. Huzzah! What are we going to be seeing here? It's not an impossible post? comeback, but it's oh! going to be a difficult one here. There's that. And notice, too, how we didn't ball roll knowing that ball roll might have killed them and put us in the corner. We just took the easier answer to hold that positioning. So he's going to be shooting right through all the fireballs and then boom, the rush down outside oh, of the corner and then immediately goes right back in. I love that command. I got so much from Melina. Trying to find herself here as a nice throw. Back in the Those corner. The Shiatsu Masat. And the pressure of a bunch of mixes, a bunch of lows, a bunch of highs coming in. And the armor through has to be uh, sacrificed. And that's what I'm looking for. There it is. Wraith, you need a little bit of something started here. And why not better than the fireballs coming from the ground? Gonna be doing it right again. Boom. I'm trying to watch her meter. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how much she's gonna get in time. He's gonna get to finish this route. Oh, and this is guaranteed. Very had beautiful. that gotten blocked, you still would have had to have dealt yep. with the stomp. And this has been uh, a new strategy of his that he's been making use of when he needs a win condition. It's one of the few times that he will straight forward go for that Goro stomp. And he just needs to kill enough time for Goro to come out and kind of guarantee that. Yep. I, I don't even know, honestly, how you get out of it. You don't. I don't know if you can. I mean, if I could, if I could pick up control right now and look it up, I, 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 but, <laughs> I, but like, you know, bro, I haven't played this game in quite a while. Please. I'm not a labber, I'm a watcher. I love watching these type of interactions happen and then wondering someone much more experienced than I am to lab it out for me. And I then will I realize, say too, if you guys can see in the background, that is Gur standing there. If you're curious if that MKNJ medal is from today, it's not. I asked that not. he, so he came into the bathroom, right? <laughs> After you see conversations that happen to the bathroom and I, and I go, is that from the Adjustice Tournament today? And he goes, no, Arma owes me one. So I just, oh. <laughs> so he just pulled up with his. I have one bronze medal in my collection that's going to stay in the house so I don't lose it, but we're going to try Lee Mei. Ooh, big fan. Big fan of Lee Mei. Don't see her too The rush often. game here is going to be incredible, but I'm curious how he's going to get through moves. What was the cameo pick? She's got a couple of good options. Scorpion, oh, right? So Scorpion. we're going to capitalize on damage, right? So ideally, you want to call out something with back for Now, had that short hop overhead hit, you know, what, what I call a short, quote-unquote short hop overhead, uh, that Scorpion confirmed would have been beefy. This was a while since I've seen Lee Mei, and I feel like, you know, going into someone like Shang Tsung, this game, the same game plan is going to be played by Wraith, and Wraith definitely knows how to play someone like Lee Mei, mm. if need be. She has a lantern as a trap, she has great oh, rush, she has great four. damage output, but do you have the patience to deal with Wraith? That's the thing, right? It's like, the ways you want to get in are so much more obvious now. And I think, I think this was a lasted effort to see if maybe the, a change in environment would cause a difference here. But I think Wraith is going to be more comfortable with this match. I'm sure he felt a sigh of relief when he saw this. I, felt so much I can't believe he reacted to that. Sometimes it just happens. I mean, I mean again, <laughs> 80% Wraith's of the community can't see Scorpion. Wraith's reaction time is there. He is a young. He has that like mentality to be like, I, you're calling the camera out. I know exactly where to go. I know where I can go in. I know that you're don't have a response to anything that I'm doing quite yet, and it, 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 it's a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Mm. Let's see how the stagger game is here. Oh, the patience. A lot of respect, yeah. Plus off of that, so the, the first hit is a high and there is a gap. There we go. We do there have options go. to get out of that. If he's going to sequence on you like that, you can duck the next one. You just got to be confident that's what he's going to do, and you're not always going to take that risk. That was an easy 43% off of a one interaction from just crouch, uh, crouch blocking. Nice patience. How hard can he make this hurt? Oh, dude, we might be seeing it hurt with the fatal blow at the end. If oh Force no, force her to do it again. We may have to do a little bit of a reset, want a little bit more damage before we get into the full uh, the full extent of that fatal blow damage. Oh, scorpion, scorpion, scorpion and say and it Into breaker, last resort option for the alphabet in this game. 
could be a punish point for Wraith, but Wraith can be all going, young, all going, all going over Young Shang and wanting to utilize those fireballs to maintain oh, the distance. But great. Uh, he was trying approach. to play the chip game. And he it was working was. out well for him, but he knew the whole time that like, he couldn't. He had to be very careful with his timing because it was clear that Alphabet was going to try to time in with something at some point. You know, how cautious can you be? Here we go with the side switch into the corner pressure. Allowing Wraith uh, allowing to actually come out very quickly. I do like his his commitment to the game plan, right? Like, this is beneficial for Shang. His win con here is going to be to create distance. Um, though he has opportunities to push, and it's his preference, right? If he has to play neutral, this is going to be his version of it. Oh, my God. The shit. We talk about it. Going over to the Lee Mei. Look, we actually know what is going on. The armor through from uh, oh, Alphabet no, he helping dropped. a little bit, but not going to be enough. Three and zero. Do you know Great. where stuff? No, he doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. <laughs> I was gonna what see if fraud. he was gonna do Lee Mei's fatal. He doesn't know it. What a fraud! Does not do you everyone. even play Shang? Do you even play Shang at this point? He plays everyone. But that's the confirm we were random. talking about, right? He's gonna use Goro to launch to extend into that shape shift, and then I mean, for all the characters that could have damage, you know, Lee Mei Goro also has to like Goro is it has a surprising amount of utility with a lot of the cast. So yep. having him as a constant go-to if you're going to shape shift is one of the better options, I do think. Taking so a little peek just, behind me and see what's going on. I was just getting by. <laughs> <laughs> That's for uh, Wraith, but... Huh? Yep, yep. Time? Yeah, yeah right, we perfect. got you. All right, guys, we're going to swap off commentary. It's been a blast. Of course, as always. I'm going to say we should do this again, but we will. We, we always, always do. do. We, we always, always do. do. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Hope you're enjoying the show. Get ready for... Uh, does quarters finals put us in top? No, 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 it doesn't. We're in Get ready for top 16. Coming up. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to MK and J23, baby. 23. We got some sick matches coming up for you guys. I am the Alpha. Ooh, ooh. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we're back. I'm the Alphabet. I'm Yem Buns. And we're going to have some fuck. Am I allowed to swear? Okay, I'll keep it to a minimum. That reaction was kind of like moderation. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it to a minimum. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so we have got coming up on stream. Say it's the bracket right here. Okay. Yeah, pull up that bracket. We've got Gurr and HF. That'll be a really interesting match. Okay. Is that so going to be a uh, Garrus Sindel match? That's what I'm guessing. I saw uh, HF playing Hercules a little bit earlier, and he was rocking Sindel Tremor, which Tremor, I thought was a right. really interesting uh, cameo pick. I've not seen that before. So uh, let's let's have that. I feel like you usually use uh, Kung Lao with Sindel for the typical hard to block, but right, right. He just I saw a couple bits and pieces of that match. He was doing some really cool stuff with Sindel and Tremor, mm -hmm. popping the armor. Like never see that. So. You get the you get more health too with Tremor as well. That's as true. To something like Kung Lao. So That's true. Know. Two really really interesting characters with a lot of oppressive options yes so i my guess is we're gonna see who gets the train rolling here first <laughs> so whether it's Adele, whether it's garris like they can get the momentum going garris motaro from gar that's really interesting as well all right kind of feeling out each other in neutral here a little bit of zoning on each end seeing which player wants to bite first Low cancel gets out of there. Lots of respect right now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Commits to that. Nice Ooh. use of the Motaro from Kerr. <laughs> now, what's interesting in this matchup, too, I find that Motaro gives your character a life deficit, right? So yeah. you've got 900 health on the Garrus and then 1,100 on Sindel. So I'm wondering how much that might. Uh, contribute to, you know, the difference in this matchup. Is it minus 50 health with Mataro, or did they, did they change it from... Was it, I, thought it was I think like it's minus, minus 50. Okay, I, I thought I'm it was minus 100 sure. at the launch, to be honest, but I don't know. Real patient game here so far. Yeah, it doesn't seem that either player has really gotten opened up by much. They're just kind of picking away at each other. Oh, and another uh, reflection right there. All right. Oh, Ooh. misses the snap. Ooh, nice armor from HF there. And now we got 10 seconds left on the clock. What are we going to do here? 
Oh, that's a big hit from Gary right there. Oh, oh nice, in. nice. And the life wow. was so close on either end That was there. dead even just about for yeah. that entire uh, set right there. Fight. All right, Gur going up one in the set. Let's see uh, if HF makes the adaption. Adaptation, excuse me. <laughs> Into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great anti from Gur. Gets the snap. Full combo. What's for breakfast? Breaking Chooses that. to break. I respect the break. You kind of have to. Yeah. You don't want to let Garrus get that momentum and really cash out. Plus, if t uh, time keeps dwindling down like last round, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to be real tough to kind of stay in there. And the meta in this game has evolved, I feel, to the point where timeouts are a really common occurrence. And check out Gur with a big Ooh. damage here with the corner carry. 45 into corner. Motaro turret. Wow. That. Ooh. Ooh. HF's hanging on for dear life here. Let's see if he can make something happen. You're backing up, though. He's like, I got all the time. Yeah, come yeah. to me. Exactly. And that's it. That's going to do it. Gur up. 1-0. 1-0. Very interesting play. I, I, the respect at the beginning was was really awesome to see from either player. Yeah. And then once Gur kind of, like, smelled blood, he went after it. Right. Once he got in those few times, that's all it really takes. Mm -hmm. I have to say, the Motaro cameo with Garrus is really interesting. Um, adds a look, another reflect. He's on it. Mm, those reactions. Two in a row. Got the hourglass loaded up. This oh, is the snap. Nice reflects every single time. Gur is on top of those. That had to have been a decision somewhat when choosing Motaro probably as the cameo. That would be my guess. I, you know, I haven't seen Gur play really any Motaro, maybe outside of today. So perhaps this is a matchup specific uh, choice. Right. Sweeps plus twelve is that low? Really? Ball, yeah. And HF is, it, it seems he's like he's just kind of feeling stuck here. Yeah, Can't really get anything going. Gur he's is trying so to get impressive. over there. He's trying, but Gur is just doing a really great job of just, just kind of keeping him in his place. Yeah. Denying him any, any option to really advance wow, or start yeah. his pressure. That was very oppressive. Lots of stuff just getting thrown at Sindel and or reflected right back. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, you got to think when you're, when you're HF and you want to, play the zoning game, uh, Gur pops Motaro and says, no, uh right back at you. You know, what does that do to you? Yeah. What, uh, how, do you how do you start thinking in the matchup? Like, how am I going to adapt to this? Misses the snap. Reflects. Hourglass is loaded. Sweet. Wow. That's so good. And the command grab. Gur's got HF just about in the corner right now. Oh. Nice. Good okay. buttons. And he snaps out Rewind. of it. Wow. Which is also smart. Just kind of kills the momentum right. that HF really needs, you know. Yeah, I mean, that was his his one opening there. And Gerda said no. Gets back throw there. Nice flawless block. That's a down one punish. Float cancels. A little bit of pressure. All right. That seems really plus. Nice. Oh, stand wow. one interrupt. And just Another again, one. the snaps. Yeah, overhead. The gears overhead. And now we're looking at uh, 20 seconds left on the clock. Gur is fully loaded. What are we going to see here from HF? He's just got to get in once. He's got uh, Gur in a good spot in the corner. He can't really go back, obviously, mm -hmm. anymore. But it's making it tough. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, tough. That's tough. It's so oppressive. I mean, it's you've got the combination of... Garrus is like really good buttons in neutral, right? But then he has all these defensive options once he finally gets opened up. Again, just really patient with Gerb using the reflex and just staying back there, even flawless blocking a lot of these projectiles. And I don't think that, honestly, that this war of this zoning war of attrition is going to work out for HF in the end. I think he really needs to start getting in there because oh, the Gur's reflect option is just really strong. Arguably better just from a, I guess, a zoning standpoint compared right. to Sin what Sindel can potentially do. And then, like you said, with the time and stuff, it's just, it's really difficult. Oh, and then, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Teleport back to full screen. 
And the snap catches him wow. dashing. HF electing to break. Okay. And he calls out the cameo, so Motaro's going to be disabled for a little bit here. This might be an opportunity for HF to come in and really establish some pressure. Oh. Hmm. Overhead. Okay. Ooh. And we're looking at 15 seconds left on the clock. All of these matches have gone down to oh, pretty much the HF's wire. in. Mm. But it's... That is, that's got to be so tough mentally, too, to deal with being like, oh, I finally get in? No. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. negated. I know myself. I would feel I would so feel defeated like, every know. time that snap Because it takes so long and so much effort just to get in that one hit. Mm -hmm. And then... When you're playing against a player like Gur, <laughs> who is not going to give you an opportunity to open him up for free. More projectile games. And Gur is on set point here. Yeah. Get another hourglass loaded. Yeah, and Gur's just taking his time. You know, he's got nowhere to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even with the 900 health with this, you know, this game plan with Motaro and Garius, it's really not, it's not too terrible in terms of just really waiting your turn or having to worry about the fact that you only have 900 health, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. All right, and it looks like HF is having a bit of a life lead here. Yeah. He's See being he very patient. Up. Very patient. He's doing a great job. The overhead. It's tough from Garrus. HF gets... Oh! Commits to it. HF's in a good spot. We got less than 20 seconds left. Garrus got okay, him in the corner, cool. though. Oh, the pressure. Nice armor, armor interrupt. From That's a He's punish. He's in. Nice oh. armor from HF. He's got the life Two, lead. One. HF's taking mm. it. Wow. Hanging on. Hanging on by a thread. Let's see if he can't uh, get this momentum going. Tell you what, man. When Sunil gets in on you, it's this very scary situation to be on the receiving end of because she can do a lot of stuff once she gets that one touch on you. Absolutely. As, as many characters in this game can, but Sindel is going to be particularly, you know. And you know, I haven't um, I haven't quite been made aware of the, I guess, mix-ups and setups that Sindel can do with the Tremor cameo. Yeah. They're a little hard to blockables, but I'm sure that they are quite oppressive. But it's just a matter of, you know, HF getting that momentum going, mm -hmm. getting, see, you know, finding those openings with Gurr. And, you know, God forbid, he's got the snap loaded. So, uh, Gurr's kind of looking to be running away with it right here. Oh, Ooh, nice. Quick buttons. But he's going to get out of it. Yep. And... Motaro turret. Wow. Fully loaded. It's another 10%. And an overhead. That's just... It's very difficult mm. to deal with. And that's going to be in. an opening. And... You're going to spend the fatal blow? You have to. You yeah. absolutely have to. No, uh, no way are you going to be leaving damage left on the table here in a situation like this. And he went right into the Fatal Blow, too. I imagine probably because it'll scale maybe a little bit better than adding in a little combo before. Yeah, I think so with Sindel and also Gurr, you know, had those three. That's it? Yeah. Wow. That's tough. GG's. Yeah, GG's to Gurr, taking a 3-0 over HF. It's, yeah, that's got to be... It's gotta that's tough. <laughs> every time, every time <laughs> HF found an opening, I feel like Gurr just Rewind, snapped. you're that's out of it. it. And <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do, what you, do you do in a situation like that? Oh, I don't know, man. So oppressive. So oppressive. But, uh, yeah, yeah Gurr's going to take that 3-0. What a uh, awesome, awesome showing from Gurr here. We've got a lot of killers in this bracket here today. Oh, my goodness. We've got plenty of killers. Look at this top eight right here. We're setting up for it. And or it looks like it. we've got L... Who's coming up on stream next? We've got Pulse Could be and Mike Metroid, I think, jumping up. Wow. Is uh, this going to be Johnny a Johnny play? Are we going to see a Johnny Johnny Cage? Here? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Now, no bias in particular from a Combat Network boy over here. Okay. Um, you know, 
Let's go, Mike Metroid. Um, I'm interested to see how their play styles um, kind of compare and contrast because I have never, I've not seen Mike play Pulse, and quite honestly, I have not seen Mike really play any other Johnny Cages. Right. So I'm wondering, you know, which player is going to get the ball rolling first and establish their momentum and be like, hey, I'm here, I'm showing up, I'm the Johnny Cage. Yeah, and I think one thing from the last, I forget who uh, Mike was playing, but he had a really sick hype combo. And I feel like a lot of times mm. people forget, or Johnny players tend, for some reason, they don't they don't come out as much, like crazy mm -hmm. using the hype meter and mm -hmm. stuff to your advantage. So I'm interested to see how, if that comes into play at all. But And it, it seems that lately the, the Johnny uh, team has been with, let's say, like Johnny Goro or Johnny Lau. So how many opportunities does Johnny realistically have to just build hype meter and neutral for free like yeah you could throw down the kung lao low hat and do a little you know hype build but uh more often than not you know uh, you don't really see hype used very much no at least uh, in my you know perspective and my experience yeah no same here same here i feel like it's definitely more on the rare side mm -hmm. and we are going to see the cage mirror okay pink shirt versus green shirt and we got Pulse in pink and Mike Metroid in green. Are we going to go right into it or do a button check? Looks like we're going to do a little button check here, folks. Mike rocking Striker for his cameo. I mean, what a great cameo for any character, let alone mm. Johnny Cage. But um, Pulse Despite taking the nerfs, too. Yeah, I know. I agree. It's a, it's it's just such a good option. He, he really he, he allows you to kind of disrespect neutral. And we're going to go right into it here. You mentioned uh, Pulse using the Chameleon cameo. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see uh, some sauce that Pulse is cooking up here with Chameleon. And Mike gets the first opening. Boom, striker grenades. There's my hype. Ooh. Oh, takes the bait, but no punish. I'm interested to see this th this match, how much that parry comes to play. The Ooh, duck. nice micro duck OS. Mike keeps him in the corner. Back oh. three, striker grenade saves him, but he uh, gets opened up there. Sick. And now Pulse with the corner. Yeah, six side switch there from Pulse too. Mike gets out of there. Back three, check, but he's going to get punished. Mmm. Fully charged Ooh. back two. Ouch. That is plus frames. The, the overhead. overhead. Yeah. Also, wow. just another great tool to add it from a cameo standpoint, let alone just making unsafe things safe. And then, let's not forget, once Melina shows up on the Chameleon cameo, you've got that double-hitting overhead and vulnerable on Wake Up. Yes. That is, it's unblockable. Let's just call it unblockable because it's insane. And Pulse with the corner, some swaggy combos. Keeping it going. Combos. 41% with that Katana fan lift. That was impressive. And Mike's going to build a little bit of hype here. And we got full hype from Mike Metroid. Let's see if he can't uh, get the ball rolling back. Ooh. Gets opened up by the forward three. And that will Ooh. be the round. <laughs> oh, okay. Why not? Why not try the parry? <laughs> One apiece. We got Pulse with a little bit of corner control backing up and uh, maybe letting Mike hang himself a little bit there. Right. You know, those back three checks are actually really smart. You know, players often might just, you know, start whiffing buttons in neutral, and back three is going to catch them like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, striker saving from the uh, Chameleon fan lift extender. Oh. Dash, dash Both around of the these screen. Players. Both of these players just shoom, shoom, shoom. <laughs> and Pulse gets punished for that. Oh, we're into a hype combo. Ooh, nice catch by Mike Metroid. Look at that. We were saying we haven't seen a hype combo. We're, we're seeing one now. But Pulse getting out of there. Look at these dashes just all around. Both players have to be really <laughs> patient here because one of oh. the death spends the breaker. Absolutely. There's no way that you can let that happen. Good patience from both player. Striker grenades. Ooh, and he's out of there. That's relatively safe. And there's, there's the, the Molina overhead, overhead you were just talking about. Oh, oh! oh! Breaker? What? what? What are you doing? Oh! oh! Wow! Wow! He just let go of it. That what was nuts. What is that he could doing? Have either what way. are you doing? Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow! Down to the wire! Down to the wire! This is going to be a really hype. This set. is this is some crazy Johnny gameplay. And pulls back in right at it. 
Yeah, that uh, that jade that jade glaive is uh, deceptively fast in neutral. You know, you pop that and uh, you can get caught if you're not blocking. Nice throw break. Yeah, by good tech right there. Oh, but the glaive again. Pulls got Mike in the corner. Mm, Low extender. Oh, that's crazy. Another. That's yeah. yeah pulled. That he, was commanding. I think you know he's electing to do the parry because he's expecting uh, a forward three from Pulse in the corner to kind of just guarantee chip and, right. and take the round. Um, but that is twice now that uh, Pulse just hasn't quite taken the bait. Back Ooh. three checks. Forward three from Mike Metroid. Okay. Let's see if he can't get some uh, something going here. Four throw a striker keeps him in the corner. Yeah. Oh, wake up from pulse. Buttons. Nice side switch. That was uh, pretty crispy. But oh. this is the uh, nut punch there. Maybe a little bit too early on Chameleon. It's all good though. He's got pulse has got Mike Metroid back in the corner. Mm. And that's, that's going yeah, to be game two, a commanding game yeah. two. I think uh, you know Pulse is feeling really confident with uh, with the chameleon pick, and uh, we're going to go into some. We're going to go to the accessibility. Okay, I, so I think what Mike Metroid is doing here is with chameleon. If you enable the um, cameo audio cue, he's listening out for just a little uh, a little audio cue whenever chameleon changes her form. Okay, so. I guess, you know, a lot of his adaptation to that cameo is is hearing, like, okay, switch and switch. So that's a lot to keep track of, right? If it you're, is. If you're looking at your opponent's cameo, seeing what's on the screen, mm -hmm. and also playing the game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the corner against Johnny Cage and you're blocking. Yeah. You know? Good luck. Is it Melina? Is it Katana? Right. Is it Jade? <laughs> More importantly, is it Melina? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we're going to go into game three here uh, with Pulse up 2-0. See if Mike Metroid uh, can't get that momentum back. I mean, he was looking really confident Ooh. in game one. That was a crazy interaction. Uh, went for the sweep off the shadow kick, but Chameleon saving. And Pulse is going to get the uh, EX parry, corner carry here. Ooh. Oh, back wow. into the corner. That was sick. Interesting. Oh, got the Microduck, oh, oh, Microduck OS, but uh, didn't cash out on any damage. Just going to hold these Jade Glaives. Oh, and the there's shadow the kicks shadow out of kick. it. Oh, that was great from Pulse right there. Interrupting that oh, overhead. Oh, catches him with the overhead there. And yep. that's going to put uh, Pulse on set point with a full <laughs> stick of hype meter. Uh, Mike Metroid's in the corner here, and a Jade Glaive comes out, and he Ooh. challenges. Wow. Catches him with the dash, and Mike has to spend the breaker there. He doesn't want to bleed anymore. Uh, on the back three. Punish that for sure. Big punish. Carry him to the other corner. Coast to coast, baby. And, oh. Uh, ooh. Look is at this. Gonna, this. Is Damn he going to finish that's this? That's probably it. Wow. Yes. Wow. Look at that. That was... That was an insane. It's funny. Before the set started, we're like, "Are we gonna see any hype coming?" And yep. of course, yeah. the sickest behold. one to finish it off. Yep. That was awesome. Both players uh, getting their fair share of right. hype combos in there. Um, you know, Mike was looking really strong that that first game, but I, I think Pulse just had the download. He he adapted really quickly. Yes. And um, and he kind of sensed it, and then that's it. Yeah. Several like interruptions throughout, and it's just like crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah. Pulse. That was just yeah. crazy Johnny wow. gameplay. Wow. That was a scary Johnny gameplay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't want to be playing either of those players right. in a tournament setting. I mean, Johnny is such an oppressive character. And Johnny Chameleon is just kind of crazy. Mm. It's kind of crazy. Mm. The amount of options that you get, like, uh, just off the glaive, off the overhead, off of the fan mm -hmm. left. Like, and it's constantly changing. My, my only thought is, like, imagine if you could make it so that Chameleon, like, you can choose which state Chameleon is in. Right. Imagine how busted she would be then, right? Oh, my God. Yeah, like, to have only Melina or have only, you know, the Jade Glaive, if oh that's what you God. would choose out of the three. No. Oh, <laughs> oh. 
It is cool though to see how like the Katana version of it just kind of comes in and keeps like your combo going, or it gives you another six percent, whatever it mm -hmm. might be in your combo. Mm -hmm. And and you really didn't see any Katana fans from Pulse. No, it was just more often than not the fan left to either get him out of uh, you know get him out of a hairy situation. Yeah, like Johnny could technically shadow kick that, but it's like you know you have to be on point right. to react to that. Yeah. But often, you know, he would just use it in the middle of a combo and, you know, get that extra bit of damage to cash out. That was some just crazy high-level Johnny gameplay. That, like, was crazy stuff. Absolutely. It's super entertaining to watch. And um, now we're going to see uh, El Kakui right. and Wraith getting into it here. Um, I just played Wraith uh, a couple <laughs> matches ago on stream. Um, his Shang is something else. I mean, this guy won NEC for a reason. You yes. know, he is an incredibly patient player, incredibly strong player. Um, but also, El Kakui here uh, with the Peacemaker pick. I'm interested John to Cena. see this matchup. As am I. <laughs> looks like uh, <laughs> we're just going to go into a button check here and uh, a couple little cheeky torpedoes. But yeah, adding on to the Wraith Shang, I, I found that when he wants to be aggressive with his Shang Tsung, he can be pretty crazy with it too, yes. as opposed to just more zoning with mm -hmm. Shang, as mm -hmm. you might expect. But um, El Kakui with the Peacemaker, with John Cena coming out. Peacemaker Chameleon, no less. Okay. I have a feeling these... Oh, wow. Okay. Peacemaker Shapeshift. Force field from both players. No projectiles. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of that in this matchup. Peacemaker, uh, definitely another quality DLC character for this game. Um, didn't have much time to lab him. I've been kind of out of town the last couple weeks. Um, but I've played against several today. Mm. And he's got a lot of stuff going for him, I will say. He's got some dirt. I mean, Peacemaker has a little bit of everything. He's got a great anti-air. He's got a projectile. He's got an incredibly fast, nearly unreactable, just full screen, you know, essentially shadow pick that, um, uh... Gosh, is that the eagly thing? No, I'm, I'm thinking of the other one. Um, oh, the torpedo. The torpedo. Gotcha. Torpedo, yes, thank you. Um, he's got eagly, he's got low eagly, he's got a lot of options, and to boot, he cashes out on a lot of damage when he gets a hit he here. He does. Right there. Oh, and a ton the of fan lift, lift right there. <sighs> Respectable 32%, and that's going to put wow. Kakui up one point against Wraith. I have a feeling um, uh, Shang really isn't going to be too oppressive in the uh, in the zoning game here. And that's where Wraith, I feel, is really comfortable in like making you come to him. But with that force field, you know, and eagerly, Peacemaker's constantly moving back, so what's exactly. Wraith going to do? And what El Kakui was really cool, he did the Jade Glove, Glaive, into Eagly, into like a gun. Just like three, just crazy amounts of projectiles you just have to look at and just deal with. Yeah. And then when he gets in, boom, 33% right there. And it's just... And when he's going to throw a projectile at Peacemaker, you know, he's got, you know, it's... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No it's, way. It's tough. Ray's just trying to find his way in. And Chip might become the issue here, although Kakui is getting back in the corner. Great pickup. Wow, just get to chip him out. Mm, that's going to be 1 0 Kakui. Yeah. Going up confidently against Wraith Shang. We're getting right back into it, though, because, you know, after that, you might expect to be like, oh, this has to be a tough matchup just in general for Shang soon. But... Oh. Wow. God. Torpedo, torpedo, torpedo. <laughs> Great option from Chameleon. Wow. And this is going to put Wraith in a very tough spot in this first round right here of the second set. But it likes to keep him in the corner with the Chameleon fan lift. And Ooh, that's goes for the rabbit. Chip wow. him out. Wow. This is looking uh, really strong on Kakui's end. I think Wraith um, has got some downloading to do here. Was that last torpedo a punish off the blocked Shang Tsung? I, you know, I can't recall, but I'm willing to bet it was because it's it fast is incredibly and it goes fast. far. Yeah. Oh, oh see what I him. mean? Like it's tough. Okay. You know, and I think Wraith has found more success when he shapeshifts into Peacemaker because yes. hey, I'm gonna pick your poison. 
And I'm going to cash out on some damage here. Ele uh, forcing Kakuya Anything to Anything you can do, I can do better. And look at this. Let's go. Oh, drops it in the corner. Keep keeping the pressure on Kakui though. He's in a great spot now. Oh, Goro oh, misses, he so he's going to get the forward four confirmed. And the side switch. Oh, and there's the, the overhead. That's, That's going to hurt. That yeah, could be that death. Be That's it. Yeah. El Kakui going up 2-0. Well, I think Wraith have found an option in terms of just morphing into Peacemaker right there. Mm -hmm. Because once he gets in, gives him a lot of options that Shang Tsung does not have. And going right back into it too. Like not, not taking a second, not, not thinking about it, just no. getting right back into it. I respect it. I think Wraith doesn't want... Um to lose out on any potential momentum. Yeah. And he finds an opening here with the anti-air. Gonna keep uh, Peacemaker close and uh, cashes out on a little damage here. Wraith has got the life lead. <sighs> Gets opened up by that low. The extender. Wow, he can hit the force field in between the Jade Glaives. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Good chip damage here from Peacemaker and uh, Okakui. Just about dead even now. Oh, that's tough. Oh! Oh! Oh, the torpedoes all over the screen. That's going to put Kakui on set point. Race got to try and find something here. I think so. I mean, uh, he was uh, he was finding a lot of success with shifting to uh, Peacemaker. However, um, just finding those little openings here and there, uh, Wraith has had a little bit of success too. I think. Yep, he's got to wait for Kakui to kind of hang himself in neutral. Yeah. You know, catch and press a button and uh, cash out on whatever damage he can. Because I don't think he's going to win this zoning war. There's the shift. We might see some uh, pretty ignorant torpedoes coming out here <laughs> in neutral. I wouldn't be surprised. No, both players just kind of respecting each other, playing a pretty honest neutral game, and you know throwing out some projectiles here. Race got Kaku in the corner, but now we're got some space. Ooh, Ooh the amplified version of that. Good back throw. It's got a touch health life lead. It's blocking that. Ooh, flawless block. Ooh, is that gonna be it? Yep, that's going to cash for sure. El Kukui taking it, yeah. Wow, Trio convincing. over Wraith. Convincing Trio. Crazy <coughs> Peacemaker stuff. Excuse me, stream? Plenty, <laughs> plenty of torpedoes, man. But just really good. God, even at full screen, he's always got something coming at you, you know. And it's just it's tough to deal with. Similar to kind of, I don't want to say Garrus in that way, just like you kind of always have to be, yeah, always got to be on the lookout. For John Cena, you think it's in his? You think it was in John Cena's uh, contract that he's like, "Hey, if you're gonna put me in this game, one, I know you obviously fatalities and all that stuff, right? It looks like me, but two, you have to make my character good." <laughs> you think he said that to them? Or I whoever? wouldn't be surprised. Not at all. He's like, "Don't make me, I don't know, Quan Chi or whoever." Although mm. Quan Quan is a lot better now. Apparently. My poor boy. My poor boy, Quan. <laughs> Give me good buttons. Give me a torpedo, basically. And but next up, we're going to see Just Measy against Coster. Just me just Measy. Apologize. No T. Mm. Reptile versus... Well, I'm assuming Cosner's playing Reptile. Um, not sure who Just Measy plays, but we'll... You know, I saw... Um, I was playing Just Measy earlier. <coughs> Excuse me, stream. Um, he was playing Sub-Zero. Oh, uh, with the chameleon cameo. With chameleon, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, you don't see too many uh, sub zeros. At no. least coming to these this tournament in particular. Um, no, not at all. But that's another character that I think. I feel like a lot of people wish he was better in certain aspects or more damage or whatever. Mm -hmm. he, during the beta, he was pretty good, I thought at least. <laughs> um, but he's got some good tools, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so reptile. If it is sub zero, that'd be. 
I'm interested. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm having a bit of a coughing fit right now, stream, so I'm actually going to duck out and see if we can't get someone yeah. to swap real quick. Go drink I don't some wanna water. Be, I don't want to be coughing all over <laughs> you guys right now uh, while we're trying to or play some Or over me, so I'll, so I'll, I'll go yeah, this way till you sorry, leave. Sorry about that, Bones. Uh, <laughs> I might be right back. Uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll get someone on here real shortly. Until then, you just have to deal with me by myself, <laughs> chat, which is over there, and I can't read anything you're saying, so if you were... Uh, Taunting the alphabet over his coughing fit. Uh, he did not see, unfortunately. But I can see now, so I'm open for any jokes. Reptile Sub Zero, it is. Interesting matchup. Um, Cosner with Chameleon. Oh, bo both using Chameleon. Doing a quick button check here. Chris hopping on. Huge. Chunk, all right, chunk. all right. I am back. Oh, thank God, a button check. They knew they were like us. We had no casters. <laughs> we had one. We had one caster. We he had knows one. knows little about anything. What's up? How are you? What's up? How you been? Been doing well. So how are cold. you? Are you okay? Yeah, it's I'm so, cool. It's oh, literally you are cool. It is cold. It's, it's nice. Ice. It's nice in the AC is on. We have just Meezy and Costner. Costner is on the sub uh, sub zero. <laughs> And that has been a duo that has been like kind of popular after the I believe after after Lao like nerfs kind of I've seen I've been seeing a lot more often now of Sub Zero. Yeah. That's funny. We were just talking about before we left. We're like we haven't seen much of Sub Zero at all. I mean I mean, I mean Sub Zero Chameleon together. Mm, yeah. They've been very popular. I feel like people have been saying that they're just kind of really oppressive, and I think this is kind of you know, you know showcasing it right now against Cosner and uh, Just Meezy. I mean man, Cosner on the subtitle is kind of getting uh, respectfully cooked. Right. <laughs> a little bit of alligator for lunch, for dinner maybe. <laughs> we had the six side switch putting uh, Sub Zero or Just Meezy back in the corner. Armor. Big throw. That might be the first. Yeah, that's the first set. Yeah, there's one throw. I think that's the one that does the most damage uh, for Chameleon. The other one's like 90, 110. And it's like, mm. why are they inconsistent? Y'all, why you hate Melina so much? She only does 90? I see how it is. Can't get nothing, even as Cameo. It's because she's arguably the see. Yeah, she, she gives is. you so much when you hit. She does give a lot. Big break it has to be utilized there in that moment. Good fan lift to get out of the corner. It's like a little interactive. Ooh. Ooh, the up block. The neutral jump. It works. Just jump in. I'm gonna jump in. You're not gonna think about <laughs> it. Okay, just Meezy. Boom, oh, bam, bop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've been seeing some really cool katana fan lift combo extenders today. I love it because I feel like people haven't even been using it too much, but now that they realize, hey, I can I can get out the corner, I can extend off a com off uh, extend my combo with the uh, katana fan, li fan lift. I mean, it's so fun. Yeah. If we don't just this, this kind of controllers, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> this kind of controllers. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Just we are we are we are exploring the PS5 settings page, ladies and gentlemen. Accessories, yes. Make. Ooh. That's a mystery. Then what was causing then the? Who, uh, exactly. Who? What was causing the? Whatever. I, I have a PlayStation. I have no clue. I don't know. It was the ghost? <laughs> it was Ed Boon. <laughs> Just Meezy taking that first set though. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. There's that uh, that Melina we were talking about the chame the chameleon the chameleon Melina. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's always fun when you talk about chameleon. It's like, do I say chameleon? Do I say Melina? I kind of just I just I just say Melina, Jade, Katana. Right. Big, big slime ball. Another big slime. Oh, Bigger dive sick, kick though. Sick jump over the acid ball. I think he dropped that combo unfortunately right there. But he's got he's got <laughs> Cosner where he wants him. I like the commitment to using the acid uh, the acid ball to take away the ice clone. And then it just, just means like, oh, you actually approached for that? Okay. Right. So that was like 40% meterless, including the throw from Just Meezy. But Cosner's out of the corner. Now. Oh, yep. Gonna punish that for sure. Oh, this is really big for Cosner. One year in the corner, too. Cosner finally has an opportunity to actually play the game today. Chameleon coming in with the back end. Nice. Just nice patience overhead. from uh, Just Meezy. The back throw. Or sorry, the forward throw. Boom. All right, round two. Just means he's still up a if one up a game and now up the round is up to Cosner to bring it back. Uh, so find a way to bring it back, missing the overhead man, and then the breaker has to be uh, committed. I thought his combo was gonna be uh, still going after the Molina size hit in the air. 
Oh, big, big, big if true, it definitely is. Boom, we're gonna be a little bit of the goo all over us, and we're gonna turn invisible slowly. Can we catch the read? Oh, Ooh, great up lock! That's crazy. That's not smoke, dude. That's reptile. I'm saying. Speaking of smoke, no one ever plays that poor character. <laughs> I miss him. He was so popular, like, a couple of seasons ago. No, he's not. It's because he looks cool, but ever, you know. Oh! Melina. Like, just Measy, low key, we can bring it back. Wait, overhead. this is the star, the over the double overhead after oh, the jig blade, we drop it. One. Big breaker, wait, he believes! We believe in the comeback. No shot. Please, no <gasps> Wow! That was so sick. He had, he had to do what had to be done. It's just that simple. It's gonna take the Jave Glade to the shoulder. I but can't believe. The fatal blow. I can't believe, like, it worked. I know. From all the way full screen, had 10,000 10, years to react, and it, it worked out so beautifully for just Meezy. Cosner has to get a beautiful showcase of a 3 0, a three, reverse 3 0, to get this back in his favor, to get the win on the board for the bracket. Escape failed, unfortunate. Had the read, but it's not the right way. Just Meezy getting a bunch of throws in these rounds. Okay, here's the combo going. Yeah, there it is. Going and invisible. Oh, oh, the chameleon. Big invisible, too. They didn't have a, have a time to poke out where the reptile was. The croc roll, yes. Ooh. Slide. It's risky, but it works. Here we go. Strong interrupt. The game. Or strong throw that Ooh, game he has. Ooh, great block from Cosner. Yes, yes, Cosner. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Round on the board. Yes, this is the comeback I was looking for. <laughs> I was gonna say unbiased commentary over there. Nah, I, I love to see it. I love to see a little bit of like a. About to throw something across the room. Story. Just I'm always coming back though with a vengeance. I mean, yeah, he was like, "Oh, you, you got somebody started on me? No, not for long. Please, don't play with me." Oh, we go. Ooh, ice knife. I see. Oh, there it is. The Molina ball roll. Yeah. I kick into the acid ball not once but twice. Gonna be extending off this. Gonna be oh! running in, but with the grab. Now it's just Misi's uh, time to play the game. Boom! Fan lift to convert into the air. Oh, I love to see combo defenders like that. And he's using Molina himself. Oh! Oh, you know what sucks for just Misi? He doesn't have any any cameo, but at least Cosner does. If we go over to Chameleon for for the uh, the uh, katana. That's exactly what I was looking for, the fan toss. Cool conversion there off the fan toss. That's oh. a big opening. Oh, that's huge, that's huge. This should secure, can, honestly, the game. Oh, nice. Like, yeah, he's gonna break it. Oh, yeah, big throw. And the brutality? Let's go! Yes! And eat that arm, mm, nutrition. Oh! Ooh. We go for everything, I'm sorry, my fault. Oh, <laughs> yummy! <laughs> No, amazing comeback from Cosner. This is the start of the end for Just Measy. Ideally for Cosner, but for Just yeah. Measy, it's just one more game. We gotta win, get three one, move on towards towards bracket, and secure our spot in top eight. Come on now. Yeah. Punching that slide for sure. I don't know what what it's minus exactly, but it's minus. You're probably gonna get hit. There we go, Jake Lee. It's gonna acid be acid ball. Yeah, that's tough. Oh, another invisible. He's been Ooh. really good at getting these in uh, getting, uh, invis and also. Oh man, I was gonna say and also saying invisible. Right. Yeah, but then you poke reptile on block, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not invisible anymore." Dude, look at the the reversal here. Look at the comeback. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Ooh, ooh, ooh Jade wave. Interrupting you, you, the slide. He's like, "You approaching me? Please don't play <laughs> with me." Oh wow, from the ooh. from uh, full screen too, but. Even though anyone did connect, was not able to get the rest of the anti-air out. Cosner being patient too, right there. Oh, 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 Whoa. oh! We have a little bit of movement Zig here. Zag. That was like some Cassie Cage MK11 type movement. It really was. I mean, really fun to see. All because it was this chameleon uh, cameo, being chameleon cameo. This means he got Cosner in the corner, and Cosner honestly gets out. Oh, he goes free. for that oh, mix-up. No. Goes for that mix-up again. The extender. All right, just honestly one or two more interactions for Just Means he will secure the game, secure the round. Cosner's breaking it. Oh, good oh, tech. Very much needed in that moment. Look at the look at the health bars. They are one to one. Ooh, a little bit poke. 
Trying to get a shit damage. Oh, we, oh, oh, the confidence to jump over that big hitbox? Yeah, you're funny. You got it. You're confident. You're more confident than me. I would have held that. Yeah, same. I would have gotten chipped out. <laughs> I would have seen, yo, that shit's bigger than me. Yeah, I got I got it. It's over. You want me to jump over that? But just means he did it. But look at Kazar getting a 50%. Oh my, look at the oh. health is gone. Katana fan of saving him right there. Love the low poke, love the 4-4 into ball roll. I know that because that's from MK11. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that Molina uh, string specifically. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, and the nice. acid ball. Yo, acid I, did, I didn't even notice this round was over. I was like, why is the screen all dark again? I was like, wow, that's it? What happened to his health? That was crazy. There was a 50% in the very beginning <laughs> that just happened, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you, can, you can make it back. No, no he was dead. He was, yeah. Round five, uh, game five. Now, match point for both players. We're seeing a, the great use of Chameleon from both players just nonstop. All the options that become available. Oh, we got the Jade Glow now. Oh, we, we forgot we had that yeah. in disposal <laughs> the entire day. <laughs> And you know what? It's a good mind game against someone like Cosner who likes to utilize that acid ball over and over again. Right. Just Measy though. Got him in the corner. Yep, gonna punish that unblock for sure. Can we unbother if she leaves the screen? You know, seeing mm -hmm. her teammate just get absolutely annihilated. Up bar is very <laughs> similar right now. Could be anyone's game. Chameleon, so that's your problem. I, I gotta go. I'm saying I got somewhere to be. Oh, and beautiful fan lift again. Look at this. The combo is just continuing onwards as Kazuna has to do nothing but eat all this damage. Great throw tech. Kazuna's doing a much better job these last couple games of <gasps> teching some of these throws. It's huge. This should He's honestly... Break. He's yeah. breaking it, yeah. This is it right here. Wow. Yeah, low sidekick did. Definitely taking it. And now... Match point. For just Measy. Definitely match point. Come on, just Measy. This is a, a time, a th three times in a row you had match point. We gotta lock in now and get the 3 2. Do not let Kazar get the reverse 3 0 here, but Kazar wants it. Look at the health of, of Buddy. It's in Kazar's favor. Oh, nice jump up. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, give me that. Back to the corner. He said, stay there. Great tech from Kazar. He's just going for Ooh, a double. down two. There we go, there we go. When out, down two, you know. Good blocks. Oh, oh, huge, huge for Cosner. Huge for Cosner. We could be getting a round three here in the game five. Going absolutely pedal oh, to the metal. The extender. Oh, you're, you're basically... Just, he's in a tough spot. Yeah. Yeah. He realized, <laughs> I think he realized, oh, I jumped a little bit too early here. <laughs> he was suddenly trying to stall his, him, his, himself in the air with that dive kick, but yeah. was not enough. I saw the vision. I definitely saw the vision. We are in round three. Of this a is very tight game. Match point, Reptile Sub Zero, Cosner just Measy. Next 90 seconds will determine who goes and gets like, a secured spot in top eight, who goes down to the 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 the, the spikes of losers. <laughs> just oh. Measy in here now. Big, big, you're in the corner, big for just Measy to make this oh, deficit back. Calls out the even. armor. Oh, nice, nice. A re complete reset here just in favor for Just Measy. All Cosner has is the uh, Fatal Blow as disposal. And can, oh! can he get the meter for break? Yeah. No! Wow. The slide kick is enough. And that allows... Okay. All right, Let's all right. Go. Let's, like, Let's go. Oh, my God. Just Measy in the clutches of getting reverse 3 0'd, clutched it out in the very end, and you really do love to see it. Yes. Sub Zero, yes. baby. Yes. Sub Zero making it. Sub Zero Chameleon, specifically, I have been hearing a lot about, and I have now seen the vision. I've seen it in action, and it is beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a really quick caster swap. We'll be right back with Kevin back on the mic for the beginning of top eight. All right, what is going on, everybody, and welcome back. We're here to settle some top eight action from Mortal I mean, Kombat. listen, it was a crazy top eight. <laughs> we, almost, we almost had a second reverse 3-0. I'm not sure if you caught it on the stream on that big old TV in the corner over there, but listen, I, it was hype. Costner had a setup to confirm. It's a <laughs> fatal blow <laughs> off of the back 3-1. I was sitting there. I'm like, Jesus, it's right there. Just hit it. I'm watching the meter. I'm like, you have to do it. He's going to be able to break. Hit him with the fatal. He finished the route. I got nervous. 
There was like seven tweaking. scrambles. Yeah. So you start, you start <laughs> a little bit of tweaking, a little bit. <laughs> a little nervous. It didn't play out the way that I was hoping, but this just means, guys, this is my, uh, my first experiences with like seeing them. Solid, man. Solid oh, yeah. Chameleon has turned this character into like an actual threat. Before, Sub was almost like the meme of the roster, right? It's just yeah. like, well, you have to run Serena or Lau. It was kind of like the two solid Pretty options. Yeah. You could sub Kano. You could sub Kano. But you were really limited in like your cameo options. Chameleon is just like, she's just giving him every. So you don't need Serena. You have a Glaive. Yep. You know, you don't need, um, what was it, Lau? Yeah. You have confirms off of mixes. Your, your yep. lows are now pickups with Malia. It's just, yep. it's giving you just about everything that every other cameo was giving you. All in one package, as long as you can manage it. And the stress of your opponent having to constantly monitor Chameleon. Right? Like, you do it every single game. If they don't and they have to defend against it, it's a pain. Not only that, in that specific matchup, it was not your, just your chameleon, but also their chameleon. Yeah. So it was just like, <laughs> you, not, funnily enough, if you watched, like, their chameleons, they were kind of in the same timing. Like, yeah. give or take a <laughs> like, quarter two seconds. So they both had Jay, they both had Katana. They were communicating, for sure. They, they were they were in that, that, you know, that mind game as well, as well. It was so, so entertaining to watch. But we do have a really, really fun top eight star for you guys. I think we're going to get Pulse and Jamizi, who was just on stream uh on stream mm -hmm. as well as uh Gur versus el kukui which is going to be a very high matchup Gur, uh Gur, garris yeah the versus Booker, man. whoever kukui wants to play that day and then <laughs> hercules and we are still waiting on the uh winner of cause oh we are waiting a while oh so well we got a nice trifecta of uh, who might okay. fill that spot between the alphabet big bird and cosner yes so we're gonna have a tgc team kill unfortunately that's how brackets go you it know? happens. It happens. One combat network competitor versus two. He has to run through two of my boys. If he does that, like I, I have to become his fanboy. I need him to I win. To if he takes boy. out two of my guys, I need him to take the whole tourney at that point. What are we doing? Um, well, no, I guess I'll still have silence. Um, beat yeah, Rage last still there. night mm -hmm. to in in grand finals to secure the win. Ran into him on losers path. Seems like history repeated itself with that. Silence has kind of had Rage's number for a little bit. It's been a difficult one. It's been it's been a couple of weeks. I'm friends with both of them, so I can speak like honestly about it. It's yep. been a couple of weeks of this, and those sets keep looking like closer and closer and closer the more they play. Mm -hmm. But this is just one of those like gaps in history right now, where Silence just has his number right now. Yeah, he's kind it's of been, in his yeah. bag for sure. And Wraith got really close last night. If you guys uh, watched over yep. on this channel to see like the weeklies, it was very cool. like reset the bracket, and then Silence clocked in, and we ended up, you know, praising it to the Most High again. But we're gonna take a look at this top eight. We have the competitors that we named so far. We're killing a little time as we wait for some of them to meander on over here. Uh, Pulse versus Just Measy is going to be interesting. So we're going to get to see a lot of Chameleon again between that one. I think Pulse will be a little more comfortable shutting it down. Right, Sub-Zero doesn't necessarily box as well as you want him to. Chameleon helps, but it's still yeah. Johnny doing Johnny things when it's his turn. You really have to try to get Johnny to run through your bullshit, and he has so many ways to get out of it. I know. Um, I mean, we saw it earlier. Yeah, he, Pulse he can, versus... Um, he can just wave dash like. past your stuff. He can armor past your ice clone and still have good contention. And then if, if he's like happens to have Katana on board at that point, he can just completely nullify that as a neutral tool and then fan lift himself out if it doesn't work. Exactly. Um, Pulse has gotten a lot better recently at like managing his hype meter and making great use of it. That can cause a lot of problems. I mean, we saw if you guys are paying attention, Pulse versus Mike Metro. And Mike threw a little bit for sure. For sure. Please, you know, I was in the please. crowd. He <laughs> was, I was also in the crowd. My man was <laughs> 0 .09 health, and he folded. He but, uh, folded. He wanted to EX the sunglasses, and we were all like. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he, Mike's always been more of a sh uh, showman than oh, a competitor, sure. I feel like. While he's very strong, you know, he. Very talented. Hey, listen, if you guys are were ever confused if he was doing it more for entertainment value, you know, or competitive prowess, you know today what he's doing now. I think the thing I want to point to for the potential of what Pulse is going to do in that set was, again, those uh, chameleon conversions he was doing towards the end of that round. Yes. Like kind of like his game-winning combo that was practically half a lot. I don't know when that combo was going to end, right? So he has good reason to always manage his hype meter and cash out on it if he's hitting like 55 burgers. That could have gone to like 60-something with how far he was going. Um, Gur versus El Kukui is going to be interesting, right? Um, I think one of the problems with Garrus as he stands right now is that his matchups can be... I, I, I can't speak to which characters specifically do this, but he has extremely polarizing matchups, right? Yeah, so either he hardly, he wins very easily or he... Or you just have to outplay to you the have moon. To, yeah, you have to uh, have that mental battle of playing better than your opponent. And with someone like El Kukui... He is some of the best of the best. He he knows what characters will take Absolutely. care of Garrus. We did see that with you know him prior with Bur Big Bird. We saw Big Bird was doing amazing on this Giant Cage. Mm. Kukui cycled through and found the one matchup that Giant Cage 
doesn't do well into it, and that's Tanya. Yeah. Like he does not. He will pull out any character that will be the the little break in your armor, the little break in your wall to open you up. Yeah, and if you guys were paying attention last night, um, if not, we'll update you. There was a big upset for Girl last night versus Mist. Oh, yeah. Big, big Peacemaker problem. Big we just ass. saw Kakui pull that out not too long ago, too, when he had to play Wraith. He wanted to win. That's okay. Ca yeah, caused the whole issue. So uh, okay. if that is a problematic Garrus matchup, I wouldn't be surprised. Kakui already seems like pretty comfortable with it and is, you know, cycling through Chameleon himself, right? She's never a wrong answer as a cameo pick at this point. It's going to be interesting for me when Janet comes out to see how that shifts oh, yes. Chameleon usage. Uh, specifically, when, when everybody gets access to kind of like pseudo sento and mime wall to protect. I mean, Peacemaker, I think, sending out Janet and then force fielding behind her and then gunshotting behind her while she's ninja miming you. You know, it's the potential is limitless with a character like that. You know, we'll wait until she's actually out to see what she's capable of. She's not going to be the namesake today, but I think if Kukui is locked in with that Peacemaker, it can give Gur a lot of problems. If a competitor like Mist is able to kind of like throw a wrench in his plans. I can only imagine what El Kukui can do. Um, and then on the, the bottom side, right, Hercules, this is going to be the test, right? He's, yeah. we've, we talked earlier, if you guys were here in the beginning of the stream, about the seventh place curse um, and the trifecta. He's either going to have Big Bird, Alphabet, or Silence. Uh, no, not of silence. Big Bird, Alphabet, or Cosner yes. as, his, uh, as his potential opponents in his loser's round one slot in top eight. Um, if he can't get past that, he misses it again, and this is what he'd like to avoid, right? Like I mean, he wants to avoid <laughs> seventh or fifth. You know, e either one. Yes, Preferably, yeah. you want to go past fifth place, and you want to go at least top four, get the nice medal, get the payout, get all the gl the glory for today. He has at least locked himself in for a medal, but it'll yes. kind of be like a a bittersweet thing. Like you get to go home with the medal that's immense that you didn't do what you said you wanted to do. Yeah, you know? I mean, so it's it's one of those. Like, it's gonna go on the hurdles. wall, but as a reminder, you know, you, a nice uh, asterisk on that, that, you, that one. <laughs> that you didn't break the curse today. But I've got faith in him. He's he's locking down with the Kenshi plan. Um, uh, yesterday his his crutch was really his hesitation. I think he's eliminated some of that today. I got to peek at some of his like a. Uh, sets as I was like walking around the building. I think he's a little more locked in today. He's going to need to be depending on which one of those competitors he gets. God forbid Absolutely. he gets somebody like Cosner. I do not think you can afford to give him a moment to breathe. No, you can't. Um, if you get somebody like Big Bird, he is going to be on you the whole time. You have to prioritize not hesitating because it's like all three competitors. It's like either Big Bird who's not going to get off of you. Cosner who's going to be one of the weirdest competitors in neutral to deal with. Right, That's yes. usually everybody's struggle point. If you can't figure out how to manage neutral against his reptile, it's going to be problematic. Or Alphabet, who if you get touched once, it's almost like you got hit with Sentinel, the way you're going to have to deal with Vortexes exactly. the entire time. So it'll be interesting. And then HF versus Silence Return is going to be fun, too. That happened um, last night. Did HF did lose, I think, uh, 03 to Silence Return. Yes, but so I will say that when they were playing that set, towards the end of it, it, it kind of was like a little too late. Like a... Uh, no, no, yeah, a little too late kind of like setup. Yeah. Where we started getting into Bodyguard Tremor kind of like zoning things and when HF was entertaining that he was doing a lot better but it took him a little while to kind of get to that to kind of like really cycle it's, it's almost like silence showed him the path of like this is how you protect yourself with tremor and it reminded HF that that's a that strategy he has a tremor to use. That he yeah. can use and do the same thing. Um, tremor gets hit with projectiles and that cooldown is like two seconds it's very minimal. So against someone like Reiko who can be giving you constant shuriken threats I think being able to cycle tremor also with uh, the reduced cooldown if you can fit in snap yeah. means that you can kind of do it better than Reiko can do it. Um, and if you can get a life lead and then turn it into that zoning war, that might be beneficial for you. Question is going to be if he remembers that, you know, uh, and how much his ego's on the line. HF did a great job yeah. of screaming at Gur yesterday, <laughs> right I'm, after I'm, everything. I mean, there were probably some words ju just now, last round. As Gur was leaving, HF like across. I remember because it scared me because I, <laughs> I didn't realize he was next to me. He goes, Gur, I'm gonna get you tomorrow. It was very uh. anime. It was very anime. And you know, Gur's like an angel. He's like, I hope so, man. You played great. You're wonderful. That was great. I, I'm sure you will. <laughs> and then just came into the And Gur just... The problem is, I will say, with someone like Gur, like, you can catch him, and he's definitely human. He's not the kind of competitor that I'd want, where I'd want his attention drawn onto me. Yeah, no. And I'm curious if, like, HF saying that, the girl was just like, all right, sure, you know, in his head. Because, you know, he's never going to say that to you. He's got to have some level of it up here yeah, to yeah, want to yeah, win yeah, as bad yeah. as he does. But, like, I... Because I call back to a week where Wraith upset Gur. That was one of, like, his big ones when he... Uh, I think... He might have taken the MKNG that week. I forget. Uh, very dominating to a level, you know, to a level you're not used to seeing Gur. It was one of the reasons, like, the Miss Peacemaker match was so surprising for yes. us, right? You expect Gur to just tear through everybody. Um, Wraith did it. It was a big day for Wraith. Uh, he's been a consistent competitor here. He's, like, he's unfortunately out of the bracket now, but he gives a, nobody's happy to see him in bracket. Um, uh, I'm waiting to find out. We don't know. 
We've been talking for like five minutes. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I'm here for my health, please. To finish that thought before we get into this next one, uh, Race got that upset. We were all like very surprised. We come back the next week. was not the same match at all. No, it wasn't. Gurr went home, figured out what he had to do, came back with a new plan, and Wraith didn't get to play the game. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, that happened you know, just earlier with him and HF as well. You know, it, it, it could not play the game. Yeah. HF could not play the game. And, and HF has been getting incredibly strong. I think, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of like disregard it as in Dell BS. Yeah. But it is a lot to manage, especially with the Tremor variation, to constantly cycle through it and... That character has great utility if you have the skill to manage it. Not yes. a lot of people do. I don't play him because I can't be bothered to go through all of that work. You exactly. Know? I mean, it kind of is the same with Chameleon, but everyone's going Chameleon because they realize she is good right now. Even yeah. if the resource managing the eight-second, you know, you know, timer between each cameo or each variation, may I say? And don't remember too, you can force annoying. it if you want a sequence. Like you can. Excuse me for um, all intents and purposes. I, I, I love how you like looked away, but the mic the, was still yeah, in I your face. <laughs> it had to be one of these, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was but, so uh, good. We are right now to solidify yeah. what's going to happen in top eight. Going to go through the TGC team kill. So this does mean that Alphabet has been eliminated on loser side. We'll have lost to Big Bird. Rest in peace. And it, the thing is, as, as much as I'm happy that it's going to be a TGC guy from my own bias, I am an Alphabet oh, fan yeah. too. Like nobody would have came out oh, of that same. slot where I would have been upset. The competition still would have been fun. Um, this is going to be yeah, Cosner versus Bird, double Chameleon again, right? Johnny Chameleon versus Reptile Chameleon. Um, I don't think Reptile has the worst time in the world dealing with Johnny compared to some other characters on the cast. It definitely could be worse. Um, he can actually play pretty decent mind games in neutral, right? Uh, constantly cycling the force ball speed so, so Johnny can't just jump around like a Neanderthal. Like he has to at some point like a like a, uh, approach correctly. Um, but the glow from Jade is, is very problematic, right? Because if he has it on, it, it can't ignore. Reptile has this weird thing with force balls where they are and aren't projectiles at the same time. Like they're not consistent with how projectiles are treated in this game. Yes. Um, so you have to be careful with what situations you use them in, and it's up to the reptile player to track when they're going to work when they're not. I mean, very dominant start from Big Bird all around. As we were speaking, as we were discussing earlier, he pretty much got an almost flawless game from just round one. Going into round two, and you were talking about earlier, the pressure, the constant being on top of you is what Big Bird wants to do. And look at this. You're being thrown right back into the corner. You're going for the complete aerial. And then now you're kind of juggled in a situation where what can we do? Melina covered the air, and then you have nothing else to show for except for, from, for just blocking through it. All right. Nice here with the death roll. Gonna work to get a little space. And and has been having issue with timing today. He's kinda like on and off with how active he is, so I'd have to ask him like later on to see if that's part of the issue. But has been mistiming his meaties a lot today. Right, ran into issues with that against the Just Meezy earlier in bracket where he had some setups where he had uh, was going for meaty timings that whiffed and gave Just Meezy a lot of punish opportunities. Oh uh, look at that. Yeah, just a really right solid dash in, get the easy very easy conversion, and then boom. Get the get the win as well. Double community. Bird still. is singing right now. Uh, and I'm not against the idea that he has to notch on in those uh, headphones He's chilling. Too. He has that on full audio, full blast, as we continue to keep Conjure back in his left corner, but finally Melina Ball coming out, not going to be enough. Big uh, Didn't finish the combo, he very easily could have. Yeah, unfortunately, just wasn't able to. But side there we go, switch, yep. nice little side switch. I, keep, I love that, let's see it. You Now you're in the corner, you got to take, take care of me now. Oh wow, okay, just yeah. wakes up, and look, had fan left ready just in case it didn't work out. And again, as you mentioned as before, well. look at the uh, <laughs> the chameleons, pretty pretty synced. They're very sy they're pretty synced up. I, I love it. They're just like little like twin girls. I love it. Oh, great minds think alike, I guess. Close around here, oh. try to commit. Oh, Fanlif. Oh. Okay, gonna save him, but not in the same fashion. Right, it's one like of the, the benefits idea. you got from Lao before that you still get here. And Bird gonna. He, oh, okay, we're gonna break. I was gonna say he might full commit. It's going to be the next mistake here. It's a game of chicken. Well, it's going to match a whole lot more even. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Johnny Cage typically does win these kind of poke out battles because what he wants to do is just tip you out. And that's yeah. what Big Bird has done very efficiently. You would have had to have flawless blocked that. Round two. Fight. All right. Beautiful oh, there. Nice. Going for Shadow Kick, going for 1, 2, and 3. Just Jake can be completely negated, jumping out of it, actually caught for uh, Cosner. And it comes back on the back end. Big Bird right on top of that as well, continuing this combo up to like about 40-ish percent. Can be re uh, re no, drop dropping. So that string is actually interruptible, but you know, given the weird specifics of how it was dropped, I just don't think Cosner was going to have the ability to recognize that there. It's tough too because Reptile is a character, he, he's among one of the ones on the cast that gets so much off of anti-airs. Like can convert it into big, big damage. 
but Johnny's so difficult to contest in the air like that. It's not worth the risk a lot of times. And you kind of do, you have to retrain yourself to kind of anti-air with stand four instead of stand one if you really want to like kind of turn his, treat his foot as like a quote unquote disjoint. It, it contests a lot better. Um, recommendations from a lot of Johnny's if you're going to be playing Reptile and you want to anti-air, just down two. It's the best option you have. You don't get as much for it, but it's a little more consistent. We're going to get this corner carry. We definitely are. There we go. The pressure is pretty much on for a cause. The fan lift the reset going in for this, uh, the area as well from the, the jumping kick. Big Jake lives not going to be able to get anything off the back end either. That means Causer still has his work cut out for him here. Oh man, Big Break getting another Jake Lee from the back. Big Break. We believe. No, it just it hasn't worked out for him any time. Big Bird sitting on match point already. This will lock him in for top eight in the middle. And he's smiling and he's singing. That's if if you know Big Bird personally, you want to know if he's doing well. You want to see that man cheesing. He's smiling. He's cheesing. He does clock in a little bit if he gets angry, but. Oh, he has a I very, think, very big pride yeah. kind of thing, and I understand. You, and against you know? certain styles, he plays better if he's upset. But ideally, like if you know, if he can stay in flow state like this, yeah, he's where again, it's been a in. look at this. It's been my my name of the game today with a lack of hesitation. If he's in flow state, he's not really going to hesitate. If you get him angry, you are going to have to deal with more like you know more aggressive offense which you got to be careful about yeah he's invisible but that's punishable we don't need ah, to know where you are i love that from big brother confidence understanding and know the uh, the, the frames in order to take reptile out invisibility the fan lift in order to get the the conversion to the air this should oh. be another round look at the three that's actually oh. insane because so cosner wanted a break because at least would have gave him one more opportunity but bird actually dropped the combo and it helped them yeah, and like he actually won for being the worst player <laughs> he, he really dropped the bad. conversion and then, you know, Cosner now having to guess on Oki because you're not going to do anything that's going to beat off 4 or 3. you got to hope that the Johnny holds like Death Roll. It's really the only option you have. Yeah. What are you going to do? Wake up Fatal? on a, I, I think that move has like 89 frames of startup for Reptile. So we now um, we do have uh, our, top our, our locked, locked in. in. Yeah. I mean, we have Bird, Big Bird locked into top A against Hercules and, and, uh, and Losers, which is going to be a little bit exciting. I'm actually curious if Bird lost to Hercules yesterday. I can't remember. I, I don't recall. I'm trying to remember if I... Her overheard him complaining about a Kenshi because that would have been Hercules. No, yeah, the yeah. only person I know would have been Hercules for sure. If we had, I think we can look at the bracket right now. We wanted to the weekly, but regardless, the showing from Big Bird has been a complete turnaround from mm -hmm. yesterday. Yesterday, he like, like mentioned previously, he did go zero and two. You know, we yeah. round one, round two, he was like, I'm out, I'm done. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, he, he got his casuals in after that, and I think that was a. Really important for him to be able to uh, get that difference in there and warm up. I'm trying to go to Hercules' account right now, guys, and see what his results were yesterday to see. Come on, come on, work with me. Come on. Why is <laughs> why is RDG like RDG? Why do we keep using RDG? I need to understand. This is what we're gonna. We do. must go back to our roots. Challenge. We must go back. March 15th. There, there we, we go. go. We found it. We're going to work it out, guys. We're going to find it for you. Do the bracket here. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Here. Uh, losers. Arma. And then lost a uh, Wraith. Went here. Lost. No. So Bird yesterday. No, did. Oh, he did, did get. Yeah. yeah, he did lose Hercules. 3 0. 3 0. And losers. Round one, losers. So it'll be a very important run back for him today. I probably should have kept that open. It's fine. <laughs> we'll get back to it. I'm trying oh. for a Combat Network's Twitch. For slash combat network. Oh, that's it? No yeah. underscore? I love that. No, no, I yeah. love great marketing. Professionals. Yeah. Because some people are like, oh, we have a underscore. And I'm like, why? Because <laughs> they didn't get there first, you know? You didn't get there first. I mean, you got locked An in. An underscore, in some cases, is as it's just a signifier of second place, you know? I'm going to start sticking it on the back of medals if we're no, going to get that, silver that, brackets. That's me and my <laughs> eye. Yo, the actual like person who... like. My Neva is only an extra A because the person who is actually German and likes Ruin. Pokemon has Ruin the, the tag. It. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And is doing nothing with nothing it. Nothing with All it. All the time. All the nothing. time. Nothing. I'm waiting for the day and they go inactive and I snap. It worked it. out for me in the long run, but the reason that like my name is my tag is because my like PlayStation username was taken. And I was like, I'm not working around I'm how to not fix work this. Yeah, exactly. I get it. I'm glad that you know, remember how back then, like if you had your name as something, you uh, you put in like when you were 11 years old, you could never change it. Yeah. I'm glad that now, like they've no, yeah, we've adapted, we've evolved changing over time. it. Like, when PlayStation <laughs> opened, when PlayStation said Technology you can change your changed. name, I was like, change. listen, there's a lot of competitors like PPMD that you know, like I, I'm sure, guys, we're so <laughs> thankful when that became a thing. 
We're so thankful. So thankful. Some of them, you know, you know cool guy, <laughs> 67, and it's like, oh, man, I got to change it. What? Well, let, let him handle it. I don't want to out it, you know, while we're uh, no, working we on production we stuff in the background. I thought <laughs> you were playing a game for a second. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, we have open next. No, this is – um. <laughs> I won't say out loud just in case while they work, but that person has been like branching, uh, reaching ah. out to people. So I recognize the. It looks like that's the loading screen of a game, and I was like. It is. It is a really cool logo. It is a really cool logo. Super cool logo. You know what's even. Cooler? And everybody at home, don't worry about it. Okay, like. It's <laughs> KMJ, it's such a cool yeah. logo. It's a, yeah, this one's pretty fire. I'll be Please. real comment network. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, defend the north. Yes, yo. Please come on to defend the north. It's all over in Long Island. Big, August big second venue. August fourth. And Is here we go. Okay, so we can't ooh, talk about it. What's oh, coffee? Okizemi oh, Coffee Company. Yeah. Okizemi oh, Coffee. Where can I buy Okizemi Coffee Company? Online. Mm, <laughs> online. <laughs> Direct sponsor the event. Aw, shout out to so, uh, Okizemi uh, Coffee for sponsoring the event today. I mean. Where's some samples? I used to be a barista. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, where's my samples at? Listen, okay, Zemi, if you want like a barista to taste our coffee, I got you. I, I had that palette. Thank you for direct sponsoring. For Send a couple course. of bags out. We'll put a couple of bags on screen on Surf. We'll get Mike Metric back on, you know? <laughs> we'll Mike Metric come back. Mike Metric back. Back. back to Okie <laughs> <bags>. <laughs> We'll All work right. it out. But if you guys are a fan of coffee, I have heard through the grapevine that it's great quality. That people are a fan. I still need to get my hands on some, so I, I will wine with you until we get some physically here. Man, I, I am here for I love trying out like new brands of coffee outside of like my usual roasters that I know mm -hmm. um, with their own personal farms. I mean, like I, I love coffee. Like, I wish there were some samples. <laughs> I'm so. Listen, next MKNJ, I need some samples. I need to taste your coffee. I love coffee. I need to steal a bag or two. Maybe buy a bag or two. Yeah, I got to bring some home for the lady. My wife is the big coffee person in our house. She got her own little machine and everything. I have I have my like couple of mornings with it. Yeah. While, like having it, but she's the. Every she's morning, the. I every need it every morning. Every ice, a little bit of milk, a little bit of flavoring, some sugar. That's me. We're getting nameplates adjusted here, but this is going to be our Dominic first Kate. set from Ooh, top eight. Yeah. Winner side semifinals. Chameleon. Pulse versus just Meezy. You did it. <laughs> I, I messed it up a little bit. But no, you got it. You, you, you fixed it this it's time. It's the same way you adapt in a fighting game. The Top thought was there, was there, which means we've made progress, you know? Okay, the progress here is Sub-Zero versus Johnny Cage. We've been seeing a lot of Johnny Cage today. We know a lot about this character. He's been around since day one. He has been uh, a character, you know, since well, day one. Well, the big difference, too, is that you have to deal with Sub Chameleon, and Sub-Zero does as a cameo option offer, like, a difference make. I'm pretty sure we're button checking here. But oh, that could have been game. The thing is, that could have been that, gameplay, and that's why you pick something. That, that's, like, that's why. <laughs> that's why you, you saw me have a reaction. I was like, oh, okay. But I know we are a little more interactive than that in yeah, this day and age. Yeah, the big thing at distance is that you can kind of, it, you know, if you're the, a competitor like Pulse who has the situational awareness to track where Chameleon's at, the second she goes to Jade, you can put armor on. And now you don't have to deal with Glaze at distance. Sub Zero stats the boss. You see, we just get to straight up ignore it. And ignore we did. So it but helps just a lot with, uh, with nullifying game plans like. Uh, I'm not sure if Melina's combo extender also counts as a projectile. Oh, look at that! Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I nice. love the po the post the, the Johnny Cage and Sub Zero is such a great cameo to like you know really serialize. It's really confusing to have Sub Zero and Sub Zero, but point is we are finally seeing Just Music getting me started here. The freeze on the floor gets me starting off a huge combo as well. About 30% should be ending it really soon. There it is. All right, nice. Gave up his turn. Had the where with all the stop there, of course. Armor on, oh. sorry, armor not on in that instance, not going to help you. And Jay, bro, everybody is just <laughs> perked up right now. Oh my god, we are tweaking, we are purple, we are frozen, we are doing a lot of stuff here, but that should be a one game for uh, for Just Music to start off. Very strong I mean, performance. I've said it multiple times, Sub-Zero has turned into a character now. Finally, he has waited like, <laughs> like what, like four months? Please. He got his turn, he's in the game. He just needed one good cameo and a little bit of a nerf to other characters to really be started. And look, Just Meezy is doing an impeccable job of just making sure that the advantage is in his favor. But finally, Pulse able to reverse it. There's the height meter, and we have oh, a drop good amount of plus frames. Sure. <gasps> we got out. We're so back. Situational right now. Life is still on the side of Pulse. Yeah, and that's the difference too, right? When he's in hype, you have to respect those even on block. And notice how Pulse tries to delay the timing too to try to sell that he's not going to continue. Amazing anti air, I must say, to, to start off this uh, this comeback from Pulse all around. Look at the right, like, yeah. Please, one pull, yeah, one poke, boom. There's a dive kick mind game in there, but you notice the patience from Pulse once he realized it wasn't coming out. Sniped him with the jab. 
Okay, I like the ice armor again. Gonna be negating J Play, but we don't care. We have the Katana Phantoms instead. Boom, bam, bop. We get go go into the corner. Another fan lift to secure the conversion. My goodness. All right, nice here. I'm gonna get that better positioning, and let's see what the bully game is gonna be. We get a stagger throw, mind game, plus frames. The great ability to contest. Nice answer oh, back yet. Look at that. And you notice some of the higher level competitors have been uh, more aware of fan lift and jumping up to contest in a lot of situations. Nice. You saw the, the, the micro movement on the back dash as well to avoid just Meezy's attack there. But again, the break on both ends has been utilized. No meter pretty much. So it really is just anyone's game and anyone's start. As we see both just attempting to get uh, something started on block. The ice clone coming out, making just easy. Has it back up Ooh, a little bit. Good trade. Fun. Just easy. The just easy does, you know, utilize in his favor. Oh, oh yeah, he's gonna be whiffing for ages off of that one. We may got caught a little bit lacking there. Now let's see this. Oh, oh there. we're gonna cash out goodness. now. Oh no, this is guaranteed. No, he missed. Oh, oh! he missed. Oh! oh no! Wait, 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 wait. Sometimes it happens. But we got we're back in the corner. Okay, the pressure here is just for just easy, he and might. he secures the first game. He might be the best. We we might <laughs> we <laughs> he might, he might be the best. <laughs> I think that is the first time that I've seen somebody at Pulse's level go for the guaranteed unblockable fatal blow setup with Johnny and drop it. Like you you have to be kneeing yourself in the forehead. Yo, yo, your forehead says gullible on top of it. There's no way. And look, and just me is just chilling with the with the lead here. Oh my gosh, the confidence is is you know going up more and more. All right, nice with the shimmy game. And this was the big difference too, right? Like a lot of Johnny's like, oh, my one one isn't plus three anymore, so I can't fully enforce uh, my knee. But now it is just a if you want to do that, you just shimmy. Yeah, that's guaranteed. Boom, trying to catch boom. up a bit here. Big gonna freeze. Take this. And the hype meter, yeah, you are pretty much. And again, messes killable. it up. No, that's gonna stuff out. No, it doesn't. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> he's the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He may be the best player in this venue. It's, it's getting ridiculous. In Hold what on. universe did we picture that Sub Zero was going to be an actual contender to really shut down Johnny Cage like this? This used to be such a problematic matchup for him. This is, this should not be a thing. But Just Beasy just simply do not care. We are going straight into the next one now. Pulse has a little bit of pep in his step, making this corner uh, this corner combo really carry. Look at this. We're gonna be restarting it again. Look at that. Boom, bam, bob. Twenty eight. We can get a little forty percent here. Reset. Get the jump in. Ooh, do it again. Do it again. All right. Just me said, not gonna do that, but ready. Look at your chip damage. Look, we're just gonna chip you out at Johnny Cage, and that's the end of the round. Immediately, 30 seconds in, less than 29 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Mathematics, I need you for that too. You, you would have asked me how many <laughs> seconds went by. <laughs> My quick math is only so quick, I promise. <laughs> Beautiful shadow kick to contest with that, and we're gonna, you know, anything you could do, I could do. Better kind of situation from Just Measy here, gonna contest the same way. Nice check too, it's that little bit of a distro at the end of that palm there. Oh, the classic overhead slide. Oof, 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 with grab, with grab. He's just better. <laughs> he's just better. He's going to get access to Breaker soon, but he, the, the fact that he might get forced to use it is going to be problematic if you're Pulse. Here's the throw. This is getting bad. Uh, we have to use Breaker at some point, and, and we use it. Him. There it okay, is. Yeah, well, we there. use it at 31. That's a life deficit. Now, it's hard. if you're just me, it's oh. just a question of do you go in or do you chill back? Do you want to go for Chip? There we go. I love the, uh, the substitute who came in from there. You yeah, notice he's trying so hard not to overextend. He just means playing this very smartly, just going for chip, going for virtual dollars, just going for anything, just to make sure that oh, we do not on it. lose this match, and we get the. He whoosh. put out a landmine like he was a rocket raccoon. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, yoink! <laughs> oh man, said, oh, we're gone. Like that, now we're back. We're back. We're back. We died. We we, we, we troll a little bit here. We've seen a lot of trolls today. Here. You know, you guys know what we look like at this point. I'm yeah. saying we've been here a little bit too long. We are here. We can see another uh, another game, He's and I'm so excited. Listen, and in He's I giving am, up the sub for Chameleon. I'm excited. We are so bad. Fight! Fight! We are going over to this game three. Just Meezy is ooh, is ooh. at match point. It has been having the smallest of advantages over Pulse multiple times this entire uh, set. Going over there, big break at the very beginning, wow. Okay, Jake Lave, I see you coming for the big assist on the, off the back end. We're gonna be corner carrying you over to the corner as it does. 
good poke, no overhead, gonna be with uh, no overhead, so no dice. And Pulse is struggling to keep just using this corner. Very nice, fully committed. Oh, nice. He's gonna be the conversion. Into the floor you go. Ooh, stay there. Nice. Nice, yeah, it's not real. At least not in that instance, you know? You can't challenge it. No, if you're in the sure. chat and you're like, yeah, but it is real, I, I, I know what I said. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you gotta. You, yeah, you, you must. gotta just take that. There it is. There Look it is. Look at Millions. You want to get involved so bad. I don't like new stuff. I actually. <laughs> 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 oh, that's gonna make my stomach a little queasy. But we are back in this. Look at this. Pulls up. I had that with Cabal in, the, in 11 with the teeth. Oh, you that did? One to get me, yeah. <laughs> it's just. I think it's from The Last of Us where they want to pop the knee off. I just imagine them. I don't want to. I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Oh, and what the, I yeah, do the like, ice bones to non-commit. Listen, what I do like is just Mizi up a whole round. We are ever so closer securing for our place further up in bracket. The top four may even. So come on now. Come on now. We can get back. So, sorry, back up here. The Command Lane uh, break are going to be happening right now. Bulls is in his bag currently. Life lead. Everything's working out for us, but just Mizi is bringing it back as soon as possible. Great low poke, oh my goodness. Yeah, keep in mind too that as, as great as this is looking, and it probably will be around for Pulse, just Mizi is sitting on match point. Never mind, this is gonna change uh -oh. it. Uh oh. Uh -oh. This fella's gonna go home with so many more fans. Uh oh. I'm a fan. I, I, I've converted personally. Oh, I love. Try to ignore Glaives and neutral for a little bit, yep. My man blocked instantly. My man, you are invulnerable to projectiles. You are A-OK, -okay, but now Pulse with no cameo to, for the next couple of seconds. Just means he does have the opportunity in his favor, nice but block. unfortunately... Yep, yeah. big, big opportunity for Pulse to make a comeback. All he needs is a confirm, and this can go on for two hours. You do need to try to uh, bait me into using some of that meter. A little bit, but we do. But we are missing just. We're going to be seeing just Mizi with full meter, and then the break does happen. The hype meter is ready for Pulse, however. So Ooh, anything started this is, is so his favorite. Big dive kick. Melina Cameo coming out as well. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, we missed it. It's okay. She's in Jade form though. She's in Jade form. This is great. Oh, she gets sniped. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful shadow kick. Still, still has that hype meter on reserve. Going on for cash out. He just needs a hit confirm. Going for full for uh for just from some full hop. Yeah, at least we do have at least a one bar of meter. On both ends here, Just Meezy is trying to go for this up uh, for the uh, advantage here, but we also don't want to get too over overzealous as Pulse now has burned the height meter as it goes down, trickles down. We are seeing nothing. There it is, a start and maybe an end. If he doesn't to this drop game this, three. Be it. yeah, yeah, absolutely, beautifully done. We are going into the start of a possible reverse 3-0. We'll see. I'll be honest. That that came down to Mizi really making one mistake and getting a little overzealous trying to contest with yes. that armor. I think he's going to think twice about it. That could be a good or bad thing, depending on what Pulse wants to do. He got a, a little bit too anxious to finish the round off in his favor, and Pulse was looking for that little bit of anxiety, that little break to use that hype meter and be Johnny Cage. Great with the non-committal uh, back. To, that's so helpful for Sub Zero to have access to that overhead and the ice on to avoid it. Pulse actually walked into it and blocked it. I love the approach on Pulse there as Jasmine was just kind of blocking through the Jake Glaives. Also, it's Melina's Mila, yes, size yes. are not going to be enough either. This You're in the corner. I start getting concerned because I feel like Mizi's cracking a little bit. I'm watching the risk reward factor kind of go out the window. Um, he was playing so solid when he was relying on his fundamentals, and now I think he's relying on the element of surprise to try to slow down Pulse. It will continue to go downhill if he is stubborn about that path. I right. mean, that, you know, dashing through the stand one is just unfortunate. Signing oh, off very strong sorry. with the Jay Glaze once again. Just means he finally gets me no. started. off the combo, unfortunately. I'm watching it. I'm watching it degrade little by little. Watching it just happen in real time slowly. Just getting chipped, literally chipped out in real time, both in game and out, where Bolsters is locked in after two games. He's trying to make one of the best comebacks we've seen so far. Okay. Oh, you're frozen. This is an opening. You need to get as much damage of, uh, off of this as you can. We cannot drop. Just gotta lock in. There we go. Beautiful fan lift. Maximum damage. We got a little bit of drop, but we got someone in the corner. Even the back up for all intents and purposes. Took that back throw. I mean, sure, this is gonna be reduced, but this might still kill. Yeah. No, I should. Unfortunately, end up going for a side switch there. If Put I'm, yourself in the corner. If I'm just Mizi's friend, I tap him on the shoulder and I go, "Oh, somebody is." Oh, and it's it's her. Is just Mizi also Greek? Is he doing it for his people? That, that might be it, low key. Because <laughs> like, Hercules do be speaking Greek. I heard listen, him speak Greek if, in real if time. If I could telepathically communicate through Herc, I hope that what he relayed is calm it down and go back to what was working. Right? Yes. Like, we don't need to overextend here. Do well, not do get not get hit, hit is always going to be the name of the game. That's my favorite. But <laughs> <laughs> no, do not get hit. 
but just bring it back. Slow it down. Take a deep breath. Take a second if you need oh, to. Oh, that was a whip, but he did delay get up, so he wasn't able to get up and answer it in time. Oh, we just oh, did it raw. We didn't oh, even need to oh. do that. Katana, yeah, she's still a confirm. There we go. There we go. Good little reset. Continue the combo off into the corner. Gonna be doing a little bit of damage scaling here, but that's A-OK. -okay. Oh, he could have... No. Oh, no. This is the thing, right? You have to start mitigating the risk you're taking. Right, where we're covering Round overhead with Glaive, two. covering overhead with Katana, oh. taking advantage of plus frames, great minds. We have one one yeah. single brain between us, one brain cell. All right, there we go, that's the lift we needed. Literally, there we go, in the corner, reset again, and you're frozen, do it one more time for the good old times. The dive kick interrupting the armor as well, but look at this, ooh, this is what just we needed. Oh, just switch to the ah. more damaging throw too, that's gonna be so beneficial. All right, that punch, little bit of percent three. adds up sometimes. It really does. As now, this is, this is where our patience is going to get tested, right? This is where we don't want to make the mistakes we were just making. We're, stay calm. We're going to take that throw conversion. Oh, God. The side switch again. You're back in the corner against Pulse. Full bars on both ends here. Johnny's Break turn again. Should be imperative on, on both players, depending on what is happening. Who is in the advantage? Great uh, usage of the, uh, the, fist, the, the projectile as, as well. Oh, big break on, on Pulse's end. Ooh, okay. We got it. We big got it. Combo. Big Congo. Congo. <laughs> we got a big combo going. We are. We are so Ladies back. And gentlemen, it is time for a game. <laughs> no, we are right in game five. Game. We are in round three, baby. If there's round five, it's it over for me. It was a game personally. five final round situation. Oh, 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 oh. And this is the difference. The crowd is very heavily involved. And this timing on the Molina there. That's going to be a big point. There it is. Nobody no. drops it. Drops oh, it does not get the overhead started. We get the, we get the throw at the least. The screaming could hurt her help here. I'm going to be real. When you get the crowd involved, it, it's... Listen, it is, oh, it is helping. Dropping stuff too. No, you don't contest like that. Mitigate that risk. Come on, you now we got to lock those in. those opportunities. He doesn't choose to fan lift off of it. Oh, there's a fan oh, lift coming in from post. You have to. You have to use break. You don't have one both ends. One good sequence and one hit confirmed can be the comeback here. Get out of the corner. This is the winner side, so this won't eliminate just Meezy completely. But if you can stay on winner side, it's very beneficial. It definitely is big. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Wait, we're yeah, so back. Oh no, it, they no. can't hold it. That's it. Yeah. That was an amazing effort Incredible all around. Set. But listen, Pulse being able to get the run, not even the run back, I'm sorry, to get the reverse 3 0 after yeah. a two loss uh, deficit. I mean, listen, you heard it. You, we, you, these pick up everything, whether you like it or not. Yeah. You you heard the hype out there. And we. I think we all kind of did want Pulse to win after being in the loser seat, but then. But then once he started I winning, I was rooting for Meezy, man. I'm a, I'm a fan of underdogs. No, same. Like, no, a, me too. like a lot of other people. I'm not, you know, I'm not exclusive in that. But oh, it, was, of course. it was very beneficial. I think if he has to run that back, if he could get back down again to mitigating that risk, it was really when he started trying to disrespect a little too much. I think it worked out for him too well in the first couple of games. Yeah. And in his head, he thought to himself, if I can start squeezing it in now and just catch him with a surprise factor, it could be the difference maker. But part of Pulse's adapt uh, adaptation that started the momentum shift in the reverse 3-0 was to calm down in those moments so he stopped getting disrespected. Exactly. And I think Meezy thought he was taking it back to the beginning and kind of going back to that strap. Pulse wasn't ready to let everything go for the sake of pushing yep. the pace again. And it caused problems. It, it caused a loss, unfortunately. But thankfully, yeah. it was it was winner's side. Mm -hmm. So even though there is a little bit of a, uh, of you know, four people and losers who you really don't want to run into, at any point yeah. besides Grand. I mean, listen, when you get that brackets, there's there's no name on that list that's fun if you see it, right? No. Big, like Hercules, it's you have to deal with Kenshi Cyrax, right? Big Bird, another Johnny Cage. Yeah. Very, very aggressive Johnny Cage as well. HF, Sindel, period. And then Silence Return playing, what was he playing? Peacemaker, I believe? Uh, No, Reiko Tremor. Reiko Tremor. Or Reptile Chameleon. Thank you. Oh, I mean, That's it's my guy too. I just needed a second. You know, <laughs> I was like, let me not get this wrong. He's just, been bigger on picking up the reptile. Everyone in this bracket is someone you don't want to interact with if you're already in, sitting in winner's side. So very, very exciting. I think we're gonna be seeing uh, another, another very Gert interesting Kukui. set. Yes, Gert and Kakui uh, coming up on deck. Gert already lacking in the Garrett, as you can see, and then uh, we already seen the Peacemaker as mentioned earlier. We talked about the fact that this matchup is problematic. And yes. that someone like Akui would want to take advantage of that. Absolutely. This is really rough for Garrus. Uh, Gur had to deal with that problem yesterday, wasn't able to solve it, and now has to deal with it at, with all due respect to Mist, because Mist is very good. But it's like you've seen the amount of brackets that Kukui has entered and placed well in, right? What's going to be a more demonic version of it, I'm sure. It's not as straightforward as Striker is, but it is still a problematic matchup with an incredibly strong cameo. 
and a Peacemaker being a character that honestly, even if he, even if he didn't have access to a cameo, would be able to operate well for the most part on his own. Yes. And then Lord help you when you add anything to the mix. So he is really one of those, you can go meta with him, but if you have a preference in your play style, you can kind of pair him with a grand majority of the roster and get something good out of it. Absolutely. And we're kind of already starting off off the back end. But button check has been done. We are very efficient here, okay, as uh, grown people. I mean, we've, we've seen Gur's game plan for the past couple of, uh, couple of streams, have the past couple of days, where it's been very much... I don't want to interact too much, and I want to punish you if you oh, try to get low too close. I like that. So he tried to go for 2-2, grab, headbutt, restand into Molina overhead immediately, because Peacemaker's not really one of those characters that has like a natural stunning overhead you're worried about. Th this is going to be a really big battle for Gur. I mean, between yesterday and today, the, you, you, you only did so much bomb reviewing, and... <laughs> and then Motara you know, eagerly just like, flew past him, which just passed the mark at that point. Okay, big opportunity there. Didn't get all of it, but got something going. We're going to start stocking up hourglasses that's here. That's one. I think that's one. All right, Try to right? continue the pressure, but again, Torpedo, right? It's just going to shut down everything. All right, the Eagle going to be stuffing out some space between Kukui and Gur, and then Kukui, And of isn't course. that going to be a frustrating thing if you're a Garrus player, right? Watching him do safe Eagly minus five at a yes. difference you can't contest, and you try to use overhead that feels like it would retreat in the same manner. And, and Torpedo's going to cook that every time. Exactly. And you say, can forward not only forward, that. I'm pretty sure. Kukui gets the opportunity of stuffing out a little bit of space because he goes backwards more than where he actually started with the, before the eagle. So very, very unfortunate for Gary just to do that. He has, you have five games to play with, at least. Just the adaptations have to be made. And starting off with the Motaro into the corner. Kukui using the Glaive. Fortune is out, but Gur is still on this pressure regardless. Good sand clone. Nice patience, and Fanlip going to save him there. Of course, with the eagle, a little bit of uh, the, the range game plan of the gun as well. There's going to be a lot of the same, so it's not pretty <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> This is going to be a rinse and repeat matchup. Apologies, guys, if you hate seeing the same moves a lot of times. But honestly, if you are Kukui in this situation, there's no reason to engage with Gur. Right? Uh, and one of the things with Garrus, too, is that he is on the list. Somebody asked me that yesterday, and now I know the answer. Somebody asked me if the command grab would count. Oh! oh! He's just better. He's just it's, better. It's not, it's not even, I'll be real. It's not even going to win up the, the game. But just the fact that he was ready to he's do just that, better. that was so good. I fear he's just oh better. Oh my god! A little bit All better. Right. Even though Kukui did win, I don't care the scoreboard size. In my heart, Gur won that match. <laughs> like, I mean, I had the big brain idea of just it's not interacting. It's something for Kukui to think about, but I don't know how much is going to, like, switch things up, right? Like... So the point that I was trying to make before we got yes. before we got super excited about everything, Garrus is kind of on the list of NK of, like, weirdo characters, like he him, is. Quan... Um, Havoc, where if you're not sure about how interactions work with them, you can get caught up in their uh, nonsense. So even though it might be a little annoying as, you know, a competitive fan to watch somebody like Kukui kind of like run away and simplify it, why would you go in and box when that's going to be way more Gur's comfort zone in a situation like this? Like usually he's maintaining distance. It's problematic for Gur that he has to get in. So you've got to imagine there's going to be a reward when he's able to do so, especially running Motaro. And look, look at the deficit here. Look, it has been a complete reverse of what happened what game one. Look what happens when you let him breathe. This is why Kukui is maintaining that space when he can. Mm -hmm. Even though Gurg was also maintaining space in previous matches, here he's realized I can't allow this to go on for X amount of time. I have to go in, and we definitely start doing that with Motaro and, of course, Garrus. But now with no Motaro at the disposal, it does come back very quickly. But now look at all the space. Kukui is unafraid in utilizing Jake Glaives and utilizing that projectile well, from the pistol. this is the, the thing I mean. too, right? Because he's got four skills on it. If you Motaro the bullet, so what? He's immune to projectiles anyway. What yeah. if this came from him? You know, so he can shoot that all he wants. <laughs> like, he's yeah, like, like it's Thank you for showing us. I mean, we, we had a <laughs> demonstration live on, on stream here. Jake Glaives, again, the force field, much, it's pretty much just, just uh, Jade MK11, you know, projectile like barrier. But this is a good start for Gur again. You're still in the oh, life lead. The 40 seconds around the clock quite yet. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, it does nullify Eagly at least, but Eagly is also awkward too because of the uh, spaces at which he flies. But you notice how uh, Gur's been ignoring a couple of them. Yep. For sure, for sure. And I will say El Kukui is on that timer. You were there with me on Long Island. We watched Coach Steve run the same team. Oh, right? How many did. times did Coach Steve do accidental hops expecting Eagly wouldn't be back? Uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, Kukui has, has managed this beautifully. There it is. There is once more Gary Gay in the corner carry as well. Boom, bam, Bob stay in the corner by Santa Clone. And an overhead to boot. Look at this most power also coming in close. The torpedo has to be uh, utilized to get out of there. Ooh, and the that's it. No fatal. No fatal. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait, oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. What? The fatal did not come out. I promise you guys he went for it. It did not come out. Fight. 
That is unfortunate. Did you hear the silence in the room in, re in reaction to that? Everyone was shocked. I heard a, a deafening sigh. Then I heard someone go, no way, dude. And no then way, silence. Dude. No way, dude. Oh, my God. It's a, it's, at the very least, this is at least round three. But Kukui has kind of uh, taken the reins here and gotten the lead. Gur, I think, a little bit ejected from the occurrence. So why does two. it go full screen? Ooh, you're in the air. In the corner you go. That's been enough hourglasses, I believe. We can definitely utilize the the buff coming in from so, those so, great so anti-air. Oh, my goodness. Here's my thing. Notice the Peacemaker help bar, too. It didn't count. Oh, it's my glitching, goodness. It's glitching, wait. it's glitching, it's glitching, it's glitching. It's glitching. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a glitch. No, no, you guys are fine. I was talking about the help bar. I'm good. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It happens, it happens. It's still the same. Don't worry about it. Oh, damn. I was going to say something. I forgot this again. Oh, no, no, it, it came back to me. So when he's doing Torpedo into Fan Lift, right, we've seen a lot of other competitors react to that by jumping back with Peacemaker. Yes. To try to contest him. Garrus Kid should be able to get conversion off. I'm pretty sure it, his 1-2, his 2-1, whatever he does, he can land and continue to pick that up. I think if Gur clocks into that, you know, I think he's too thousand to hear me, which is why I'm saying it. He's got his headset on. He's also just had such a nod of disapproval right now. The frustration I can imagine too, right? This is going to give him a competitive right. plateau because he's going to be held up in brackets until he solves this character. Um, Johnny K Johnny if he jumps John back, Cena. I think the amount of damage he can get is worth it, and it can kind of nullify him wanting to use. Well, I think you'd fan lift anyway, right? Just off the spare chance that he doesn't do it. But you make him double think about how safe Torpedo is if you're going to constantly contest and get punishes for it. You should be able to insta jump and attack him before he can attack himself. Okay, we're, we're, we're going in. Gur is definitely going in with a confidence. Torpedo not going to be negated. There and it is, there's there it the is. anti from the fan lift. Yes. You'd love to see it truly. Something started. Melina also not going to be utilized to full extent. Motaro is coming in with the assist for Keep a reason. Keep in mind, too, a Peacemaker hits pretty hard. And when you're running Motaro, you are at a life deficit. We're sitting at 900. So this, it's, this is two Peacemaker combos. And, like, you, you block Amp Gun once. And that's kind of your health bar. Oh, my goodness. The Melina Gun Oh, does Motaro come taking the shot for his boy. Nice. That, that, that's your job. Oh, it stands out. Oh, we teleport out. I get out. Yes. Get close to me. I get the hesitation on the whiff punish there too. This is gonna okay. We're gonna nullify it again. One bar breaker. He's got to try to charge up some hourglasses when he can. He really Finds does. it there. There's one. There we go. We need at least three, correct? For for the breaker, I forget. Ah. Oh wow. Okay. This is such an intro. It, it's very interesting how these two characters interact in general with Peacemaker's force field and Garrus's just kit in general. Plus Motaro. Lots of reflectors going on. Uh, he could have just torpedoed. If you're going to dash in and, and try to contest with a button as Peacemaker in that situation, I do believe it's forward uh, 4 one, two. You might even be able to punish with it. Okay, I love that Gur pushed out Kukui. Timer's going to be very problematic here. Uh-oh, someone has to get something started. Yeah, Gur is backing up. Good follow block. That should be enough. Yes! Had he blocked one more eagerly without flawless blocking, it actually would have went to Kukui. But it, it didn't. Of, it was a difference of point one like help. Like, like, but it didn't. There we go. Here's the launcher. Oh, Gur said Never I gotta go back up. Yep, we got back up. Try it again. Can't save you from everything. No, he may be big, but he ain't that much. He ain't going to be able to do everything here at either. Going, he's, uh, quickly going back into the corner, trying to push himself back out. Great low poke, but the torpedo also can be utilized. No bar from Kui for uh, for what time being. Oh man, he's trying to try to like re, you know. Re get out all right patience here unfortunate okay misspent the cameo it's okay i mean the this is the problem right is that the route was still there even Fine. with that mistake Fine. come on now it's so hard to contest that i mean the game plan that gear had at the very beginning it has been whittled down uh, by the by the hand Safe of Safe eagerly is literally the problem because he has to constantly be concerned about it in neutral. Look at the torpedo disrespect, right? It's like you have to march down. And there's just so many tools for Kukui here, right? You have Jade Glaives, Katana Fans, Fans Lift, Torpedoes, Eagles, Force Field. It is literally a Legends of the Hidden Temple obstacle course that you have to get through to get down to this character. And then by the time you get there, if he times one nice armor move to disrespect, we have to cycle that entire sequence over again. Mix, nice read. There we go, there we go, there we go. Into the corner you go. You can just ski in there for a little bit while there. We can really drain the meter here as well. There we go. We only have four more seconds to go. We have the freeze as well. The sand time and the force of the break. This is looking real good for Gerb. We just don't oh, allow... On, we got a point on the board. Get anything started. Yes, finally. 2-1 so far.
If y'all don't just restart, thank you. They hear me. I was I no, I wasn't it. sure if Kukui was thinking about a character switch because it is devious to have Gur go through that many matches to finally sort it out just to change the entire game plan on him. And Kukui is capable of doing that, but it's been working out so well. I do think it was the better choice if you're him to just stick it out. Right? You can for like in the most respectful way I can say it in the mindset of Kukui if you're playing. Be like quote unquote he had some lucky reads. You he know, did, yeah. he, he ducked my throw, it happens. Yeah, it he, happens. He, he timed some torpedo, it happens. He's still mostly been struggling the entire time. He's been struggling to like really get in and be in Garrus's, you know, winning condition. Then this is where it is, in the corner. I'm there curious, you go. too, if command grab mix, once Garrus starts closing that gap, will be helpful here, right? Try to get Kikui to stop blocking in some situations, open up his uh, defense. Oh, great anti-air, can't lie. And this is horrible because it's in the corner, so this route should kill. Trying to time him again, and he beautifully does. That's punish. We just Very cycle it again. Very good cleanup from El Kukui all around. There you go. There you go. This is pretty much match point. We're going into round two of game four. Queen needs to win one more round in order to progress over to winner's finals against Pulse, who's been waiting there very patiently, very nicely. Well, listen, you know the Goons are big fans of when they take up every top eight slot in a bracket. I'm so saying. <laughs> like, they still got two win here. We've got two Goons, two TGC boys, and a lot of really strong competitors. Filling up the rest of that. Big rear flag, big tornado as well. Another one? No, not gonna be connecting quite effectively as the first one. Gur being stuffed out a lot here by the eagle, by the pistol, by you know, just forest field being a factor as well. Torpedo also enforces a space. Gur can't do anything. Gur, uh, Garrus does not have the ability, the uh, the potential of zoning. So he kind of has to force himself in there somehow with Mortaro's help. Didn't jump great, back. Great. Ready for this is a beautiful conversion though. You had to. Simply had to. There we go. Is it going to be enough? Possibly not, but at least we can just kind of... No, it's... Sh it's sh oh. Right. No, it, should, it shouldn't kill. I was going to say it shouldn't be anywhere near, but it's actually closer than I thought it was going to be, even with the scaling. Oh, my Does God. He get the oh. Because there's, there's some well, fatal blows. I did blows. not expect it to do that much. There's some fatal blows where I... Some of them, if they, they kick you at the end, and that's an extra little amount of damage. I always forget who has that specific little extra uh, tinge of damage, but Gera's... Does not, but it, do, it got way closer than we thought, for sure. Every single time he's tried to summon Motara and start charging clocks around, and notice how Kukui has been shutting that down to negate his ability to rewind time. Right, Garrus gets a lot of benefits if, if you let him stock up on hourglasses, and Kukui's been trying to shut it down as much as he can. Yeah, Kukui just kind of has a little bit of a disengage, block. and that converts. Oh, no, drop it, okay. Yeah, accidental backdash. You do a little bit of dropping in, uh, over here. Good Pushing overhead. Oh, he could have fully committed there if he believed. Oh, man. He's just giving up so much respect for this All character. For it. Okay, we Force talked about whether that command grab mix would be helpful. Great overhead. Now you have a life lead by a little bit here. The pressure Catches is him on. Again? It's working. It's <laughs> it working. It's just working. <laughs> it just shows him away. It's working. No, I want to watch the the no it. mix mix. I would like to say that I prefaced that this was gonna happen. That he was just gonna start hugging him. What's going on? Press back. I want to see the rest of the move. Oh, I think we're having a, a yeah, technical difficulty. Control 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 control. Oh, there is injustice two bracket going on. I heard. I yeah. heard. There is a little injustice side bracket going on. It's very. Right, we've got to figure out this controller issue. I, I don't know if um part of what happened there is that Kukui's frustration is that something's wrong with his controller. Like he went for an answer that he didn't get. But he, he's clearly in a position where something's wrong. We're trying to get this sorted out. Well, right, they found go controller. They found controller. Now we're all nice and big. We still have a game five to see because I think uh, – was that was that uh, the game? No, no. We're going to game five. Okay. That, that was uh, Gur making the comeback to make it okay, to great. two. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunate, but uh, part of the problem – listen, there are competitors that come with like two to three backup controllers because they're so paranoid about situations like that. That's not the larger not part of the community, but I know a couple. paranoid, but they also – Prepare the you controllers. Know? Yeah. You know, they are you know a little bit a little bit wonky. The last inside. thing you would want to do is be stuck at like Evo in top eight. And then your controller have like this and no backup destroys you know? itself. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we're just doing a little. We have one swapsies here. Probably gonna be seeing a quick low button check. Make sure that control the new controller is working. I will well say too, when well. this match is done, I'm probably gonna run to the bathroom like super fast. That's no problem. And then come back. No. That's no problem. They've been taking ten years to get ready anyway. You have to. Yeah. They, they have no sort of... No, no, I'm going to do it when they finish their set. I'll I mean, like, the next player. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one ever has any sense of urgency. Well, now everybody's in the room, so I don't know. Like, who's up next after this? Let's see. So um, if we it run should that be Hercules and Big Bird. 
Unless and we're going to be finishing out winners. If we're finishing out winners, we'll we can We'll work pulse. it out. I imagine that we're going to watch like a fair amount yeah. of it. Yeah. So I have, we got hydro our lips. Here. We hydro our lips here. It happens. You're a better man than me for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Hi, guys. <laughs> 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 I figured they're watching me. <laughs> Listen, we don't have chopsticks in this house, personally. That could never be me. All y'all, I don't know. Right, me? We're sorting it out. I'm hearing character select again. They got it? They're going to do a quick button check for sure, for sure. If Hopefully. I was him, I would, but... Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. No, this this might be game. This is gameplay. This is gameplay. Oh, we are. Oh, the confidence. I love it. Well, because his controls are already set. So he just needs a functioning controller, you know. I, I wish I had the controller. I, I hope for his sake that it's broken in a little bit, right? That's that why. Somebody yeah. didn't pass him like a new one from GameStop. I mean, it's it's nice and Shout red. Shout out to Wu. Bought a new controller yesterday. <laughs> oh, what? Wu, Wu, Wu. Went to GameStop, bought a controller because he he only brought his PS4 pad and forgot. <laughs> okay, he <laughs> got to it. Go to GameStop and well, what did he get? He he, he got, go he got pretty a purple. Far. He got yeah. a purple. No, there's a GameStop like right down there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he got it. All right. Who else has it? Kukui has it for life. Gurz Array supers in the deficit. That torpedo does so much damage. So much. What if he lied about the controller to shut down the momentum? Layer 7? He didn't. I just like being, no, yeah. <laughs> I like being a being conspiracy guy. A little, a little instigator. Oh, my goodness. Another one will be taking Gurz down. Oh, oh great oh, opening, no but confirm. didn't believe. Wait, we're back. Throw him again. Throw him again. It's gonna work. I promise. Well, this Great is the overhead. thing now, right? With the way that Kukui was wait, reacting, wait. this is beautiful. That's it. That's it. That's it. The way Kukui was there reacting, you have to consider if you're girl, right? Like, did he have an answer for that, or could he not get it out? I mean, Kukui can't really say the same. Now we have a whole different controller at our disposal. Like, no, but know, I'm like, saying, like, as far as like wanting to push the pace with that, where it ah. seemed like there was something that Kukui wanted to do, and he just got stuck in the command grabs. You know how real was that? No more tar to protect there, but it's it's he's already conditioned to wait. There we go. Cutting the Kukui out on time. Okay, so pretty even here as well. Kukui finally out of the corner. King actually gets him. He started with the Eagle as well as the uh, guns as well. At the force field, which is up right now. But oh, no opportunity they, yeah. to use that big old wall. Why did the wall whiff? Uh -huh. The wall? We don't know. That's uh, that's to be so frustrating if you're Gur because he could have had like seven different mind games like uh, that he was going to play off of that just to have it whiff on him like that. Oh, there we go. This is going to be big. Look at Kukui's meter too. He's got nowhere near breaker yet. So no, you catch out as hard as you can and hope that you make the right read on this next sequence. He has to hold all this damage. The secret really was just that's it. That's it. That is it. The secret was just to utilize those command grabs, utilize that wall in tandem. Get him in the corner and bully with it. Yeah, yeah. and just bully. Notice how he had to start uh, committing with Torpedo to get out of those situations, and then every time he was wrong, he either had to fan lift, mm -hmm. right? Which means that if he's not on Katana, right, that he can't really Torpedo. So you kind of get an idea of when he's going to want to, because he has to be holding the sequencing, seeing if he wants to Torpedo, and then looking over to see if he's going to be protected the way that he's hoping for. Guys, I will be right back. I'm going to take the rolls quick. Go ahead. Bathroom break. Oh, I love this! Look at this! It's in the middle now! Yay! Do we, are we going to finish out winners and then go losers? Oh, I love that. Okay. Okay. Losers next? All right, no problem. Hercules and Big Bird should be up on deck. Oh, I see them standing up. Yeah, they're ready. Please. I, don't, I have eyes for a reason. I don't use them. Nobody's gone. Oh, London Spitfire. They're gone now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that too loud? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I need to get a secret lab shirt. This is looking mad comfortable. I can't lie. Uh, okay, going up on deck, we do have again Hercules and Big Bird. We're gonna be seeing that Kenshi. We're gonna be seeing that uh, Donny Cage with the double chameleon. I want to say no. I'm sorry, Hercules does have the sub zero. Big Bird will have the chameleon. So should be coming up. Look, they are ready to go. I love that for us. Why am I being approached? I'm being approached. Why are you approaching me? I hate this guy. I don't know who this is. This is very menacing. Get away from me. <laughs> Regardless, look at them getting all started. I'm probably going to do a little quick button check. You saw that? I got harassed. And they're cutting out the evidence. I can't believe it. <laughs> I I am loving, even though the camera is doing that, I love the, the, the gag of it. It's my favorite right now. Oh, my goodness. 
Okay, Big Bird has been on a tear. As I keep mentioning previously, he has been showcasing a dominating performance in today's bracket compared to yesterday, getting guaranteed top eight, guaranteed medal, little, little bronze, little moment. Mm. So we are and back. And a run back opportunity yes. for them here. Absolutely, from yesterday. So if you guys weren't tuned in yesterday or didn't notice before when we were talking about make sure my zipper's up and we're good. Um, <laughs> it's off camera, so I can check. Uh, we <laughs> had, had this match uh, yesterday at the weekly. Hercules ran away with it 3-0. Yes. And I remember Bird being like a little frustrated, right? Not, not necessarily with Hercules, but it's Kenshi. That's, it's an annoying matchup to deal with, right? It's just like, oh, it's been a while. Bird hasn't been like super incredibly active. Um... But went 0-2 yesterday and is in top 8 today. So it seems like the little bit of warm-up time he needed, those five minutes were probably acquired yesterday, getting those casuals in. Absolutely. And now he's ready to go. And if this does not go well, he is going to spend $7 and play some Overwatch, most likely. With me! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, I can't wait. Please throw. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> we got to lock in. Big Bird is locked into this into giant cage, and Hercules is locked into the Kenshi with the Cyrax, actually. A very interesting choice here, but instead of the Sub-Zero, for, uh, for example. Now he could. He has a couple of options, right? He could try to like wave out of this. Uh, he could try to shadow kick. Nice jab there. You just get rid of the. But now he's right behind you. He's, <laughs> he's, 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 you. you. he's behind you. He's behind you. Don't look behind you. Difference in timers too, right? Like it's it's a lot harder to keep Senso out consistently now. That's going to be a, a frustrating factor if you're hurt here. Another Next, we're going to get the restand pressure. Yo, Big Bird loves throws, mm. and I, I love him. Well, specifically with Melina too. He yes. likes uh, getting that easy chunk of nine damage and then getting to uh, force that mix. Oh, he had a beautiful witch punish attempt in the oh, in the works is. there, but got clipped up. There's Grandpa. There we go. Big break. Yeah, stop the scenario while you can. He's going to try to march Sento over. And Sento is gone for a little bit. Should be, yeah, should be just, just, just uh, gone going by away now, right yeah. now. Yeah, doesn't operate the same way anymore where he's kind of marching behind you the whole time. And Bird first round on the board. If you're him, you want this to continue the same way. And he had one of the closer sets with Kukui from uh, earlier in pools. Oh, yes. And they got reverse 3 0 mm. by, uh, by Tanya specifically. So going to his matchup, should be getting some nice confidence boost. The Jay Glee coming in for some extra damage as well. Into the corner carry just to boot. Oh, my goodness. You are just taking everything and you're stunned down. Great. Oh, that's supposed to be a safe jump setup, too. Yeah, just was able to work it out very quickly. Oh, just, yeah. Just completely contested him from trying to get Sento set up there. Another and look at how much time he's killing. Sento's never going to get to get back up. Bro. I'm saying he has been resting on his knee for quite a minute. The respect is a little bit too much here. <laughs> that fella never got to come back. He never got to come back. You know how if you ever did martial arts, if you accidentally hit your opponent a little too hard, you go, you know, you, you lean down for a second. Yeah, he never got to get back up in that fight. Yeah, that fella Sento was looking like Ryan Garcia. <laughs> I hope he's Jay. Ooh. Ooh. He needs help. He needs help. He needs a little bit of help. Someone get him back I'm, in the match. Same I'm with Hercules. Oh, my You're goodness. Right Oh wait, the, 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 the rare be... fall from Big Bird makes that Hercules getting opportunities to get something started again. And there it's it problematic. Is. You can't give Kenshi too many of these. No, you cannot. Any space, any opportunity, you cannot give Kenshi whatsoever. And now you're being sandwiched between two big old swords. Oh my goodness. And the fan lift like boo. Oh, I love the idea. Well, I mean, it got him out of the situation and ran away from Sento. Like, could have stopped and tried to poke Sento, just ran away completely. Oh, look at, look at the conversion from the Molina sides as well. Look at this. In the corner, just take all this chip damage from 200 and on, where I swear it's all chip damage for what now. What a change in this momentum. I mean, this is already better than Bird performed yesterday in this matchup. Nice stagger. Damaging enough throw. Kind of just get him to hold anything, yeah. Yeah, either you go, you go for a jump. Well, I was going to say, even if he wakes up armor, if you trade, you win. Fight. And it was really just talking to Rock in a hard place. Very similar to how he plays anyway, so it's a little bit of a little medicine. A little high punch. There we go. There we go. Another kind of just another sequence of the of the combo carry. Thankfully, not making the side switch. Gonna be staying on the same side, keeping Hercules in the corner. Oh, just got away with it, raw. <laughs> Bird is waiting to get glaze. I promise you right now. There we go. Yeah, yep. waiting, waiting on the optimal uh, amount of time to just take care. Of, oh, toss he's it gone. out again immediately. There too. he goes. Even if he was just to sit there and block it, like it at least would have nullified Sento, and that jump and kick is gonna get that jump. That's two points on the board. In like 40 seconds, total. Now Herc has to sit and collect it. himself. This is worse because this is the curse. Are we getting some coaching from Alphabet? Oh, wait, when Alphabet brought he, out the book? <laughs> yo, Alphabet, <laughs> relax, he has a lady. <laughs> like, yo, he, he, he like this close. I was going to say, them lips are close, bro. <laughs> yo, they, 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 I'll be real to you, you want to know a fun fact? Uh, he wears the same ring I do. Oh, really? They What's have the, the same one. There's a Star Wars ring. 
that's cute. One of them says, um, I love you, and the other one says, I know, and it's Han Solo and Leia. And they have oh, you don't have for your wife, too? Oh, my God. I found crying. out with them at, um, I want to say NEC. I have that conversation with them, and, and him and uh, him and his lady have the same one. I'm going to start crying. That kind of seems really emotional. I'm a Pisces. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, going into this possible last game in, in favor of Big Bird. We're going to be seeing the Sub-Zero get back on the map, and thankfully, because I, I forgot we had Cyrax Consider the, the switch here. I've got to imagine this is just to try to nullify Glades. Oh, absolutely. It's just oh, to nullify cool. Glades. Is a, a, a Glades. Yeah, Glades, and also just to nullify. Oh, I'm Glazing. You know, yeah, 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 it sounds crazy. It sounds very crazy. This solo's on my team. I'm Glazing. It was also for an opportunity to just freeze Johnny Cage in the moment and get Sento to do something and, and try Big Bird, but I feel like Big Bird's a lot more confident. Look at him, confident. look at him. What did I tell you when you said what we talk about? He's yeah. cheesing. You see that? He's you singing. see that head rocking? He's singing. He is singing. He is head rocking. I wish we had Fly like Bear Cam to just look over there. <laughs> <laughs> he is rocking his head, but and for a good tough. reason. For a good reason. Look at Kenshi's meter. Not enough to really do anything here. Safe jump setup, guaranteed. He's Perk still hasn't acquired a bar. This should give him at least one. He's still one. singing. He's still singing. He, he just, <laughs> his head was off the controller. <laughs> This fella is just in flow state. Alright, there we go. Forward throw gets some space started. And then the uh oh, do it do it a third time. Okay. No more no not too much pressure. Not too much pressure. Oh, right, oh, trying oh, to be oh. careful of neutral here. Oh, get over there! This is great Jeez. for Herc. This is amazing, great setup, and but Yeah, but oh, this man. is where it's harder because had he had Cyrax, he probably just would have contested with something called Cyrax out. Sub Zero, you have to get that hit confirmed. Oh, great follows up, but no follow up. Unfortunately, couldn't do anything about it. The block pressure very insane. Again, Johnny Cage, and the hype meter is, uh, yeah, your your shins are gone, your knees are gone. He can't block like two more sequences, and he finds the throw anyway. It's only nine, and it's enough to get it done. Very, very excellent showcase on Big Bird. Again, a complete different person yeah. between yesterday and today. I, you love to see it. You oh, really it's incredible. Do. It's, I think, right. You, you come off of like an inactive period like Johnny's one of those guys and you can see like Bird's game plan is very simple right like he's gonna push the pace he's yep. not gonna get off of your back yep. um, his, just his comfort and his execution doing that some of the routes he likes to go for with Johnny Chameleon are a little annoying um, especially like when you watch like Pulse do hype meter conversions and you have to use her in the middle of them they're difficult to execute they take a little time to like lock down like obviously these competitors have had the time now um, I imagine the difference like this was a complete flipping score from yesterday it was 3-0 oh, yes. yesterday 3-0 Bird today so everybody got a turn um, I imagine if you're Herc, you would have rather got the win today and lost it yesterday, you know. But we still got a top eight placement. That medal's still going to go around his neck. And I'll be honest, like, sure, did Bird win the match? Sure. But Herc's going home with a lady. <laughs> so, like, so, who wins in the end? You know, Bird's going to get dinner with me. You know, Bird's, Bird's <laughs> like, going really to go play Doomfist. And then, uh, you know, Herc gets to go home to his woman. So, you, you know, know what? We have a true winner in our hearts. Cause, yeah, because I'll tell you something. When Bird didn't win yesterday, who was there to console him? None of us, bro. We went to IHOP we, we and we were like, eat your pancakes, bro. <laughs> eat your pancakes and <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you want some extra syrup here? Stop being just a little salty. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Oh my gosh. So we are gonna be having uh, HF and Silence return yes. up on deck. This is also another run back from yesterday. Silence return did take over HF. I want to say three one or three zero. Oh. Yeah, we talked about that like bodyguard uh, strategy with Tremor yes. that I imagine we're gonna see like earlier here to try to nullify some of the zoning. Absolutely. It's gonna be more beneficial for whoever manages to acquire the life lead first, um, then force the other one to try to go through that zoning war to get to you. Silence could try to change up the format if he wants to go reptile but I, that's not a fun one for a uh, reptile no, thing so you can introduce like force bubble as a deterrent right to kind of stop some flow mind games um death roll gets you past a lot of like her annoying stuff in neutral but i think she just kind of um the manners in which she can just drown him are not worth it especially with the fact that silence has been a more dedicated Rako player for the larger portion of the game stick with what you know stick with what's going to get you the win I was gonna say he and did stick with win what worked with last Rico, time. like very yeah. convincingly yesterday. I, I don't see any point in switching to um, reptile unless your, your your final car is played. Like All your right, we're gonna start played. off with Chameleon, which which I don't um disagree with from HF, right? Like we tried the tremor strategy yesterday, it didn't work out. We'll give Chameleon a shot for a round if it doesn't work the way we want. We've always got the uh, option to change it later. Round one. I can't call it the B slap anymore. We're, we're, we're yeah, we're front definitely front button checking if he's just staring at his. It, it's, I swear for a second that HF not look like he looked up. It was like, what are we playing? Like, Does he know <laughs> the, the game starting? And we don't care? All right, he's good to go. <laughs> HF did absolutely no button check. Yeah. He was like, I can flow. I'm good. <laughs> it's, listen, I, I admire the confidence. I'm not, I'm not built the same way. I would have had to have double check just in case. Oh my goodness, the immediate, immediately with the Ninja Stars. 
This is the, and this is what we, we, we were probably talking about. This is the this J play we wanted, yep. and that is the pickup we also needed for HF to get a nice solid start here. And it's not the biggest damage on the planet, but it wasn't resource heavy. Oh, oh, fan leave into the hover. Oh, we are again extra <laughs> airtime. Oh my goodness! Ah! I don't there know why go. I did it with her. <laughs> <laughs> I want to really immerse everyone into what I was listening to. Well, you know, we're fighting back the bias. You, we both have a dog in this race. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. All right, let's see. I really want. I think he's just timing out, waiting for the J just to get the nice waves. flawless block. Walk a man grabby. Oh, there's yeah. I HF don't hate the knows. break. I don't hate it. No, he. I think he just knows like the. It, it, the taste like, of get what out of the situation. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's a J wave to so make sure that you know Science Run has, has to actually approach and play the game a little bit. Great. Okay, both of them get out of jail free there. there there's a possibility that had HF hovered again, might have been able to land on top of Rico for confirmed. Oof, 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 and you oof, see, there we go. Yeah, you ooh, see Silas leave. too trying to like commit to that down four, get get under that forward one. Oh, very quick, Jake. Uh, the the Jake cameo coming in to make sure the projectiles don't actually interact with HF. Very, very much better ooh. game, but nice catching the anti air from the fan lift. Oh, nice little sweep. And the fact that he still has Fatal here too is like scary. Oh, now oh. it's just a little mind game into nice. the chip. Nice. It does so much. This is very solid from Silence Return, understanding. There's no okay, way that I fellow just play. sniffed dirt. Are you okay? He just <laughs> that fellow just took her out and good? sniffed the pebbles, bro. Oh, what do they taste like? Oh, nice little, nice mind games with the hover. Okay, interesting, interesting. Can definitely maintain it. Now right. doesn't have Jade at the moment, so it has nice to kind of hold these, uh, these uh, shurikens. The momentum switched immediately. Going to maintain frames. Oh, and it's, it's Thank? His lucky star is that he did not hold up block. That would have been a 34% command grab. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the, puni the, the punish factor on up block is so, so... It, it's, it's it's a punish. Like, you don't mess it up. But, like, the scream, don't mess it up either. I'm using the Jade Glaive instead. There we go. Do it again. Serena, are you there? Is that Serena? <laughs> Let me go for the Queen's Call. Oh, nice. Stuff out at distance. There's the confirm. I understand the breaker again. Ah! Why should you scream like that? Please. Jab one two boom we're going in yeah we're gonna get the pickup here he's gonna cash out as hard as he can there's no reason not to Oof, and you don't have anything to deal with it force it nice to hold jump. it that he's plus uh oh wait for the late get up he has you better you better have your flawless blocks on timing here oh, oh! Take, that, take that take that take that oh do full damage please do not do not hesitate go boom 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 yo let me tell you <laughs> the fan lift to avoid let me tell you something let me tell you something let me tell you something <laughs> The fan lift to avoid the, the, the EX shurikens? Yeah, you got it. You got it for life. That's perfect, yeah. I, I imagine if you're a Sendel player, you're thinking about that all day, right? Like, how many characters? Like, if I'm Quan and I'm trying to jump over projectiles and I toss back one of myself to try to avoid some yep, situations, yep, yep. like, if you have a full hover like that, like, yeah, you're, you're thinking about that all day. Beautiful kick. Oh, huge extension as well off of it. The foe just kind of rips back. And nice there we go, contest. one, two, into the scream. Do it again. Here's the launch. We also have cameos. Oh, unfortunately, dropped it. Had them lean at the, at the disposal at the very last second. Ooh, oh, nice I ball hate roll. it. Love the ball roll. I, I love it for HF, but I just hate it as somebody who gets hit with that overhead all the time. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to watch. What an anti air. That was an anti air. Mink, mink, He just destroyed him from the ground, please. There we go. Love the fan lift. And baited out the jump in from Asylum's return. Doesn't have any meter to EX any of these, so HF doesn't have to really deal with uh, the chip damage. Another nice, one. Nice, beautiful again. I love that HF is just going for basic. No, the drop. Oh, it's okay. It happens. This is still like really good for him, but the air of possibility is always problematic. Tremor gonna come in as Chameleon leaves. So now we're either yeah, we're, we're probably just looking to fish anything in a fatal here. If we can get it, that's gonna be it. That's it. Man, I mean, it really does happen to the best of us, but. Very amazing showing from HF all around, and it turns just kind of making sure that we had that I'm surprised HF was doing something that was acceptable to forward one two, because wake up buttons like it's not something that I would have mm -hmm. thought risk reward was worth it there. If it was armored hair flip, it would have got him out of it. He would have won, right? If you wanted to get up and do something at that point, unless he didn't have a bar, um, it was just you know insistent on like contesting. Oh, beautiful Ooh, for slap. HF. Silence mistiming that. Boom, boom, into the air. You have, com you have the drop again, the drop. but it's fine. It's kind of like we set up the situation. It could be worse. It's okay. We, we got back. <laughs> He's an American. It was a reset. It exactly. happens. Yeah. And this corner carry. This is the bullet game from Sindel now. Oh, go for the high toss with the back oh. end. Does, does hit. Signs return on the, uh, on the way Rubber out. Rubber thumb in a little bit. 
Nice low poke from Sanjo's return. You were full again. Dive. You've got to be brave to anti Sandel. Nice with the wake up. I feel like because I feel like Drake, uh, Draco has that ability because he has a little bit of a disjoint on his like on his kicks. They've reached much large, much further than I than I always expect every single time. No, it's it's nice crazy bait. to me that they go that far. This should be an HF round, and it is. He's gonna say fishing for the forward one to try to get that chip out. The the second hit is gonna get the job done. Fine. Then he said goodbye. I'm not gonna be here anymore. anymore. I had to hold all that chip damage, unfortunately, but it's a-okay -okay in the very beginning of the round. Nice uh, mix-up on the mid, but the command guard going to be giving Sans to turn another run, another opportunity to play the game. Nice. One, and two, cycles three, back four. immediately. Oh, couldn't put it in time. All right, nice. Nice job jabbing there. Just oh, walked away from danger. Just, you know, back up a little bit. It's okay. One, two, three. Tremor coming in for those extra blows. Gonna There's stack so on the bit extra to try to get this kill. It's gonna be close. There's so much visual noise happening when he mm. calls Tremor that I never understand exactly where Draco's limbs are. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is the male and female version of, like, the same kind of, like, concept of cameo. More control on the side of Tremor than you get with Chameleon, but cycling through your options to provide better utility. Of course, the difference with Tremor being that you have to manually cycle it yourself, whereas with uh, Chameleon, she's always strong, and you just have to keep track of where she's at. Yep. Now we are on J for a couple more seconds, but is it going to be useful? No, but the fan, uh, the Katana does get a lot of use when he's kind of switching the corners. Can we get the fan toss in time, the fan lift, if anything? No, like, it's actually often to Make some whiff, that. yeah. That's one of the best options you have there. It's either up block if they're going to finish the string, um, or just get her to whiff. This oh. might... No. It depends if... The down four would have reached. There was potential that it would have stuffed it out. But this, could, as rough as this is for HF, this could lead into a great, like, this alone could be the momentum he needs to get the switch here. It definitely could be, absolutely. And we also get a little bit of space going for us. We also have the Jake, the, the Jake protection from the, from the projectiles. So that should give HF a lot of opportunity to avoid these nice stars. Nice man. Oh, oh my god! Trevor said no! <laughs> sniped out the sky. Get back down there. What are you talking about? And the thing is, that wasn't even necessarily the uh, strat that Silas was going for. I was trying to cover in case you jump, force you to hold everything, but wasn't doing it under the assumption that HF was going to. Got him to whip there again. Is. And oh, so this is, I, I will say, I think from everything I've seen with HF recently, this has been his biggest problem, right? A little too reliant on trying to clear through neutral with uh, that back two string, and he's just been doing it from ranges that don't make sense. I've, I've watched it. He, he whiffed it on Gur a lot of times, and there said he's whiffing Round it now on one. Silence. Um, it's beautiful when it connects, but someone when you have a character like Reiko that can contest it from so far where they don't really have to play like a distance management game with you to uh, answer it, you've got to be very careful taking that risk. This here is going to be great. That's a great start for HF into this third round. Again, this is match point four times return. If he gets his, match, if he gets his win in this game, uh, three. Into the snap, I love it. Yeah, call Cam Chameleon right back out as quick as, quick as possible with the, with the uh, Queen's command. Wait, this, you oh, see, there's oh. the problem. It's that disjoint from Reiko. It can, it can answer from so far. Big pickup, and this is great because he's going to side switch anyway. Cycle Tremor back. Live without him for a little bit. Get a great reward when he's there. Big 40% on the board. Big Ooh. up block and opportunity for HF. This is what he's really good at. Catching those up block opportunities and really solidify off of them. Oh, slight a slight, a slight miss, but we need to pick it by low back up. Going to get the pick up there. Understandable breaker. It's too much of a guessing game if he's able to land that. Oh, oh my goodness. That command grab is Come so... sniff my armpit. So unforgiv unforgiving. Unforgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think if Reiko doesn't oh shower, God. that move does not damage. If, that, if he doesn't shower, you, your, your, high, your health goes all the way to zero. Like yeah, it's just it's immediate. Died. It oh, burns your hair follicles and it's over. The... the Sorry, I almost said the tremor lean. <laughs> like it's champ. The crystalline armor gonna save him in that situation there. And now this is great, gonna stay plus safe jump setup. And notice how he uses it too, because he notices that people aren't going to armor on it. They understand that it's a safe jump setup, so he just cancels it, turns it into plus range off that back too. Forces them to hold one two, and then you get a great kind of like strike throw game off of it. This just looks like a very tough matchup for HF. Finally there's the uh, stream coming and the two because uh, going for the corner carry as well. You got a bully here. You fought you really hard to get this. Yeah, you have to be the aggressor. You have to be unafraid of Reiko in this situation or take more of the space. But Reiko being one of the best owners, if not the best owner in the game for funny reasons. Oh, oh these up blocks yeah, from Tenshin are doing so well, but HF does not care. 
There it is, there it is. Let's go. We have to go for the blow here, unless we can keep this combo going. Oh my goodness! That's one of the hardest ones in the game to land. He just did it. Oh my goodness. Really great stuff, great overhead mix this up. This is so possible. He, he, he would love to still have Jade. He's there been very is. consistent with these flawless blocks. That was his big opportunity to get the punish there. Oh. No breaker. He has to save it, but he has one last attempt at this. That, oh no! He's a little bit too far to actually get the. the, the, the he could afford one, I think. Chip is going to be a big difference here. Is. He finds it. There HF it lives to see another day. This is last round of HF making a big comeback. Right, Silent's going to be very, very insistent on the march down here. Watch him as he plays this uh, this game. He's just going to try to find a moment where he thinks HF is a little asleep at the wheel. Try to bore him with the shurikens almost. You see the slight step in, the slight step out. He's trying to find that timing to really start committing to that pressure. You also, you also saw it's been clear that one of them is willing to box and one isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Like, and Times Gun also did a really good job uh, shutting down Chameleon in that first, first interaction. So HF unfortunately has to deal with all this pressure, all this damage as well. I also want to mention, you know, Tremor gives a little bit of health back to Times of Turn. He has 1,100 health over Sindel. Like, you have that that much. That little factor of 100, 100 health is so important. And this is the problem here, right? Like, you're trying to control the pace is HF, but this life deficit means you've got to do something. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, no, nice. that's unfortunate. That's an MK1. That, that was an MK1 moment. And unfortunately, it happens to the best of us. No, that's it. Side comes out and he's, he didn't want to see knows. it. He didn't want to see it. Yeah, it, it was the throw punish was the problem. Yep. He, he went for up block. He got baited. He got command grabbed. Uh, that was going to equate into death. There was no way to avoid it at that point. Unfortunate way to see HF go. Uh, great job by Silence Returns uh, adapting. I would have liked to have seen maybe HF uh, commit to the thought of Tremor at some point to see if it would have made a difference. But... He he went for what he went for. Chameleon's not a bad option. It's just a little it's a little rough. It played out that way. Yeah, I, I think it's just a matchup. Also, with the Reiko Tremor is so it just stacks and stacks on top of itself with the command grab with the uh, Tremor pummeling the ground. It's just mm. so much going on at once. And then unfortunately, nine times out of ten, you get put into a really bad position either in the corner or you're you know you're on the ground and Tremor's already starting something up. I'm talking about Tremor. Reiko's already something up for you. Or they make space and I have to deal with. EX Ninja Stars. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it really is just like a, it felt like a little bit of a lose lose situation. But again, Brian Times return because he won again 3 0. I don't know who. One, one gets to stay, one gets to go. What do you want to do? It's up to you. My ears hurt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a little break. We'll be doing a little quick catch or swap. So we'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna slide right into here. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, Kevin. <laughs> hey. Uh, this is pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, that Gur, I was like clipping the Gur and Al Kakui one, like <laughs> yeah, as it was no, that happening. Was, that and was stressing us out. That was that was a really good set. And in the stream chat, and you probably weren't seeing it, but Mighty Unjust was saying. This matchup is so awful for Gearus. So yeah, no, awful. it's horrendous. And I, I tagged him and I said, Gur lost a miss last night here mm -hmm. at the local, and he said he's ready for this matchup. And Mighty said, it's still dog shit. <laughs> and, like, Gur somehow, like, made the comeback. Like, I know El Kukui had, like, some issues with the controller maybe, yeah. but... I don't know. That was, I think that was Gur just tapping in, and, and hopefully we're going to see a little bit more of that coming up right now is the winner's finals uh, between Gur and Pulse. Which will be interesting, too, watching him now shut down this kind of momentum monster. A lot of chameleon today. Yeah. Tons she, of chameleon. She's definitely proven to be one of the uh, better cameos as far as utility. Mm -hmm. Gives you a, a, I kind of equate her to, there's a lot of cameos that gave you something strong that she just has such a good combination of on rotation, right? Like yeah, yeah. For a lot of people, like Serena... And what she's able to grant you, you have glaives, you know. Sure. Um, getting like the she movement options from like Kung Lao, like ambush that you get with fan lift, kind of, and then you get the fact that that's plus and glaives are plus, and it's like it's. She's like a she's like a cameo sampler, if you will. Yeah. For anyone who's <laughs> really hungry, which I think Kevin is really hungry. He usually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a little finesse plans with that McDonald's cup over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is that we go back, we get like a really small snack, and we see if they don't remember that I didn't order a drink this time because I, I bought something. <laughs> There's so many people in that McDonald's. I don't think anyone's going to look or care or notice. Is Akukui ba okay back there? See him hanging out, <laughs> chilling right behind Gurr, watching. Might have some Wait. coaching strategies ready. Listen, and this is another thing too, right? Like he is not out of the bracket yet, so this is important information for him to gather. 
That's true. That's very, very true. And this is just a button check. We're getting ready. Um, what did Pulse say on Twitter when Johnny Cage got nerfed? Unusable. <laughs> it's, listen, Pulse starts tweeting so much now, especially his like his uh his hype tweets for streams. I can't keep up anymore. <laughs> he just he spams out opinions. Hey, that's and what Twitter they equate to. That's what Twitter's for, right? Yeah. Oh, that was a very that was very unlike her. But I feel like you have to kind of adjust to the movement of Johnny Cage once he starts going. And it's actually uh, one of the few matches where we finally get to see Gur back on the Garrus Lao team. He's been running Motara to try to deal with all of these peacemakers. So definitely, whatever he laughs, he feels like Motara cameo is helping him cover. But once we take that threat away, we're right back on Kung Lao. Yeah, oh, just outside the range there. Pulse forced to use that, that <laughs> Just breaker. avoided what? it right it in just, place. That was so weird. It was almost like a, a pseudo, like, parry, if you will. <laughs> like, he parried the Shadow Kick. And he gets to go back to uh, what, what Gur's really the best at, right? Which is kind of like managing when he wants to go in and when he wants to go out. It's like when he was fighting Peacemaker, he didn't really get to control the pace the same way. Do you think that was unblockable protection, or do you think Pulse is just godlike? It's hard to tell. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's hard, hard to tell. The only person who knows is the person Because I've seen him block it before, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, I have. It's so hard to tell. Like You have to be so quick about it. Good recognition from Gur to recognize that down poke did successfully hit. I'm trying to manage the neutral here. I don't imagine that jump was a command that he was looking for. Oh, that jump after the fan lift definitely was, though. So hard to contest it. So hard to anti or do anything about it. And this is this was the big thing that was removed from his game plan when he was playing Matara. That's interesting. <laughs> I think <laughs> interesting. that was that was a stand button. That was definitely not supposed to be just snap. Oh, and I, I think he just got like a little too trigger happy, if you will. Yeah. His uh, his new ability also to stand behind Lao to, to start helping him cook up those uh, options, right? Like more, he tried to do it with Motaro shield when he was fighting Peacemaker. I like that uh, attempt to contest. It's so crazy how fast he can block after that. Like, Gur was on top of him, like, right behind him. And that knee gonna get the job done. Johnny has been adjusted, but there are a lot of buttons in his kit that are gonna operate relatively the same way. Like, being plus one instead of plus three, you still get, like, a shimmy game into forward three, mm -hmm. even yeah. if you can't do it. Like, and a lot of people are gonna hold it anyway. Yeah, definitely wanna, like, you, you kinda, and I feel like that's kind of been the tempo for this game. It's just like, yeah, I know throw is coming, but is it worth trying to prepare for it? Because, you know, just some characters just have insane damage output. Speaking of damage output, look at this. The hype mode activated. Triple nut punch in the corner. Left him in a standing position. And oh, only didn't uh, extend because he didn't have access to Chameleon throughout the length of that. He recovered in time. <laughs> and immediately found the back dash into the 4-3 game again. He recovered into Ger Gears was all over. It, like, literally jumped right on top of him. The the summoning... The su summoning animation was in full effect like am i crazy no 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 i saw exactly what you saw listen all <laughs> i can say in reaction to it is i've seen uh johnny cage get adjusted multiple times and none of which did i feel bad for him never imagine i, I don't feel like any of them have eliminated his capabilities to run his same game plan and if anything sure he got a couple of slap on the wrist adjustments but the inclusion of chameleon kind of fixed all of them i'd be mean, sure yeah and i mean you, you you find one way to get nerfed and then you can just look for a, a way to you know inherently get buffed Double Glaive combo here. Carrying him all the way to the corner. Gonna end it with a nut punch, a nice little safe jump. Gur goes to the delay wake up, but Pulse just challenging. You know, I was talking to Constant a little bit about, you know, the difference between, you know, some Johnny Cages who are just figuring it out and Johnny Cages that have been playing. It's just gas, gas, gas. Like a good yeah. Johnny Cage player knows I don't have to stop. I can keep going. I can keep pressing. I can keep getting aggressive. Yeah, I was talking earlier about how it's like it's a similar mindset with Kenshi, right? Like there are some characters where when you get really proficient with them, your ability to just run your game plan in spite of whatever your opponent has to offer because the, the margin of error is really on them, right? You don't really have to take the risk. They have to not make the mistake, and it's mostly reward for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A big risk-reward calculation, if you will. This has been a big thing here, too. You'll notice anytime that Gur tries to stock up on hourglasses against these higher-level competitors, they're ready to contest with something, either Shadow Kick from Johnny, Torpedo from Peacemaker, to try to negate that, because they know how strong it is when Gur gets access to those resources. It's going to be... I was going to say, is he dead? <laughs> yeah. But I forgot. We all forgot, because we don't have any kind of indicator <laughs> to tell us to get ready for rewinding time. Gur barely coming out of that situation because I think that was definitely going to kill him. No, 100%. Managed to jump in while still avoiding Lao Hat. He could have landed on it. And now again, going to try to run his game. Beautiful tech from Gur. Unfortunate. 
Big whiff, big whiff, but he does tap out. Yeah, there are ways to punish Garrus for that. You can't let him just abuse that overhead all the time. You gotta give Gur a reason to not do it. I love that answer. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt. And you're in a terrible position here. Back up against the wall, up against the ropes, and goes for the wake up. Yeah, Obviously, brave. always a, a super risky thing, super punishable. Uh, Pulse is not going to get the any uh, breaker in time, but he's going to be building some bar. This I, I was watching you commentate this before. This also yeah. scared me with the scaling. <laughs> this thing does not scale. It's going to do tons of damage here. I believe. Let's we see what it equates to in total. We should be looking at uh, about 50, uh, 51. Oh, and yeah, did it from a perfect distance. So it's not consistently punishable depending on the range that that overhead gets blocked. You probably could shadow kick it every time. but Or like, you know, in the Peacemaker match, if there, there's no reason you can't torpedo as long as it gets blocked. Yeah. That is a, a full screen, quote unquote, projectile. Projectile. Yeah. Projectiles <laughs> himself. Projectile. Self projectile. All right, Gur taking a small moment to think here. I don't imagine we're going to see more. So you got to think too, like Round even in that uh, matchup, Peacemaker does a lot of damage to life deficit that you take mm -hmm. to uh, run that game plan. That's right. That's right. He's got that little bit extra sitting at 950. Oh, oh there's boy. Johnny here. Oh, boy. This is not looking good for the Gur fans at home. Fan lift to extend a little bit more damage, nearly 35%. Gur trying to challenge back with the down one. Seemed like he just got there a little too late. Oh, the sweep, but nobody's home. Down poke, and, and that, that forces Pulse to feel like, I gotta be on defense, and that's a perfect time to go for a command grab. So this is what I'm curious about, too, because Gur has this uh, kind of game plan he likes to run, where he's kind of like command grab absent for a while, and when push comes to shove, they start coming out. You know, fr frustrating and neutral, too, to, to get caught with that. But it was, it was a big difference maker in the uh, Kukui matchup that he ran just before this, right? Once he started just committing to the no-mix mix with the command grabs back to back to back, Kukui kind of just got caught up in the nonsense. Yeah, it was, uh, I want to say around three command grabs in a very short amount of time. Does get clipped for not blocking his toes. Got to watch out for that low. Back into the mid screen and going right with that DX shadow kick. Oh, oh and that's going to no. be the difference maker there. This, this should be kill if he doesn't drop. It's and he's not going to. It's yeah. It's and charge up the hype meter. It's crazy because so many of these, these rounds have been Round so close. That was literally one decision <laughs> difference between, you know, victory and loss. Oh, the back four doesn't get punished, really, but he does get offense in another way, just kind of forcing his buttons down his throat in the corner. And he's, Yeah, he's so close to having that height meter. There it is. Oh, boy. He's going to say, I wonder how quick he's going to, uh, how soon he's going to start trying to take advantage of the fact that it's there. It's a big momentum shifter. Yeah, he's trying to find, like, a nice clean hit uh, in that back three, but that was very smart of Gerd to perfectly punish, jumping back, which is what he's been doing a lot, mm -hmm. but then... He just randomly gets caught there. And this is going to save him, time. too, because I imagine that was going to be confirmed right into hype combos. Sure, absolutely. But it was very smart of Pulse to just kind of reserve himself and not go right into it and just wait for the opportunity, because now Gur is completely vulnerable here if he does get opened up again. Trying to fish him out with the Glaives, and now we're just going to go into that Johnny pressure. Yeah, and this is going to be it. He's not going to have enough time to break this, yeah. Definitely not blocking in that situation, looking to challenge and Pulse. Puts himself in the most comfortable seat in yeah. the house. That's the winner's side of the grand finals. Where he'll be not only sitting there comfortably, but have the opportunity to now sit in the back to his <laughs> leisure chill. and take in all the information that he needs for whoever he might have to run into. He just hangs out in the back like a like, like Shao Kahn in the back of yeah. so many stages. <laughs> I missed it. You saw the uh, top three picture yesterday. Silence kind of felt like he had the same aura <laughs> in the middle. Um, he, did, he did. He did. But this is... We're, we're going to the lower side, loser mm. side, if you will. Everyone on their last and final tournament life. We're going to start off with El Kukui versus Big Bird. A run back. Yes. This happened earlier. Big Bird uh, started off with a lot of momentum into Kukui, uh, resorted it to what uh, the twins have kind of worked out their answer for Johnny with Tanya Goro, right? Mm -hmm. And their ability yeah. to kind of just contest in those small opportunities you get, either be protected or turn it into big conversions, um, and have what I feel like is a lot more of an ability to kind of determine neutral, okay. which yeah. is what they take most advantage of the stand three, the constant threat of the teleport, the fireballs, and the ability to just disrespect everything Johnny's doing without having to take the risk. 
Big Bird is a competitor that's really relying on aggression, and when you slow him down, those <laughs> openings start revealing themselves. Yeah. And Tanya's been one. I already heard it on character select, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long immediately. 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 We played the experiment before. When they first played it, oh. went 3 2. Bird Come tore in. through the first two games, Thinking. and then we got the reverse 3 0 with Tanya. I don't think Kuku is going to entertain doing guard. anything else from this point forward. No, definitely not, especially Chris now that he's like kind of homed down on that plan. The <laughs> game plan is Tanya is working. Like you said, Kevin. That's exactly what we're seeing. Tanya with the Goro assist, the Goro cameo, if you will. And I think it's just the access of having meter is just such a... Not only just access of... I'm sorry, access of having armor is just so good. And, and not only just like on wake up, but also just like during block strength and having Goro to make sure it hurts so that you, you know, you advance into this mind game like, oh, I don't want to go crazy, so I'm not going to, you know, take advantage of these plus frames because I could get armored. Yeah. And I will say uh, two things that will help against Tanya defensively as Johnny. One, uh, if you can flawless block the forward 2 one one string, you can mitigate a lot of chip damage that adds up over time. I'd say by the end of like matches, her forward 2 one one on block, it basically equates to a throw on its own from how many multi-hits she does. Um, and he's one of the few that can uh, use his wave dash to get out of that situation too. We'll see how he deals with here. Super plus after that. Goro does make some kind of connection here. Oh, and just checking him in the ribs as he's trying to, you know, cut that distance between him and Tanya. El Kukui on a huge life lead. And Big Bird opts to go for the throw. Super duper plus, but hey, when your opponent's plus, that's the best time to armor because they're just not seeing it coming. They say, oh, it's my turn. The same options are going to beat the same options, but armor will uh, be a factor in that. All right, starts getting some momentum here, does Bird, and again, is right. Is there's no reason to not do this as long as Goro is cooking up. It's going to be relying on Bird in some situations to uh, identify when Goro has been overextended and try to get that, like, poke in to reduce his cooldown. The longer you can get Tanya to operate without him, the better chance Johnny has. Tanya is very reliant on Goro as a cameo to run her game plan in here. That's right, that's right. Super reliant. Whoa, the third time to charm here, <laughs> trying to bait out the throw attempt or the, the fear of being thrown. And that was just textbook by El Kukui. Random little projectile did hit him, turned into a weird little scramble situation here. Oh, and yeah, she can't contest that. Yeah, that was very smart. Like, before he even landed and was able to block, of course, we're going to go right into the breaker to stop Goro from extending that combo. But here it's comes the, the low. Yeah, the, the, the crazy breakdancing low. The immediate momentum switch, and this has got to be a difficult to mental stack for Bird, knowing that he was so close to taking this before, so the possibility is there, but not being able to get through this now. It's so beautiful answer. It's so unfair when you run into a, a, a tie bot twin. It's just like <laughs> options and just, just the limitless ability to use all these different characters. And you know, I I, I admire it. I, you know, it's very as someone who has a hard time playing multiple characters in the same fighting game, it's. It's a very, very tough skill to hone in on. I do think if you're a high-level Mortal Kombat competitor, that you do need to be able to run at least like two to three. Well, I'll say at least two. There are some matchups that are just so polarizing, you know? And yeah. Bird is such like a Johnny specialist that it's like if he can't get past, like he's not going to get past this until he figures it out with this character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, loyalist, if you yeah. will. I mean, look at Gur too. He, he went down to miss twice last night mm -hmm. and, you know, found the answer in that tough matchup. All right, does the shadow kick into the fan left? Nice block there, was flawless too, so it didn't take uh, chip until he got hit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Love the down two, but hey, here comes armor again. Knock me down, I'm ready to get right back up and into your face with a swinging chandelier. This could be great from this is leading potentially into a sequence that could give him a point on the board if he could lock it down. Let's go, Big Bird. Oh, that was the right call, but just didn't believe in the entire string. Ooh. Super duper unsafe stuff here as El Kukui just kind of sinks his teeth in and just makes sure that it does the damage he needs. Very close here and getting a little crazy after that chandelier, thinking it's your turn to swing. No, here comes Goro. Here comes more armor, but now Goro's yeah. on, on you cooldown. You have to push before he comes back. But went for the throw and Kukui on par with the read. Yeah, very smart of Kukui to let go right there. That perfect timing. You know, block for those normals, but let go in case that throw is coming your way as it's a little bit slower. Uh, he was dropping these fan lift conversions. I don't know how much more damage he gets off of them. In some cases, it might be worth it just to go for the easier convert. Like, look at the position he's put himself in dropping that. Yeah, I always say the best BNB is the one you can hit 20 out of 20 times. Like, that, that's me personally. 
you know, you, obviously you want to optimize things. So you know, if you want to play the best, you got to optimize it and practice it so that you're never, ever dropping it in tournament. Did a great job adjusting that route for side switch, too. He's going to get as much damage as he can here. Nice patience. Still has to wait out Goro. Gets the punch, and that's going to be helpful. Buys him a little bit of time, but that straight confirm it's a fatal blow was going to be the difference maker. Yeah, so that little tick there, it is 40% of his life. But mind you, this is a 950 character. So I think this might kill. I'm waiting to see. I imagine this was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was barely. That barely killed. It was, it was very, very close down to the wire. So it was a little bit of a toss-up. All right. We continue to move forward here. As Big Bird's going to have one more opportunity to try to crack down on this matchup and get through this Tanya here. If he cannot sort it out in a couple of minutes, remember, this is, again, losers or lower side, depending on your preference. Um, he will be eliminated if he can't get through this. I like that he's entertaining this option, though. The problem is having it get baited, right? You can, as Tanya, make the read and just stop. This isn't the uh, end-all solution to her, but it's important to introduce it to get her to stop. Yeah, yeah, you got to get her to stop, and it's just kind of like you got to get past all of those mind games. you got to get past the hits of armor. you got to get past the Goro to keep things safe or to extend combos, easy hit confirm or block confirms, depending on what happens on the situation. Trying to check him with sweep, and I'm surprised that check got right through there. Shadow Kick not quite fast enough, but this is fast enough. Dashing in perfectly, Johnny Cage displaying that mobility, displaying that speed through the hands of Big Bird. Um, trying to use that movement to get El Kakui to stutter a little bit here. El Kakui's a brick Beautiful wall right here. Yeah. He's just blocking for days. Here we go, Super Plus. And of course, Super Plus, let's armor out of there. There, there is a willingness to take the throw that differentiates some of the high-level players from the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you always want to, like, I, I guess it's more of, like, a passive defense against the throw. Watch out, though, Kevin. There's only 12 seconds left on this clock. Nice flawless block to help with that, but that's going to be the difference maker. Now Bird has to get something going, and trying to rush against the clock ends up becoming susceptible to the Drogon. Round two. Big Bird literally needs to tap in right now. It's do or die for him. Last tournament life and possibly the last match for him. Last round if El Kikui does take this. Cashing in big time with damage. Ooh, and hey, let's raw. go. Molina raw, double overhead. Easy combo. Yes, of course, we're super unsafe. But hey, sometimes you got to roll the dice. I swear that ball roll becomes stronger for characters who don't really have natural overhead like combo starters because you're just not thinking about it. Yeah. You're so like can oh, you, again. you've He's conditioned yourself so many you know hours, so many months, so many days to block a certain way against characters who normally can't open you up with with starting overhead. Trying to find it here. It's just a chip sequence away. Yeah, and Bird making the right call there, not over committing. Yeah, was just literally just trying to buy time until he got a Jade cameo for the chip. Yeah, the chameleon cameo is very complimentary to Johnny Cage's lack of uh, projectiles. Love the Ooh, and the pickup. And I love the pickup even more. 25% pushing her back. Oh, and Did he's going to get a conversion again. Did we figure it out? Did Big Bird figure it out? Let's see. I think Alka is still going to armor next opportunity. Beautiful up block, yeah. That's going to be a layer one answer. This is so intense. He's got him in the corner. And there it is. Good bait out by Big Bird, but that's okay. Mortal victory. You got the core out of there. Keep the pressure going. Force her to do it again, and then maybe she'll be unsafe. Because <laughs> that's fair. That's Listen, fair. Man, he very much needs the momentum of a point on the board here. I mean, it's tournament life if he doesn't get it, but it, it could be the difference maker just giving him the belief that it's possible. It's very smart of Big Bird to kind of rely on this life lead. Gets the combo, gets the conversion, and Big Bird is on the board. All right, so it seems like the game plan from Bird now is to acquire that life lead and then slow down the pace, right? Give himself time to see what Kukui's doing instead of trying to constantly, like, rush at him and run into him. It's true. It's true. Yeah, life lead super important in all fighting games. Really depending, and I guess normally like a character like Johnny can't really sit on a life lead, but with access to things like the glaive from full range, you know, it's it's very high risk, low reward. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you're just kind of using it like a projectile, trying to find the hit and making sure it hits, or making sure it hurts, I will, I, I should say. I checked that from El Kukui, the down one. Oh, try to anti-air. Well, Johnny going to be one of the toughest characters on the roster to do that, too. Yeah, that's your that's your first mistake there, trying to anti-air Johnny Cage. Is he going to spend the breaker? Yes. I feel like that was almost like a fish from El Kukui. Like, yes, kind of fish. Ooh, what a problematic one at that. Oh, 
Oh boy, the recovery frames after that projectile and Big Bird ready to tap in, ready to see it, see the, the opportunity and just take it for himself. Try to bait the up lock. Yeah, oh yeah, big time. And that's really it, like with, with Johnny Cage's jump kick being so uncontestable, like the mind game immediately goes into up block, no up block. So He's one of the few that forces you to entertain it. Like right away yeah. too, like right away. Yeah, Forward almost two is almost never incorrect. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not. Oh boy! Whoa, oh, I that was he could have continued. I don't think he believed either, because if yeah. it didn't connect and he continued the string, he would have been left in a punishable state. Just did it. Hey, let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Oh. oh. What? Okay. What? But what? 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 Kevin. Okay, that should be round there. I was surprised he was willing to take that risk too. Nice block. Yeah, I was going to say, she is safe, but you do get a turn back. She doesn't have access to Gore to protect it right there. Yeah, she's super, super negative, but you know, you don't really get anything Ooh. clean, clean, clean. Oh, what do you do? What do you do? Just, oh. yeah, you know. <laughs> Airborne <laughs> state. I like the idea from Bird there. I mean, it could have been a down one. It could have been something that could get parried. So, yeah. I think the problem with that was just showing, like, you give Kukui enough time to see the situation and think about what his answer is. Mm -hmm. Gets the jump, and this is big. Launching him up. Little extension. Little extension net, thanks to the katana lift. And nice from Kukui here, but he's going to spend some time catching up on damage now. Big Bird has a great life lead. And now he is the brick wall. Never it's mind. opened up, yeah. Never <laughs> mind. Okay, coming off the breaker. That's pretty late into the combo. I think I personally would have held on to it for the next one just because Ooh. Tanya doesn't do too much damage. Is Found the successful hit, but he, he never is he gonna? No, no, he backed up to not entertain the game again. You got to be very careful about stand three here. Uh-oh. This is it. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's... You done? No. I don't think it was enough to Ooh. kill. Bet it all on that? You bet it all on that? You bet it all on that mix-up! Uh, <laughs> I thought we were going straight into a Fatal Blow confirm. Um, I don't know that Gore was still out or on enough cooldown where like, yeah, he couldn't. It like, could have been that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he just got hit right before that. You know, I might have missed it. It's, there's a lot of stuff to watch, especially when Chameleon's on screen. I'm trying to constantly monitor where she is, you know? Yeah, what costume she's got on, <laughs> what, 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 what effects are in play. Nice patience. All right, that's one Goro gone. Just wait it out. It's one of those things, too. If you can find time to, like, poke. I mean, the thing is, Kukui's always going to enforce in a way to try to, like, not let you poke after that scenario. He is plus enough to enforce, but if he doesn't in any sequence and you can get a jab out and, again, reduce that cooldown. I think I mentioned this before. I uh, might be deja vuing. Deja vuing. Deja vu. Ooh, we just went for a raw. Oh, nice protection. I, I, he could have potentially converted. Yeah, I don't know. I think he was still in, like, in block stun. And I think it was because, like, the second hit of the chandelier, it was, like, the timing of when she got hit out of chandelier. And it looked like he was still, like, blocking and coming out of block stun. Because I, I definitely think through. he tried to convert. Oh, boy. He gets timed again. Yeah, that fear. Nice damage on board. Beautiful tech. Taking his turn over and over again is Big Bird. There's still a potential for a comeback here, and that's going to be gone immediately. Uh, sitting on Fatal Blow, Johnny does have routes that allow him to get that much damage on board, or at least enough damage into a win con. Exactly, exactly what we're seeing here. That's a go-to strategy for a lot of Tanyas, too, that we haven't seen Kukui taking uh, too much use of. Stand three immediately into spin kicks, and then protect with Goro. If it hits, don't bother. Yeah, it's, you, Goro comes out so fast that you can like really wait. Like you don't have to preemptively throw things for you know possible conversions like you do for like slower cameos like Kano knives. Yeah, it's just like immediate. Like I mean, if she goes through that move, she has four hits in the animation. Most usually time it between the third and the fourth. So you have a lot of time to figure out whether you want to spend it or not. Doesn't get the pickup. Oh boy, this might be this, it. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, and you'd have to flawless block it. Yeah, a lot of things to uh, so flawless close. block there. But, hey, look, man, Big Bird kept it interesting, even though El Kakui went straight with the with the answer, if you will. Yeah. Right into the Tanya, Big Bird. Brought it to 3-2 twice. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of kept the composure, and it, it's tough. That's a tough uh, player to, to, to bring down to 2-3, two, to two to three, no matter how you, you spin it. This is one I'm interested in seeing coming up now. What do we got? Just means he has been tearing through everybody on the bracket with sub-chameleon. How are you feeling about chameleon turning sub into a character? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I abandoned sub way before chameleon mm -hmm. came out. 
and I was just like, I don't, I don't see it. But because mm. like there was like a large debate, and and between like what was Sub's best cameo beforehand, mm. and a lot of people said Serena just because you know you can pseudo make you know the overhead save, you can convert off the low. Um, but you lost a lot of like utility. Some of the other cameos, like Kung Lao's hat, really gives you. Um, and I feel like Chameleon just kind of gives you that Serena double rang and more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to convert from slides is insane. Like yeah. slide as a mix up is insane. It's, it's so much utility, so much usefulness uh, with the Chameleon cameo for, yeah. for Sub Zero. So I, it I mitigates I, a I, lot of the risk that Sub Zero had to take before. I feel like yeah, 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 that too. And it's like even it, like even if you do block like the slide correctly, and he fan lifts out of there. Sub Zero goes up in the air, and you're just like. Is he gonna dive kick or not? And like, yeah. you think he's gonna dive kick and he doesn't. It's like, oh, he got away for free. Or if you think he's gonna dive kick, or if you think he's not gonna dive kick and he does dive kick, you're, you know, caught for a full screen for a full a full combo, really. Yeah. Um. So, so just Meezy is actually, I believe this is the third or fourth, uh, actual like live offline tournament for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been coming to our MKNJ weeklies, which is every Friday night here at Helix. Sub and I feel like it's just kind of, uh, you know, really been able to to help him, like, solidify those nerves and solidify mm -hmm. that game plan. Uh, so these guys actually played very early in the bracket, and I believe Silence went down 3-1. to one. Mm. Um, And let me tell you what Silence did, just to, to kind of highlight what kind of competitor <laughs> Silence is. He Chameleon. pressed capture on the PS5, and he sat and watched all his matches mm. after immediately after losing and he's like i'm just trying to see something and he's watching and i'm just like i'm too salty after i lose to like logically do the best thing that's going to help me long run and that's just the kind of competitor science return really is so he's got a cr an incredible amount of emotional composure yeah dude it's insane he's just like man i'm so salty and i'm like you don't really sound salty <laughs> Oh, doesn't commit to the whole thing, though. Well, I think he thought that the uh, chameleon was going to be a different cameo. My thing is now knowing that he's had that time and uh, how creative he is with his answers to things. I think the fact also that he's one of the few competitors, you know, he's still on the younger side, um, sure. can rely on his reactions if reactions are the answers wow. to things. Um, what his new game plan is going to be now that he has sat with this after reviewing it. Sure. He's only had so much time, you know, but... <laughs> He is new. This yeah. is his first competitive game, which was very surprising considering how, like, like look at that, dude. Yeah. Look at that hit confirm. Like, look at the spacing. And it's just, he's just so on point in so many different ways. Like, you would look at Silence and think, like, this is a veteran. Like, this is a guy who's been playing competitively at a high level for so long. That's going to be a big whip yeah. punish here. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with you. Wait, what? What just, what? Uh, did he try to throw on... I think he tried to throw on the Tremor Sometimes. armor to, to, well, to finish him up. So this is what I'm curious about now that you've given that, right? Did he find Tremor armor to be more helpful in some situations and kind of like, quote unquote, overextended himself, trying to rush to get it on because he developed yeah. this new game plan? Ooh, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, you can interrupt. Depending on the string, you can stop it before it even gets started. What a Wait, what? Guys, this sequencing is crazy. He still can get out of this. Nice. No chip. No yeah. chip. And that was insane. I mean, I think that could have been a bigger combo. And I think it, it, where he, like, finished the entire 1-2-1 one, one string. Or, I'm sorry, the 1-2-2 two, two string. And it, that, that, I think that could have been more. Yeah. Especially because he did have access to meter. Maybe he was trying to hold on to meter, you know, to, to finish the combo. That's Beautiful a nice timing. jump. That is a nice jump here from, from Silence Returns. And it seems like another part of his game plan that he's really clocked in on is that he's going to take as much damage as he can get every time he lands a hit. Yeah. Right? Just try to speed run that health bar to take away the amount of times he has to go through these exchanges. Yeah, because I think, like, you know, look at all the things that Sub-Zero... Look perfect. at how long he was holding that. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you look at Sub-Zero and you look at the tool, the tool kit he has, he's just in neutral. He's got so many different things to kind of, like, keep you on your toes. So, again, once Reiko does get in there when he's got this cameo, you know, you got to make sure... It hurts. That's it. That's really it. And jumped up to meet him. Yeah. And the question is going to be was just means he has concerned about silence or silence was about him. It's kind of difficult, right? If, if you have like a big run over somebody, especially you know how good silence is and you 3 1 kill him in a bracket, you're like, all right, I pretty much got to figure it figured out. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, like I'm on top of the world. And again, and just Little do you know, this fellow's <laughs> been sitting there in the background. <laughs> just means he was there. Like, that's how fast silence was watching his 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 match after he <laughs> lost it. Just means he was there and he watched him watch his matches. <laughs> So like it's it, again. This is this is the, the the next level of competitor here, and I think I think Silence is really setting a precedent right now. 
But don't count out just Measy. He's got a great clutch factor. He is also a newer player, but super solid it's once he gets in. All the Sub Zero stuff is it, it is just his attention to detail to just know what's going on at all times with his cameo is super impressive. Yeah, and I'll say even as an earlier set against Pulse, for all intents and purposes, he had every capability of winning that. He came down to like a couple of drops towards the end. I think Pulse did a great job of like getting him to hesitate from his game plan mm -hmm. slightly. That kind of like threw just Meezy off a little bit. Uh, it, it, I'm curious if Silent's going to have the same uh, kind of like defensive reaction from just Meezy where you call out a couple of the things he's doing and now he's got to second guess whether or not it's worth trying to follow through. This is going to be a big conversion here. Yeah, I almost feel like that Ice Clone is just kind of more to like build bar in that state. But that's going to be it right here, especially if he's got the cameo. Yeah, it doesn't even to need go. to spend it. I like the down two to kind of like keep him a little bit farther away, not right next to him. And the Trevor cameo recovers pretty quickly. What? What? Did you just outspace <laughs> Stamp 2? Did he just outspace Stamp 2? I talk about uh, Reiko's neutral all the time, and I feel like people really, really sleep on how effective these kicks are. Stamp 3? Yeah, yeah. Stamp 3. Like, oh, it's a high. Like, it's not going to hit Yeah, that, that goes a quarter of the, like, <laughs> you know, quarter of the arena. Look, man. Oh, that was a good block. That was a good block. That's man. You know what? That's a hard one, too, because if he goes for back two mix, like it's really on you to figure out whether or not he has access to the Molina version mm -hmm. of a Chameleon because yeah. he's done that as a uh, kind of like triple overhead thing to stop Silent from reacting to it. Yeah, so you, you want to default to the slide just or to low just in case the slide comes out, but then that Molina just kind of adds a little bit of the layer. And then if Molina is ready, you go into the slide thinking that they're thinking about That's the Molina. It. That's nope. the only way you can punish that is with back three. It is a very, very tough punish. No, oh, oh, that has to be an execution error. He didn't have meter. meter. Yeah. He didn't have meter. Anything, literally anything. Okay, I was going to say, I'm surprised that he didn't just go for like poking the shurikens at some point. Yeah. I, I thought that was going to be a... I mean, listen, there's a reason he's there and I'm here. Maybe <laughs> the fact that he was more reserved on it saved them from what would it be. We talked about Mises' clutch factor, right? True, true. Don't Don't give him the opening. But I thought uh, I thought he was just going to wait for a turn down for a shuriken to call it a day. Round one. It could have been. It's, it's the easiest way most times, most ways. But sometimes the easiest way is also the most obvious, and that could be its own problem. Oh, yeah. Easy jump in. You know, a challenge, a, 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 a low-profiling challenge. Because he didn't have meter there at the end, so he couldn't have made him, you know, Amplified. Finishing the string, which is a little tricky. You don't always think he's going to right into it. He's watching his cameo so closely. And that's really how you, you overcome, you know, a lot of these matchups when they're using Chameleon. You've got to be paying attention. Beautiful. Beautiful <laughs> spacing. Oh, and this is looking like a level of domination I was not expecting from Silence here. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think it was going to be this much of a a, a, a difference maker a for sure, but a shutdown, no way. Yeah, no, no, definitely didn't think it was going to be this big of a shift. Does get hit by that second low. Super I like that fighting to take his turn back. We're going to clock out here again, right? Remember, he's going to get as much damage off of everything as he can. Look at him spend that extra meter. Oh boy. Found it again. Off. Yeah, just getting a nice, uh, mm, the conversion off the slide. Oh boy. Going right into the ice clone after that hit. Oh no, the overhead. And thanks to the glaive, gonna extend the combo even more. We're gonna end it with, of course, Katana Lift. Oh, the drop, drops it. unfortunate. I mean, at that point, the combo's so scaled. Didn't challenge that run there. All right, anybody's game here. He, he, yeah, he, he thought command grab was coming. Oh, oh and that's... No, that was... That could have been it. Maybe, maybe, been maybe it, he didn't want he to because of breaker. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, he's... He it looks seems like, like yeah, he's, he's working yeah. around it. I mean, he's working around it, but, you know, how many times you open somebody up? Open them up once and then open them up twice and then that's it. Yeah. Oh, boy. And yeah. now he gets to go into the next round with all that meter. Maybe it would have been better to just force him to spend it. Yeah, I would have tried to just cash out on whatever hit. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's just, yeah, force the hit. And then, again, like you don't the, the round is not guaranteed. Like, mm. nothing is guaranteed in this game. So that might have been a huge momentum shift towards just Meezy. Just yeah. And with somebody like him and how well he works off of momentum, this could equate to throwing the set away. Look at just Meezy operating now with all this freedom. Oh, drops it. Yeah, Yeah. so odd. It was almost like it was too deep into the combo for him to bounce high enough for the Molina. I, I don't think that was... Um, or he might have had to time her earlier. It, it's hard to tell. Been. It could yeah. have been that, yeah. 
He's going to tap into Tremor for a little bit more damage. Like we said, he's just doing as much as he can once he gets in. Even if it's that a situation be, after. No. no, dude, you can't. You have yeah. to back three. Like, I, of right. all the things he took the time to check, although we know the one that didn't make it on the list. <laughs> he did not check I mean, the I, I'm list. saying that as a Rago player. Like, I, I, that was one of the few things I labbed in this game. And I wa want to say the only thing you do is micro dash back three. The stand one is just not going to get there in time. It's going to be difficult. No, okay. Force the the fact that he still had Breaker. <gasps> on the way back. On the way back, and we get the brutality. He might have been able to survive it too, but I think the fact that it hit Chameleon took away enough health where now the chip was too much. Yeah, it was just like on the way back here, and he had no more bar. He had nothing. He didn't have the bar for the last press, so that was, you know, it could have been a clean hit, or that, it could have been that whole game came down to not cashing out when he could have. Yeah, the whole game came down to that. He gave him just a just an inch. You think he was playing with his food? I don't think he was playing with his. I think he was trying his best to not play with his food, and then like ended up doing the opposite, being too <laughs> cautious. You know, like it's like giving him too much credit. I think he was concerned about letting him do the breaker and turning it into a guess for game at distance, mm -hmm. um, and just yeah, could have pushed harder. We'll see this this life lead here. No confirm off of it. Oh boy, that's still connected what? with the foot. It's only because he stuck that button out. And the fact that just Neezy recognized that and did that micro dash stand one, not like an easy thing to do on the fly, punches Chameleon in the <laughs> face as she comes to try to throw a fan. I think the wrong version, maybe. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So I think in that setup, it's the uh, push, right? Like it's, the punch, yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the uppercut, the rock uppercut. The, uh, oh gosh, what are they, what are they called? <laughs> Metallic. Uh, I would love to see that magma one, but it, it looks so great shot. in conversions. But I do think it's not worth it in a lot of situations for what you uh, what you get off of his other moves. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. I, I don't think that's what he wanted. And just both both players just kind of staring down, waiting. Get that chair out of here. <laughs> just kicks it down, pours it. Nobody's shins are safe. No, oh, I thought I was gonna safe. get blocked too. Yeah, he's been, he's been baiting it out like the whole set, and I'm surprised that one didn't get blocked either. Easy overhead. Backing off. Oh, that yeah, was definitely was a nice clone. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, the recovery. Could have went for more. Yeah, Interesting that, decision. But see, that's what I mean. Like, I feel like he doesn't want to give up the Oki. Like, he wants you to stay next to him, and then he sets up the overhead or the low, potentially. He's got the breaker, and this is definitely do or die. So I had to go in for the breaker. And, of course, Molina coming in double overhead. You're not ready. That's but it. But you are ready for this conversion. Great game between the two of them. Silence. And he's been taking, what, like, uh... I think yesterday was his fourth weekly back-to-back. -back. <laughs> it was, it was at least either three. fourth or th third, yes. Silence has been really, like, tapping in. Uh, he, he had a great performance in, in Pro Comp up until the top eight. Mm. He got kind of bodied in the top. All right, he lost to Ninja Killer, which is respectable. Everyone, yeah. That's... Everyone loses to Ninja Killer. Literally everyone in that tournament lost to Ninja Killer. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, afterwards, I... I he wasn't. I know personally, he wasn't happy with how he played in that top eight. Yeah. Well, when uh, you want to be the best in the world, then you lost. It's a tough one to hold, you know. And he's I, got that ambition. Oh, he definitely does. And 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 I see I see great things for both these players' futures. Just yeah. It, by futures, I don't mean like you know, build your life around this. I mean you know, no, but get for, competitive yeah. for the goals that they have. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. what they're you know what they've been able to do, and now uh, this is going to be another great test for him. How many times have we gotten to watch him play El Kukui? Um. Almost never. If I, they have, it's minimal. I, I, El Kukui came to our weekly once, and I don't. I, I want to say he only lost to Wraith. Wraith mm. double eliminated him in grand finals. He reset Wait, it and won the grand finals. Uh, that was before Peacemaker came out. Um, so I don't. I don't think these guys met in that bracket. I want to say Silence lost to Wraith at that bracket. Yeah. Yeah. El Kukui stayed in winners, so never really fell down to him. Tanya's interesting, too, because I know how many Peacemaker mains get, like, bricked up off the thought of Force Field, just negating a lot of his neutral. Yeah. Um, I think for Tanya, anyway. I mean, she still does have a great answer to him, but it's way more reactionary, right? Like, you use your amplified projectile to tear through everything that he's doing. Yeah. Well, again, and think about one of the characters that El Kukui really brought a lot of attention to was, was Reiko. So, like, <laughs> 
it's got to be a little uncomfortable for Silence to know, like, well... He, he understands what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, I'm playing against one of the best Reikos in the country, Yeah, and they're not playing Reiko. They're playing a different character. Why are they playing a different character? So many things can be going through Silence's mind right now. Easily opened up there, went for the shimmy, pretty much. Shoulder to shoulder, faking the throw and just hitting. That's what's so good about Tanya. That button is such a nuisance. Has been really making great use of these sweeps, too, in neutral just as a deterrent. And just will not get off his back. I don't know if, if um, Silence is trying to time Flawless Block on those 4-2-1-1s, and that's why he keeps getting opened by them. It could be that, but he did get that Flawless Block there, which meant everything there. Not sure why El Kukui sent out the wrong Goro. I know sometimes Ooh. it gets weird in the corner. Can he make this comeback? He literally just needs one hit into, into Fatal Blow. It's, nah. it's not going to work that way. Yeah. No way. It's not going to work that way. I mean... Did you really think Tani wasn't going to armor when she had Goro? You would have to flawless block and I'll wake up to negate the chip that would kill you. Yeah. Like there was really no reason yeah. for him to not do it. Could have maybe jumped back, you, you, but then you're susceptible to Goro. So many things could have happened there. And I, yeah, I think armoring out was clearly the right move. All right, I nice love how it went through Tremor. Like he, <laughs> through, he sent out Tremor to like absorb the hit. Whoa! Not many people can whiff punish that button, one of the best buttons in the game. A little bit of hesitation here from Silence, but warranted too. Oh, that could have been a much bigger conversion, but he didn't have the meter to really convert. Mm. He, he really needed to go into the knee for meterless conversion. So you can see, see the like, hesitation in him too. Whenever I see the highest level of player going against Tanya, whenever she does those like jump cancel shenanigans, yeah, the, the, yeah, we talk about that hurt. like you know that that whole issue with having all of that Reiko knowledge. How many times do you see one, two, four from him get contested? With? A lot, a lot during the set. Now he's got an extra hundred health, so I think he is alive here. I I, I thought that was over. Oh boy. Oh. No! Flawless block! Flawless block! The clutch flawless block from Silence Returns! Talk about young man reaction. <laughs> <laughs> if anything else was a death Fuck. sentence. Anything else. Literally, that was his only choice. That was his only choice. And El Kukui is just like, there's no way. And no when you way. talk about that competitive practice, too, like the, the wherewithal to know that you have to do that and then all the pressure that it takes that you can't mess it up and to still have the capability to. A duck on the stand three and a conversion here. I heard that button was bad, Kevin. <laughs> I heard that button was bad! There's the conversion. Beautiful there. Once your opponent's scared of that command grab, that's when you go in for the slower mids that lead into some good damage. This last round, that 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 play just like revitalized Silence Returns here. Yeah. That was a bait. That was the biggest bait I've ever <laughs> seen. He threw Goro out in the wrong direction and said, yes, think you can press a button because oh, you can. Oh, to parry. She's got to operate without Goro for a fair amount of time. He's got an opportunity here to really start pushing himself. Good block of the low by El Kakui. Kind of waiting to react to the overhead, if you will. The fear of stand three the second that that glow was active. Challenging. Looking for it. Overhead, great option. <gasps> what armor was that? Was that just two bars? Was that supposed to be command grab? I mean, I I, I don't know. Oh, boy. Ooh, he got out of it. All right. That's so important for him mental-wise to get that first point on the board. We talked about every reason he would have to think that this would be a difficult set for him, and it is. We're not watching this be easy. Sure. But it's so important that, again, he knows it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, to keep that mindset, to keep that confidence, if you will. Surprised I didn't get there in time, but did get an extra. I don't know what's going on. Like, he's... That was, I, I think that was that weird armor that I saw before that I thought yeah. might have been command grab, which I he's, guess it could have been. He's trying to do it on purpose because I, I would put it up to an execution error, but someone like Silence is not going to whiff a parry like that seven times. Like there's something he's trying to call out. Yeah, and I, I think it's, it's just, you know, Tanya's got some great range on a lot of those normals, and they, they can get parried, and a lot of times people forget that Reiko does have access to that. You meter burn it to make sure you can combo off of it because you get way more than just the standard damage. Super duper plus, Al Kukui respecting those plus frames and Silence Return taking full advantage of that, getting in there for a nice combo here. And of course, we're gonna just wake up armor, El Kakui. You see what I'm saying? Like, he's doing, he is doing this on purpose, but it's just not working out the way he wants. And I don't know if it's worth all of the meter to keep guessing on this situation. He, he could have had access to Breaker for this. I mean, yeah, he literally really? got rid of two bars just like that, twice on a read. So again, I guess it's that distance that like, what is Tanya gonna do? She's gonna, was that forward yeah. two? She's eleven hundred. He should two. have a magic sliver. Yeah. Wow. It's just not gonna work again. We yeah. saw that already. Second time in this set. Interesting. I think I think there's just a concept that he has for how to deal with Tanya that he's being a little too stubborn about. 
I mean, with all of those errors, because he made a lot of these errors in the first game, was still able to take it. So imagine if he wasn't taking that risk. Yeah, this is... It could be. It could be a little crazier. Uh, for full Goro in effect here, so... Yeah, get yeah. ready to start holding some pressure. And, and I think that's why Silence is just kind of like slamming onto block because he knows, like, yeah, it's going to come out. And you see, he, uh, he tried to that. activate that parry again just now. And it's like, what is he cooking? <laughs> that challenge is not there in time from El Kikui. That whiff, those whiff pokes, those whiff down ones are super dangerous in this game. Lots of recovery. Popping him up for a big combo. Yeah, take that side switch, better positioning. Nice. I think that was definitely an attempt at flawless blocking there. Breaker, I mean, right there at the end of the combo, is it worth it? Oh, fatal blow. He just keeps getting away with murder, I feel like. Fatal blow. I don't, I believe we have, uh, we actually have mashing off, but I do appreciate the player thing. <laughs> I love you, Icy. Thank you for holding it down. Jesus Christ. I mean, to be fair, it's off, and there was definitely like a, a Gur set where they were pressing. <laughs> they were, we went to the camera, they were pressing. So I, I, can I think it's muscle memory just too much for a lot of people. I, I mean, I see that it's off just because the, the UI, the icons, yeah. Yeah, the icons aren't there. The, the, the much appreciated added <laughs> icons. I mean, I'll tell you, the next time we hold one of those uh, Fatal Blow competitions, it's going to be <laughs> way more but interesting see, to tell. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. We, we were theory crafting about, like, the different icons, like, looking slightly different if you mash harder. <laughs> Whole theory, whole theory crafting behind Test Your Might. All right, nice. Yeah, you got to take the turn back. Okay, he got it. Uh, so I'll be honest, my concern is that since it worked once, <laughs> you know? it's going to work again. The other thing, too, is you noticed last time he was fishing for it hard is when he had the back in the corner, so I never realized what a great side switch that is. Mm. He's still alive to see another day. Oh, the throw nice. escape! So important. He oh, I was going to say... Sweep it, just looking for the easy win. The easy knockdown. Flawless block to reduce that chip. And I would I would have fell for that. Uh, no no, didn't get there in time. Didn't get there in time. What? No, I what? didn't get it. That's so unfortunate for him because he had the right idea and it was a slight timing issue. Yeah. And it, it sometimes some routes, depending on like how high the stand three hits you, like you don't have a lot of time. Like, if you take too long to cancel into the knee, you're going the wrong way. Yeah. You go underneath them. So in that sequence, I mean, I, I don't. I think she got hit too high for it to I even, think so too. even, like, be the possibility of a conversion. Okay, I think he missed the dash before that command grab attempt. Yeah, sometimes your dash just kind of gets eaten up, and then you're doing command grab or down four or back four or forward two just a little too far away it as Ray goes. Seems like Silence is clocked into the concept of just because she has an answer to projectiles doesn't mean that I should never use them. True, true. Oh boy. We're gonna see this, yeah, the spend on meter here. He wants this to hurt. And he's right on top. Beautiful up block, excuse me. Yeah, the up block, I mean, really, it's, it's, you assume that it's always gonna be, always gonna be a, a, a low, mm -hmm. you know, between the down four and the sweep. So whenever he wants to go for the mix, it's, of course, he's gonna, He's gonna he's gonna go for the overhead, but that's also dangerous because if he goes for the command grab, you're adding yeah. damage being done to you. Fight. And God forbid it's a EX command grab. Yeah. <laughs> Tons of damage. It, it, it essentially becomes a one bar super at that point. Oh yeah. Alright, gonna gamma crush get himself out of there. Whoa. And I get it too, it's you don't want to overcommit every single time you stick that button up, but he's lost a lot of situations not believing in it. Down back forward to keep the positioning. I see Silence getting like a little disrespectful here and there, like when he's not plus and he feels like he can poke back. Mm. And El Kikui kind of adjusting to it, challenging back more, faster buttons, not as much like, you know, slower things, and, and not really going for like too many throws there, but he did go for a throw there at the end. Yeah, and it's been a distant response from Kukui too, because Silence has been essentially taking turns back where he's convinced that Kukui's gonna pause and respect to get those command grabs in, right? Yeah. Like knows that the turn is up and we'll just throw it out. Nice bait there by El Kikui, dashing in, just kind of waiting for that armor to come back at him. That armor is not one of the best armors in the game. Like it doesn't, there's no like mix-up variable to it. It doesn't yeah. hit as low. Um, pretty slow. And it's got some startup too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's pretty slow. But what's great about it when you've got tremors is you can access more damage with it. Oh boy. 
and we're, we're, we're getting past that mind game of like, I'm gonna sit here and hold on to block and, 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 and try to avoid everything you're throwing my way because of how risky I know throws are. Good EX projectile there to eat and nullify going through Tremor, going through all 10 of the shurikens. Trying to crack him, finds the throw. It's gonna be increasingly difficult for Silence here. Ooh, oh, I thought, I thought he was in. I thought he was he can't too. take the chip, yeah. And listen, we know he's capable of, of pulling out flawless blocks there when he needs to, but he was going to have to, again, if he wanted to survive that situation. Yeah, and that was uh, a little rough. Okakui taking a little bit more passively, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I liked at the end that he was like relying a little bit more on throws, um, knowing that Silence is that player that is just trying to be a little bit more withdrawn, a little mm -hmm. bit more patient. Um, you know, even though Tanya doesn't do like a ton of damage, it's more of just like the constant nuance, the fact that she's like constantly on you, she's constantly Friend. next to you, she's in the ranges where she can hit you, but you can't hit her, it seems to me that um, you actually and, and that armor, like you, yeah. you talked about in this matchup, that armor, that. armor, armor, armor. You know, and it, in situations where, like, you even get hit by, like, a down form from Reiko, usually Reiko's like, all right, I got the down form hit. It's party time. No, here comes armor. It's party time for me, and I get a little bit more damage. Like the disrespect here, going to cycle through to have Tremor ready and available when needed. We'll see if a change of scenery. So that's what I th – I wasn't sure if that worked that way. I didn't know either because yeah. she's in the air. But now we have a little bit more of an idea if this is specifically what he's trying to fish because he did do it on knockdown a lot. Yeah. But it might be a matter of timing, too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of weird as you're, like, calling out the call-out, you know? So it, it, there's so many instances or so many time frames in which that can happen. And it, it just seems a little too specific for me. A little too specific for my taste. It's caught up here. That throw's going to get the job done. El Kukui sitting on match point. Just tossing so him like a rag doll into the snow. One more Without opportunity everywhere. to get through there. Fight. Oh, Miss spaces the girl. That was an opportunity there. Yeah, it was, but, you know, not totally unsafe in that move. But, yeah, it should have been his turn a little bit faster. But then he It's hard to recognize also, to be fair. Like yeah, and he, like, lost the moment, too. Like, the moment was gone. The moment was fleeting by the time he got there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Silence coming off all three bars. Has no resources left. to skip his cameo. Gets the down yeah, for doesn't have, uh, doesn't have Goro available. There's going to be an opportunity to make this comeback. It's now. He's still going to have like a good. You got at least one more sequence. One more. Ooh, that's what we were worried about. The up block, but he didn't have it ready. He didn't have it ready. So that was definitely El Kukui managing when to go for those risks. Oh Did he do forward forward to, to avoid the breaker? Potentially. I mean, he went to the strategy before, right? Try to keep it here. But I feel like, again, right? We, we lost a round for doing this while we're rechancing it again. I mean, I. Luckily for him, Scary. luckily for him, yeah. Scary. I mean, I guess yeah. That's the thing, right? Is it's, and then the other the other part of it is also that like Kakui might have not even been in the mindset to break in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. especially because he had another round to play with. It was a huge life deficit. He didn't have too much remaining. But this is do or die for Silence. Gets in there, but doesn't go for the rest of it. Here comes the chandelier. Goro for the volley. The setup. And back to the corner. You don't want to be here. This is when you get a little too scared and you just slam on the block a little too hard. And that's when the throws start coming in. That's when the throw damage starts ticking up and eating away at your life bar. I will know that I'm in agreement with you. That's when we see most competitors. Uh, Turtle Silence immediate reaction when he was put in that situation was to run forward and press jab. Yeah. So he is willing to contest. This oh. is going to be hard. He tried to throw a projectile, but the chandelier eats right through it before they even come out of his hand. The if, he can, if he can hold on to his meter, he will have access to Breaker. He will have access but to Breaker. Yeah. So he's got like another another risk to take. But I think El Kukui is taking that out of the equation entirely here. Maybe trying to clean this up with throws and a little bit more chip. Oh, boy. Oh, One more throw. He is dead. Now the threat of stand three. Can he rob? Can he go in and rob? He didn't armor. He didn't. He didn't mean to burn it. He didn't mean to burn it. He didn't mean to burn it. That could have been it. Oh no! This is a dangerous game to play. Oh boy, this is so close. He just jumped. <sighs> chipped out. Chipped out. And El Kakui. And I figured he over. was gonna start playing that kind of like tremor bodyguard game. Of like, I'm just going to stick him out so he eats everything and then I'll take my turn. I know, but... but it, he, her, he didn't have so much access to it, yeah. Her amplified projectile goes through the tremor. Just like it goes through any projectile, it goes through the tremor. You want me to give you a little focus, Icy? Or are we... I'm a little out of focus. So, 
Kevin, stay right there, right okay. there where we were. We're a little out of focus. We got a, a DSLR camera, and uh, it's a little. We're still we're still figuring out the kinks. Do you look in mm. focus there? Uh, I think yeah. Right well, there, yeah, because you can't be like too. We got to be like on the same platform. How's that look, Icy? Big shout outs to Icy <laughs> for for doing so much. It covers just, it every time, man. I know, dude. And just just like you always have to be like on point. The scores, the players, commentators. So I just want to give a special Peace shout maker. out to Icy and a special Booyah. shout out to Combat Network for putting this on. Also, I guess uh, another shout out to Okazemi Coffee Company. I know they're just starting up some things. Yeah, making a rise. I've been seeing the word of it around. It's, it's just going around. Yeah. It's like a little secret, yeah. I guess, because <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of details are secret to me too. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna find out more about this company, Okazemi Coffee Company. If you guys don't know, Okazemi is the, uh, I believe it's like a, a verb of, of waking up mm -hmm. in Japanese, which is what they use to describe Oki Peace as your wake-up game yes. in, in fighting games. So I think it's a very a very cute name for a, a coffee company because what does everybody want when they wake up? Yeah. Armor. I mean, <laughs> coffee. Everybody wants coffee when they wake up, not broken chandelier armor. I think coffee provides that armor well, in some true. cases, yeah. That's true. You down it's that you mental get... armor to get through that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to armor right through any of this bullshit my boss is giving me at work today. All right, Gur and El Kikui, this is a run back. Mm-hmm. This is Loser's Finals. This is dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dog shit uh, matchup, according to uh, somebody's Time twin brother named the Mighty just Unjust. Justify. Um, I'm not here for therapy. And it's uh, we're revisiting it. We're yeah. revisiting the same matchup. And you notice immediately, if you peeked in that corner and saw, right back to Motaro. The second, you know, Gerd did his labbing. Yes. Motaro is the answer here. Yeah. Is willing to take that life deficit for the answers provided here to work out the neutral with Peacemaker. Yes. Yeah. Just work out the neutral. And it, and it, it, it's kind of weird because, like, suddenly you see. And, again, I, I don't feel bad for Gears players at all. I don't feel bad when I suddenly see them having to chase somebody down yeah. <laughs> with all their might just to fall short. Like, I, I could never, I could never feel bad. Now, I will say, um, what I haven't seen a lot of is uh, a lot of times Gur will summon kind of uh, Motaro out for the reflect. Uh huh. And when we watched him do it, in some cases, the answer from Peacemaker players were kind of just a torpedo to try to stop him from doing it. Eagerly can shut down Motaro for a long amount of time That's if you're ready true. for that, and we haven't seen use of it yet. That's true. And it's 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 also like the input is so easy to yeah. just down and switch stance, or I think just hold switch stance. I forget what the actual. I think it's is. down and switch. Yeah, but it, it it'll just come out, and it, if it doesn't come out successfully, like what's the big deal? Yeah. See, like right there. That could have been a moment for it. Yeah. And, and you have to be more reactive with Motaro because of their ability to just kind of get around it. Eagerly tends to kind of just ignore the fact that Motaro exists. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of like shutting it down completely. That Very similar to the Lao Hat strategy. I was going to say, that's such a weird cancel because like the shot missed. He's going to go for it now. I mean, we talked about the scaling on this. We did, but I don't think it was that same combo. I think this was a different He would fit one. in the, the stand threes before it. But I'm yeah, cool. no. I have to imagine this is going to hurt if he's willing to cash out on it. I mean, uh, that's not 50%. Oh, boy. And the throw. He, that's not enough, Gurr. That's not enough. What, wow. Oh, it pushed him back. It pushed him back. Don't panic. Don't panic. He dashed in. Eagerly not fast enough. <laughs> not fast enough to save him in that situation. And Gurr getting the first game. You've got to be happy to. Oh, Snapped. 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 Snapped out of existence. The triple shot going nowhere. Motaro, what are you doing? And now Open he is going to be out of the equation for a while. Yeah. Might as well have just eagerly him at that point. Like, yeah, <laughs> he not, is gone. Not only did you drain the entire bar, but also getting hit on the way out. Easily. Easily out for, for a, a, a good amount of time. All right. Let's just become active again. Oh, try to go for Torpedo at the end there. Yeah, I like the, the little conversion with the, with the, with the blow dart. The blowing of the dart. Fatally blow dart. Oh, what a contest. And we're just going to fan this too and not even waste that bar. I see cookies in my future. Final round. I bet John Cena had a great time. <laughs> he did a wonderful job. Yeah, he did a, such a good job. But it's just, it's so funny. And I know a lot of the guys in the studios are like, oh, because of the fan. ignoring with force field. That's right. That stays so. on so, so long. Is it fair, Kevin? Is it fair? I don't understand why he has everything. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, Here's a character that has everything. That is punishable. First we showed you a cameo that has everything. Now we see the character that has everything. And then we have the man that plays everything. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you think both. Not fair. 
Not fair at all. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. He didn't get quite all his health back, but most of it. I'd say like 80% of it came back. Watch a dome on the overhead. The Motaro shield to kind of anticipate a, a gunshot. I was, I was, I was, find I was seeing uh, Sunio's Twitter, and he said that how afraid everyone is of Eagly, Peacemaker's high gunshot might as well be a mid. Yeah. Because like you're just holding on the block for dear life because you don't want to get opened he, up. It, it almost looked like he ran out of time. Like I know that has so much recovery if you uh, get blocked or whiff that forward four. <laughs> Why not? And, and you know the racing? He had access to fan lift if it got blocked. Just to get out of there. Yeah. It, just to recognize, hey, it got blocked. I don't want to get punished so easily. The same way that you would use like a Kung Lao or Motaro mm -hmm. teleport. Like, get me out of here for one more chance. Round one, one more little mind five. game. One more little mix up. All right. So it's full screen. Anytime Gur tries to get some hourglass and stack the full screen, they will contest with helmet. Oh boy. And why worth the risk? <laughs> you just go for it every time. I mean, yeah, that's 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 what it is, right? It's. I mean, you 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 can. I, I believe there's a there's a armorable gap in there. Oh, left in a standing position and just close enough for the eagly to convert and Gara backing off, just waiting for his time, waiting for the opportunity to make something happen. But we're not seeing it. Motaro shot. Good flawless block from El Kikui to reduce the chip as much as possible. Thought maybe a command grab was coming this time. Decided to hop out of there. Decided to get hit and frozen in time. And I guess because he was so up high, he said, you know, I'm not really giving up too much damage. Wow. Let me just load up on Hourglass. And this is the problem. When Gurr gets him in the corner and decides it's time to bully, it's a very rough situation to get out of. We've seen the command grab used from him before. I'm curious if he's going to start going back to it again or if he wants to save it. Let El Kukui uh, feel comfortable and then remind him later in the set that that is one of his options. Nice block. Whoa. Oh, he whiffs! He missed it. He missed it. And Gurr taking full advantage of the situation. Slamming him through the hourglass. Yeah, frustrating for Kukui too because that was a pretty locked in round there. It was his. 100% his and he dropped it. So angry. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, I get it. I wouldn't be happy fighting this either. I'm angry when I see how fast Motaro single shot recovers on cam the cameo bar. <laughs> so fast. Like, you give up almost nothing for it. Listen, I've, I've seen a uh, competitor run Sindel Motaro snap. Ooh. And then, to, yeah, it just it actually never goes away. Never goes away. I don't know. Beautiful anti-air. And again, Gur just with the highlight reel of negating your best moments. You spend all of this time learning how to, how to convert off of these very small situations just to have it taken away from you. You spend all this effort opening me up, but it's all gone. Imagine like that same thing if Silence had to play Gurr and was sitting there like, I want to see something. It comes in with this whole new thing and then Gurr just says no every time. He's like, That's nope. great that you practice that. No. Don't think so. Oh, good block. But oh, like tried he, to, he tried to follow. So he, he anticipated the jump after. Like what we saw in Silence uh, versus uh, just Meezy. You know, those mm. instant air-to-airs. Uh, it, it was more of like it, it kind of caught him off guard. So I guess that there is an option there. I like how Eagly doesn't fly back. Is that fair? <laughs> No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the first no I'll give you today, Blayton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking for what's not fair. But yeah, Eagly needs to be set back to Peacemaker. Ooh, didn't get there in time to punish. Snap. Okay. Snap. Yeah. Is he flexing? Yeah, caught, flexing. Him <laughs> caught him stancing. Caught him stancing. Hey, whether you're going to go the string or go for a command grab, that option beats both. That's got to hurt your back. Like scorpioning down a, a, a ski mountain. Oh, reflected it back. And it actually hit Motaro. Yeah, Motaro just kind of peaced out and still is just uh, cooling down for those three seconds. That's a lot of chip damage. Oh, that could have been a whip punish. And then speaking of, baby. Oh, he tried. He tried. Yeah, but I guess because he was just on the ground and, and it, it's the fatal blow is like this armor piercing move. So had that been like a different move and not a fatal blow, he would have been able to get out of that situation. But yeah, super smart of Kakui to just meticulously know in that matchup that 
hey, re rewind time Jesus, is a factor. Yeah. Go right into the fatal blow. And a super smart attempt from Grill, like it didn't work out. Yeah. But I think the, the fact that the idea was there speaks to his creativity with getting himself out of situations. Peace oh, yeah. Booyah. Big time. Community. Is he going to give up on Motar? Yeah, he's going to go to sub. Ying Fortress. So sub to kind of you nullify any of those projectiles, putting on the I'm vest. To bring it peace. I don't know. Good. Eagly, I assume, does work as a projectile. That's what I'm hoping. I mean, Otherwise, I mean, if, yeah, if Eagly gets sent out and, and the armor doesn't ignore it, I will feel very bad. <laughs> uh, should he count as a projectile? I think he should. I get why he doesn't, yeah. but he shouldn't either be that fast or that safe. Like this. <laughs> It's the trifecta of it for me. Yeah. Or like it shouldn't go full screen. It should go mostly, you know? It, it is pretty bananas. My, so when I'm fighting against a lot of like online peacemakers, there's a general strategy of always trying to keep a green force filled up so that it nullifies Torpedo uh -huh. and they can't rely on it so heavily. Or, or caging him to the same effect, right? Just, just locking down, a, removing Torpedo as an option, then you get to zone, but you kind of can't zone unless you can nullify it to some facet. Uh-huh. And sub armor is not going to be the option that does that. Oh, popped up. Misses it. Misses it. Gets the drop. Let's himself be in a he really bad He can't start bullying here. He's going to. Did you see the patience from Gur? He knew that the Katana fan lift was coming. But it's just so much to, like, keep track of. So much to just, like, stay on top of. You got to watch out for the Katana. You got to watch out for the force field. The Glaive tosses. It's, it's exhausting. It looks exhausting. And look at that. El Kikui meeting him with actual buttons, knowing that the vest was on. There's only 15 seconds left, Kevin. I'm listening. It can still be possible here. He got four field up time just to in snap, time. But it's, yeah, it's, to snap. He's getting down to brass tacks. He doesn't have access to stuff. I think at this point, he's just accepting the loss. Yeah, he's, he's, he's clocking in for the next round. He knows that was a loss cause. You might yeah. as well. Yeah. Stack up your resources. Like a gear wow. just kind of like hung out there <laughs> on the floor for a second. That's how I feel mentally watching this. It's one of those difficult things too because you uh, you get that sub armor on it, but you still have to fight the urge to block when you see the projectiles coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like it's like ticking it's away at your brain. Like, watch out! Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> yeah, try to, trying his best to walk him down. There's an open. Uh, sorry, an opening. Oh. Just a raw overhead. Oh. Now I mentioned before, right? Characters that don't have natural overhead starters, it's almost better. Yeah. It, 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 it just a surprise factor. Yeah, yeah. complements your tool set a little bit better. Ooh, whiffed right there in front of him. Oh boy, drops again. But but it at least has the awareness to not continue the string the way he was before that was getting him clipped. Yeah, it looks like he did the stand one just a little too early. Trying his best here. This is tough. This is not looking good for her at all. Just the random torpedoes to just, you know, keep him guessing. And that's going to be an easy punish there for Gurr. Oh, did you see the eyes? Did you see they the both, eyes? They both understand what's happening. Uh, I think that helps it a little bit, at least with being able to. <laughs> did you see the eye? Gurr has, like, the funniest faces when those eyes just, like, glow up through. Um, but huge shout out to Gurr, taking home third place. Not too shabby considering... Um, you know, he thinks his character is now useless and nerfed into the ground. Well, his I think the, the difference mine. in his success factor between yesterday fighting Peacemaker and today is already so grand. And sure. what he's just been able to do overnight. So I can only imagine how much better he'll be able to sort out the matchup in the coming weeks. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it, it's you can't really figure out too much mm -hmm. uh, in one night. And unfortunately, I mean, if you ask a lot of the successful players in, in the NRS realm, sometimes the right answer is picking a different character entirely and I don't mm -hmm. think that that's a decision that Gur takes 100% he's not going for it yeah he, it. He, he doesn't take that decision lightly like I think it would take a lot for Gur to just say like I gotta pick a different character like yeah. this is not it and it's it's weird because like in some matchups Gearus feels so like overwhelming and uh, even in, 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 in the instance where like, you don't know the matchup, you don't know what's going on, it just feels like, I can't catch him, I can't get in. And then in other matchups, like, you know, against Peacemaker, you're just like, it, it looks really tough. Like, not only can the torpedo punish the overhead in most, in most instances, you saw Gurr kind of re refraining from doing that overhead a lot. He was just kind of going in with mids, going with lows. Um, you know, he, you, 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 gotta, you gotta figure it out. You gotta feel it out. And as someone, uh, yeah, you heard it too. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody teasing Gurr, saying, hey, Gurr, that matchup's 5-5, right? <laughs> Possibly th throwing Gurr's words right back into his face. Friend. All right, and they, uh, 
a classic side, a, a goon finale here. Pulse on winner's side, so it's going to be on Kukui to try to reset this. He's going to go Rakel for the Johnny. This has been a, a go-to strategy for him. Of course, they still have the Tanya as the backup. Yes, yes. Oh. Tanya's going to be the backup. A lot of options here, but so uh, Pulse has more time to experiment than Kukui does. If he does not like this, I would hope that he tries Tanya next and then kind of like settles in. Assuming in a hypothetical he loses both, right? It's very yeah. possible that's not what happens. But if it's experimentation time, if Rakel doesn't get the job done, try Tanya immediately and then try to figure out what felt better and lock in. It's true. It's true. Lock in for the last one. I mean, it's very weird. It's weird to think that like someone would go back to a character they started this set with. But it's, it's, I've seen stranger things. Good bait out from Pulse. Pulse has been doing so good at kind of just like dashing in, like getting you to flinch, and then saying like, nope, just kidding. I'm going to block and easily punish what you're looking for. Oh, drops the throw combo. American reset. Ooh, okay. Full screen side. Yeah, didn't have the uh, didn't have the uh, the meter to amplify it. I'm trying to maintain this pace here. I'm curious if like part of the reason. I mean, you know, we know how much all of the uh, these guys practice with each other. If Pulse has worked around the Tanya strategy, it could have been. You know? Could have been that. Might be a little internal issue. I heard, I heard that again. I heard this from a Kenshi down player that uh, Tanya like destroys <laughs> Kenshi. So I don't know if it's. If that's the dance that like Pulse is trying to avoid entirely, so like, because Pulse is—I mean, yeah, Pulse has been playing Johnny Cage for a while, but in the most recent online tournament, he's actually whipped out his his Kenshi. And it's yeah. always looking good, looking very polished, great conversions and everything, like ready to go. But right now, feeling Johnny Cage again, maybe in fear of that Tanya. All right, nice pressure here from Pulse. Ooh, not there in time. You can't duck under those shurikens, and you know you, you gotta kind of be perfect with that dash forward timing. And I mean, at this point, it's pretty much a win con, right? Like, just continue to chip away. They're gonna go back. Listen, if you're pulsed, you hope the next set goes exactly like this, and that the mental pressure just gets Kukui to fold. Yeah. If no. you don't have to entertain more games, you don't want to, and, and he's gonna stick it out with the Reiko. Oh. oh, almost baited him had he believed and yeah, gone for the command grab mix. Yeah, That was a little scary. Love the anti-air here. Got a command grab, but we're not going to go into anything crazy. Going to try to wait and, and look for another opening, look for another successful command grab, or you know maybe just an easy confirm. Ooh, what? weird. Very, very weird. That was weird because he was back three. was so far away. The single dash. Yeah, like didn't go through. Yeah. Didn't go behind him. Oh, boy. Watch yeah, your nice toes. Nice dagger pressure. Watch your toes, ladies and gentlemen. Watch those lows. All right, he's going to get another turn here. Are we going to attempt to armor through to ignore it? Nope. And we go from that 9% throw to the more damaging one out of the three of them in 13. Opportunity here. How hard are we going to cash out? Yeah, not able to really access anything after that. That, that breaker felt very late into the combo, if you ask me. Oh, and stopping again, yeah. Jade entirely. <gasps> Didn't get low enough to actually eat all those shurikens, oh, but double down the, four or the triple elusive, down four. Yeah. He just kept hitting it, and Pulse runs right into it. And I think that was like a distance management tool. Uh, Johnny, even in the last game, like uh, had problems with characters that did that like fundamentally. They have like really uh, nice low pull falling down fours. It's going to be a great momentum starter. Doesn't have the hype meter necessary to really uh, go for the big boy combos here, but the execution required for Chameleon definitely down pack to try to make these hurt as much as they can. Oh boy. And 3 4 just to maximize that damage best you could without having to really use meter afterwards. Just trying to find the shimmy there. Kukui letting go for a second. Yeah, Kukui, I think, like challenging the, the idea of a stagger, but Pulse just kind of finishing the string entirely. Checking him with down ones, getting checked back, recognizing that successful check, and knowing it's his turn to go for that command grab. That it's his turn. On deck. One hit confirm here. Oh, he tried to down two. Oh no. No, the fan lift whiffed. So weird he to like. It. Just, so, do you think if he called it a little bit later? Later, it yeah. Would that's work? usually what happens. That's like a universal timing. But if you get ahead of her, she she's going to appear where you summoned her. Okay. And if that's too early in the move, she will end up behind you. So strange. Um, sometimes you can get a little spoiled. Let's say like if you're pressuring in the corner, since she's just going to appear there anyway, she's always going to be close enough. But in neutral, you have to be a lot more cautious of it. 
I love the stand for in the beginning of the combo. So swaggy, so beautiful right on top of him. But here comes that knee. You thought a throw was coming or maybe possibly trying to fuzzy guard, fuzzy block. You know? Oh my God, what a wake up button contest. Against Reiko, that's very brave too. Reiko does such a good job of like shutting people down with like a, what is, is it one, two or two, one? That armor breaks on wake up for some characters. Yeah, uh, it's, I believe it's one, two. You know, and it also depends on the wake up, mm -hmm. you know, how fast it is. Some wake ups are a little bit slower, but I don't know, man. This Johnny Cage one is super duper fast. Right on top. Oh, no, he's not there. No, he is. He doesn't know. I thought I saw a step back. He doesn't know the attack. So literally every character in this game has something that just ignores it. But I'm curious if the back dash is what kind of got him stuck. Maybe, maybe. He was like already committed to it. Quan Cheese is, um, he can stand three. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, oh, and it, it just, just ignores it. Yeah. yeah, and it just launches them up and goes for a full combo. That's a that's a pretty great button. Reiko stand three and forward four. Ignore it. Yeah, and then I know uh, Reptile's back three and forward three, depending on the timing, can get around it. Yes. Yep, yeah. That one's a... I mean, you, it's definitely better when it's a combo starter. <laughs> oh, dashing out of there. Trying to go away. Beautiful anti-air in response to that. Now, you got to imagine that's a common answer to try to deal with Blaze. We usually jump back a little better than jump towards. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just, yeah, it's just not going to give him room to breathe. Gotta lock that down for a round and charge up a little bit of hype meter. Actually, a lot of bit of hype meter. <laughs> that's a lot of bit yeah. of hype meter. Hype ready to I go. I forget, like, the different moves, you know. Provide different opportunities for it. Yeah, deciding oh to cash out now before he gets access to Breaker. Oh, no. Oh, it hurts. What a beautiful combo, though. It, like, dude. <laughs> Just as a reminder that Kukui did zero damage so far. I was going to say, why does <laughs> yeah. it say zero? And it's, like, stuck there. It's still there. There we go. No. It was still there for a very long time. I'm, I'm questioning things right now. It's his turn. They both have access to three sticks of butter. Ooh, the okay, this is grab. helpful. Again, and this will give him corner positioning too. And he scooped up for his troubles. Oh. It's almost, almost. Almost there. Almost there. Not quite there. The down four, super. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's weird. It's like going for a forward throw. Like, why not go for command grab? They're going right back. 2 1. Uh, oh, no, they're not going right back. We are going to character select. Are we going to see Kenshi? Kenshi? I think so, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. We're ready for Kenshi. Cage so, I'm going to be using the, I'd say the most common really cameo for Kenshi. Hit confirm, freeze. Let's end a, let's take out Sento and end a combo in a Sento sandwich. On top of that, you got the vest to nullify one of the better projectiles in this game and, and Reiko's multiple shuriken toss. Yeah, well. um, but it's not its not as clear as day because the vest has a certain amount of hits that it can take uh, and it's going to go away. So like yeah. an amplified, you can't eat an amplified uh, shuriken. No, you cannot. Yeah. Um, so, so there is a little back and forth between the, the, the mindset. I talk a lot about the utility that a lot of characters have with cameos. Kenshi kind of has that in a similar fashion. It's just every carry, uh, every cameo that could potentially get him into the same kind of like win condition, right? Mm -hmm. So sub is an option. Frost is an option. Cyrax is an option. Uh, but sub, yeah, as, as we said, has some of the best utility. There's a reason you're not seeing a lot of like Kenshi Chameleon because she's not providing for him what he really needs to get his game plan going. Fight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of the, the capture state is really what helps you because you're recovering so much when you, rele when you take Sento out to so things like you know, Cyrex, really complimentary. Uh, Frost, like you mentioned before, and, and Sub-Zero. Hit confirm, lock him down, and get that Sento out. Uh, trying to manage the neutral here, finds a great opening for it. We're going to, yeah, like a lot of players, spend that breaker to just avoid the situations. Essentially a death sentence. Are, are there other ways to get out of it? Yes. It's so difficult. A lot of times it's worth the three bars just to try to buy yourself more time to not be there. Oh, checking right under... The shurikens. And of course, if uh, you got to remember too, with Kukui having such a uh, well-versed roster, if Pulse is able to use Kenshi to like clear this, I imagine we might see a character change from Kukui. Yeah, like I said, Tanya could be, um, you know, a, a big factor in this matchup. So could be some, seeing something completely different here. Oh, jumping in, but just a little too far away to get anti-aired. Super smart from Pulse to kind of close the gap. Uh, sort of like a, a pseudo substitution for dashing forward. Oh, he he guessed correctly. Yeah, but see, he doesn't he doesn't know that yeah. there is tech around that. 
He caught him, didn't he? No, no, no. He's gonna get. No, he did. I thought it was gonna. I thought it was gonna stuff it out. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Immediately. <laughs> I even heard the, the crowd saying, "Go Tanya, go <laughs> right to Tanya." Well, listen, they're building up a fan base on this character, you know. Tanya. Oh yeah. Yeah, but we're gonna see it. All right. We've heard through the grapevine that this is rough for Kenshi. This is gonna be our best chance of seeing it. If Kakui can take this, this is bracket reset. If Pulse can survive it for two minutes. There's very, there's very few people where I won't listen to anything they say, but Kenshi down players are definitely one of them. Yeah. So I don't know. This could be a 5-5. Five five. Well, listen, some Kenshi down players are kind of like pseudo moles. So I can imagine, you know, that <laughs> there's a trusted source of information as far as at least what opinions are between these fellas here. That's true. That's true. It's so weird when you have, like, a community that's, like, entwined with... with you know, developers and QA, like, mm -hmm. there's no reason to upplay your character. There is every reason <laughs> to downplay him. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, if you will. You know, what, what, what's really interesting, a lot of Tanya's moves also hit behind her. So when Sento comes into play, sometimes he does get Ooh, hit. Ooh, I didn't even consider that. Yeah. Yep. So a lot of the pushback here. Again, I'm not I'm not advocating for Kenshi downplays. I'm just saying. No, for sure. But it's a part of the equation here. Yeah, I'm H saying. How many characters on the roster outside of like her and Raid and have moves that are going to cover them in a radius like that? And that too there, the chandelier spin does hit both sides. So if Sento's there, Sento usually has to take a knee afterwards. So it's just, a, it's just a great armor move. Especially um, now that the adjustments have been made to Kenshi that are going to make uh, having Sensor survive just a little bit harder. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to agree with you, not to the point where I feel bad, but it's, you know, I've seen <laughs> I've seen words on the screen that said that he's quote-unquote more difficult. I definitely don't feel bad. <laughs> never. I would never. I would never feel bad. So I think that attempt there was to shred the, the, uh, the armor wake-up possibility and right now pulse is on match point here playing in a matchup that apparently is unfavorable but we'll see what el kakui can say about that look at kenshi's back movement it's, it's so one of the most frustrating ridiculous. parts of his kids to me so so goddamn ridiculous okay getting a bit of momentum here we're going to take that better positioning and, and now he's immediately disengaging trying to force pulse to make the mistake to get sent out here if he really wants him Tested their down poke. Nice patience from Kukui. Again, the stone wall thing we talk about. We tried the back dash. Okay, Tagore out the equation for a second. Yeah, easy push. You know, not really a, a big risk. El Kukui is a little too far away, but I think we're holding on to our resources here. We're not going to opt to go for the breaker. Instead, we're looking for the long game. Could have hit that, that way harder. And he was trying to get out of the corner there, trying to think about the last round. Where am I going to be? How much bar do I have? Super smart by Pulse, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Kenshi just yeah, holding on to block for dear life. <laughs> nice ability to tech, yeah. Neutral so tense here. The fact that he can like react to that. The fact that Elkin oh, picked guess. up on that. Yeah. Yeah, you have to guess which way you're gonna get thrown. These fellas do have a big mind game about there's the opportunity he needed. And he's gotta hold a bit of this. He's not gonna have our armor to break out of it immediately. So he's at least gotta wait till the next sequence, but he's gonna spend it as quick as he can. The fact that he needed to is rough though. Even up on meter now. Giving Kenshi that two percent hit. And now it's rough. She doesn't even have the armor to armor out. This pole is going to close this out right here. Sento does go away, but he's got to do it the tried and nice true patience. way. Backing off the backdash so fast. The movement by Kenji is just ridiculous. But he's stuck in this Sento list stance here. He only needs a few more hits. Maybe a down two. Maybe some shin poking. I don't know. What a whiff punish. What a whiff punish. But he doesn't get the conversion. Galkakui dropping it, letting it slip through his fingers. He's going to duck under that. We've got the armor on. Stand three is still going to be a very, very real threat. And he's, yeah, he's just trying to look for these small pokes to get the difference here. Beautiful throw. That should be it. Yeah. Yep. Extra damage thanks to that Sub-Zero. A little bit less health, but huge, huge play here from, from Pulse. Yeah, congratulations to Pulse for taking another tournament. You know, they, they've been having a SRS competitions over who could take, like, <laughs> just brackets <laughs> back to back to back. I forget who's in the lead now. Um, but oh, no. so many sets against each other in bracket, mm -hmm. in practice, uh, you know, in their own free time. Uh, Tanya, we heard that she can nullify that we didn't really get to see uh -huh. all of that in action but I, really. I hope i like the theory of what she's capable of doing i'm imagining by next time with a little more practice especially now that kuku has been pulling around a lot more often mm -hmm. we might get to see those situations he wasn't really sandwiched enough to get to see a lot of the kind of like yeah behind it, the back situation it was more like i think pulse was just kind of taking a little bit safer or a little bit slower mm -hmm. in a lot of sense like not really cashing out on resources depending on if tanya had certain resources to fight back um, 
But that was close. That was a very, very close final game, and it could have just been, you know, oh, cool, we went right into no signal, like <laughs> right at the end. But it looks like we're back. Ignore this A right over my shoulder. Ignore all that stuff. Uh, all you got to know, Combat Network did an awesome job. Big shout-outs to Icy. Big shout-outs to Shock for, you know, providing this stream. and just Every keep, time. Yeah, I know. Killing just, it every time. Uh, if you want. Do you want to? Are they still doing Injustice 2 Finals? I think we're do still doing Injustice 2 Finals. If we, wanted, if we want to take a visit, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> I so I think we have to change the PlayStation. I don't think I have Injustice 2 on there, but we will uh, figure that out. So I think we're going to do Injustice 2 Finals. I don't know if anyone's going to commentate it or not. I have to clean up to you get <laughs> ready. Kevin, you're more than welcome to stay on or step off. Totally up to you. Okay. Uh, let's see. He's trying to see what the crew's doing, but... Uh, this is going to be a good buy. Uh, right now, right now? They're trying to go right, right, right now. That's okay. That's fine. We're going to have a chill end of the stream. We're going to have Injustice 2. This is... Yeah. No, he, he doesn't have to. He's good. Kev. Kev, I love you. Thank it's been a you. pleasure as always. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. for coming through. You were on here, like, Iron Manning this. Guys, thanks for coming. I hope you guys had a great time. Appreciate buying the shirt. <laughs> Big Bird, you did awesome. Yeah, did you get your medal? Yes, please. Please get your medal. Please don't take the wrong one. <laughs> please don't take the wrong one. Kevin, you're awesome. Who's in the grand finals for Injustice 2? Gurr versus? Gurr has no idea who he's playing. He, he, just, he just gave me a little shrug. Like, I don't know. I'm playing somebody. That's all you know? Is it El Kukui? Who's in Justice 2 Grand Finals? Man, bodied. Never mind. You're DQ'd. <laughs> Out of here. Uh, I don't know what we have left here, but we will be right back. I don't know if you want to throw up the... I think we're good. HF, I love you. Thank you for coming through. Have a good night, guys. Oh, hold on. I got to get a picture with the top three, so I definitely have to go off.